Chapter 93 Another Sabbath day had come and Jesus and the twelve walked through a field of ripened wheat. And they were hungry and they took the heads of wheat and in their hands threshed out the grain and ate. Among the men who followed them were Pharisees of strictest sect, and when they saw the twelve thresh out the wheat and eat, they said to Jesus, Sir, why do the twelve do that which is not lawful on the Sabbath day? And Jesus said, Have you not heard what David did when he and those who followed him had need of food? How he went to the house of God and from the table in the holy place took of the presents bread and ate, and gave to those who followed him. I tell you, men, the needs of man are higher than the law of rights. And in our sacred books we read how priests profane the Sabbath day in many ways while they are serving in the holy place, and still are free from guilt. The Sabbath day was made for man, man was not made to fit the Sabbath day. The man is son of God and under the eternal law of right, which is the highest law, he may annul the statute laws. The law of sacrifice is but the law of man, and in our law we read that God desires mercy first, and mercy stands above all statute laws. The Son of Man is Lord of every law. Did not a prophet sum the duties of the man when in the book he wrote, In mercy follow justice and walk humbly with your God. Then Jesus and the twelve returned to Galilee, and on the day before the Sabbath day they reached the home of Jesus in Capernaum and on the Sabbath day they went up to the synagogue. The multitudes were there and Jesus taught. Among the worshippers was one, a man who had a withered hand. The scribes and Pharisees observed that Jesus saw the man, and then they said, What will he do? Will he attempt to heal upon the Sabbath day? And Jesus knew their thoughts and he called to the man who had the withered hand and said, Arise. Stand forth before these men. And Jesus said, You scribes and Pharisees, speak out and answer me, is it a crime to save a life upon the Sabbath day? If you had sheep and one of them fell in a pit upon the Sabbath day would you do wrong to take it out? Or would it please your God to let it suffer in the mire until another day? But his accusers held their peace. And then he said though them, are sheep of greater value than a man. The law of God is written on the rock of right, and justice wrote the law, and mercy was the pen. And then he said, Man, raise your hand and stretch it forth. He raised his hand, it was restored. The Pharisees were filled with rage. They called in secret council the Herodians, and they began to plot and plan how they might bring about his death. They were afraid to publicly accuse because the multitudes stood forth in his defense. And Jesus and the twelve went down and walked beside the sea, and many people followed them. Chapter 94 Next morning ere the sun had risen Jesus and the twelve went to a mountain near the sea to pray, and Jesus taught the twelve disciples how to pray. He said, Prayer is the deep communion of the soul with God. So when you pray do not deceive yourselves as do the hypocrites who love to stand upon the streets and in the synagogues and pour out many words to please the ears of men. And they adorn themselves with pious airs that they may have the praise of men. They seek the praise of men and their reward is sure. But when you pray, go to the closet of your soul, close all the doors, and in the holy silence, pray. You need not speak a multitude of words, nor yet repeat the words again and then again, as heathen do. Just say, Our Father God who art in heaven, holy is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our needed bread, help us forget the debts that other people owe to us, that all our debts may be discharged and shield us from the tempter's snares that are too great for us to bear, and when they come give us the strength to overcome. If you would be discharged from all the debts you owe to God and man, the debts you have incurred by willfully transgressing law, you must pass by the debts of every man, for as you deal with other men your God will deal with you. And when you fast you may not advertise the deed. 
When fast the hypocrites they paint their faces, look demure, assume a pious pose, that they may seem to men to fast. A fast is deed of soul, and like a prayer, it is a function of the silence of the soul. God never passes by unnoticed any prayer, or fast. He walks within the silence, and his benedictions rest on every effort of the soul. Deception is hypocrisy, and you shall not assume to be what you are not. You may not clothe yourselves in special garb to advertise your piety, nor yet assume the tone of voice that men conceive to be a holy voice. And when you give to aid the needy ones, blow not a trumpet in the street, nor a synagogue to advertise your gift. He who does alms for praise of men has his reward from men, but God regardeth not. In giving alms do not let the right hand know the secret of the left. Chapter 95 And Jesus and the twelve went to the mountain top, and Jesus said, Twelve pillars of the church, apostles of the Christ, light bearers of the Son of Life and ministers of God to men, in just a little while you must go forth alone, and preach the gospel of the King, first to the Jews and then to all the world. And you shall go, not with a scourge of cords to drive, you cannot drive men to the king, but you shall go in love and helpfulness and lead the way to right and light. Go forth and say, the kingdom is at hand. Worthy are the strong in spirit, theirs the kingdom is. Worthy are the meek, they shall possess the land. Worthy they who hunger and thirst for right, they shall be satisfied. Worthy are the merciful, and mercy shall be shown to them. Worthy they who gain the mastery of self, they have the key of power. Worthy are the pure in heart, and they shall see the king. Worthy they who are maligned and wronged because they do the right, their persecutors they shall bless. Worthy is the trustful child of faith, he shall sit in the throne of power. Be not discouraged when the world shall persecute and call you cursed, but rather be exceeding glad. The prophets and the seers, and all the good of earth, have been maligned. If you are worthy of the crown of life you will be slandered, vilified and cursed on earth. Rejoice when evil men shall drive you from their ways and cause your name to be a hiss and byword in the street. I say, rejoice but deal in mercy with the doers of the wrong, they are but children at their play, they know not what they do. Rejoice not over fallen foes. As you help men rise from the depth of sin, so God will help you on to greater heights. Woe to the rich is gold and lands, they have temptations multiforms. Woe unto men who walk at will in pleasure's paths, their ways are full of snares and dangerous pits. Woe to the proud, they stand upon a precipice, destruction waits for them. Woe to the man of greed, for what he has is not his own, and lo, another comes, wealth is gone. Woe to the hypocrite, his form is fair to look upon, his heart is filled with carcasses and dead men's bones. Woe to the cruel and relentless man, he is himself the victim of his deeds. The evil he would do to other men rebounds. The scourger is the scourged. Woe to the libertine who preys upon the virtues of the weak. The hour comes when he will be the weak, the victim of a libertine of greater power. Woe unto you when all the world shall speak in praise of you. The world speaks not in praise of men who live within the holy breath, it speaks in praise of prophets false, and of illusions base. You men who walk in holy breath are salt the salt of earth, but if you lose your virtue you are salt in name alone, worth nothing more than dust. And you are light, are called to light the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid, its lights are seen afar, and while you stand upon the hills of life men see your light and imitate your works and honor God. Men do not light a lamp and hide it in a cask, they put it on a stand that it may light the house. You are the lamps of God, must not stand in the shade of earth illusions, but in the open, high upon the stand. I am not come to nullify the law, nor to destroy, but to fulfill. The law, 
the Prophets and the Psalms were written in the wisdom of the holy breath and cannot fail. The heavens and earth that are will change and pass away, the word of God is sure, it cannot pass until it shall accomplish that whereunto it hath been sent. Whoever disregards the law of God and teaches men to do the same, becomes a debtor unto God and cannot see his face until he has returned and paid his debt by sacrifice of life. But he who hearkens unto God and keeps his law and does his will on earth, shall rule with Christ. The scribes and Pharisees regard the letter of the law, they cannot comprehend the spirit of the law, and if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of scribe and Pharisee you cannot come into the kingdom of the soul. It is not what man does that gives him right to enter through the gates, his password is his character and desire is his character. The letter of the law deals with the acts of man, the spirit of the law takes note of his desires. Chapter 96 God gave the Ten Commandments unto men, upon the mountain Moses saw the words of God, he wrote them down on solid rock, they cannot be destroyed. These Ten Commandments show the justice side of God, but now the love of God made manifest brings mercy on the wings of holy breath. Upon the unity of God the law was built. In all the world there is one force, Jehovah is Almighty God. Jehovah wrote upon the heavens and Moses read, I am Almighty God and you shall have no God but me. There is one force, but many phases of that force, these phases men call powers. All powers are of God, and they are manifests of God, they are spirits of the God. If men could seem to find another force and worship at its shrine, they would but court illusion, vain, a shadow of the one, Jehovah, God, and they who worship shadows are but shadows on the wall, for men are what caught. And God would have all men to be the substance, and in mercy he commanded, you shall seek no God but me. And finite men can never comprehend infinite things. Man cannot make an image of the infinite in force. And when men make a god of stone or wood or clay they make an image of a shade, and they who worship at the shrine of shades are shades. So God in mercy said, You shall not carve out images of wood, or clay, or stone. Such idols are ideals, abased ideals, and men can gain no higher plane than their ideals. The God is spirit men must worship if they would attain a consciousness of God. But man can never make a picture or an image of the holy breath. The name of God man may not speak with carnal lips, with holy breath alone can man pronounce the name. In vanity men think they know the name of God, they speak it lightly and irreverently, and thus they are accursed. If men did know the sacred name and spoke it with unholy lips, they would not live to speak it once again. But God in mercy has not yet unveiled his name to those who cannot speak with holy breath. But they who speak the substitute in idle way are guilty in the sight of God, who said, You shall not take the name of God in vain. The number of the holy breath is seven, and God holds in his hands the sevens of time. In forming worlds he rested on the seventh day, and every seventh day is set apart as Sabbath day for men. God said, The seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, remember it and keep it wholly set apart for works of holiness, that is, for works not for the selfish self, but for the universal self. Men may do work for self upon the six days of the week, but on the Sabbath of the Lord they must do naught for self. This day is consecrated unto God, but man serves God by serving man. Chapter 97 God is not force alone, for wisdom is his counterpart. When cherubim instructed man in wisdom's ways they said that wisdom is the mother of the race, as force is father of the race. The man who honors the almighty and omniscient God is blessed, and in the tables of the law we read, Pay homage to your father and mother of the race, that your days may be prolonged upon the land that they have given you. The letter of the law commands, You shall not kill, and he who kills must stand before the judgment seat. A person may desire to kill, 
yet if he does not kill he is not judged by law. The spirit of the law avers that he who shall desire to kill, or seeks revenge, is angry with a man without sufficient cause, must answer to the judge, and he who calls his brother soulless vagabond shall answer to the counsel of the just, and he who calls his brother a degenerate, a dog, fans into life the burning fires of hell within himself. Now, in the higher law we read that if your brother is aggrieved by something you have done, before you offer unto God your gifts, go forth and find your brother and be reconciled to him. It is not well to let the sun go down upon your wrath. If he will not be reconciled when you have laid aside all selfish pleas, have waived all selfish rights, you will be guiltless in the sight of God, then go and offer unto God your gifts. If you owe aught to any man and cannot pay, or if a man shall claim a greater sum than is his due it is not well that you dispute his claims. Resistance is the sire of anger, there is no mercy and no reason in a wrathful man. I tell you it is better far to suffer loss than go to law, or call upon the courts of men to judge of right and wrong. The law of carnal man would say, eye for eye and tooth for tooth resist encroachment on your rights. But this is not the law of God. The holy breath would say, resist not him who would deprive you of your goods. He who would take your coat by force is still a brother man and you should gain his heart, which by resistance cannot be done, give him your coat and offer him still more and more, in time the man will rise above the brute, you will have saved him from himself. Refuse not him who calls for help and give to him who asks to borrow aught. And if a man shall strike you in a fitful, or an angry way, it is not well to smite him in return. Men call him coward who will not fight and thus defend his rights, but he is much the greater man who is assailed, is smitten and does not smite, who is maligned and answers not, than he who smites the smiter and reviles the one who slanders him. It has been said in olden times that man shall love his friend and hate his foe, but, lo, I say, be merciful unto your foes, bless those who slander you, do good to those who do you harm and pray for those who trample on your rights. Remember, you are children of the God who makes his son to rise alike upon the evil and the good, who sends his reign upon the unjust and the just. If you do unto other men as they do unto you, you are but slaves, but followers in the way to death. But you, as children of the light, must lead the way. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. When you do good to those who have done good to you, you do no more than other men, the publicans do that. If you salute your friends and not your foes, you are like other men, the publicans have set the pace. Be perfect as your Father God in heaven is. Chapter 98 The law forbids adultery, but in the eyes of law adultery is an overt act, the satisfaction of the sensual self outside the marriage bonds. Now, marriage in the sight of law is but a promise made by man and woman, by the sanction of a priest, to live for I in harmony and love. No priest nor officer has power from God to bind two souls in wedded love. What is the marriage tie? Is it comprised in what a priest or officer may say? Is it the scroll on which the officer or priest has written the permission for the two to live in marriage bonds? Is it the promise of the two that they will love each other until death? Is love a passion that is subject to the will of man? Can man pick up his love, as he would pick up precious gems, and lay it down, or give it out to anyone? Can love be bought and sold like sheep? Love is the power of God that binds two souls and makes them one, there is no power on earth that can dissolve the bond. The bodies may be forced apart by man or death for just a little time, but they will meet again. Now, in this bond of God we find the marriage tie, all other unions are but bonds of straw, and they who live in them commit adultery. The same as they who satisfy their lust without the sanction of an officer or priest. But more than this, the man or woman who indulges lustful thoughts commits adultery. Whom God has joined together man cannot part, 
whom man has joined together live in sin. Upon a table of the law, the great lawgiver wrote, Thou shalt not steal. Before the eyes of law a man to steal must take a thing that can be seen with eyes of flesh, without the knowledge or consent of him to whom the thing belongs. But, lo, I say that he who in his heart desires to possess that which is not his own, and would deprive the owner of the thing without his knowledge or consent, is in the sight of God, a thief. The things that men see not with eyes of flesh are of more worth than other things that man can see. A man's good name is worth a thousand mines of gold, and he who says a word or does a deed that injures or defames that name has taken what is not his own, and is a thief. Upon a table of the law we also read, Thou shalt not covet anything. To covet is an all-consuming wish to have what is not right for one to have. And such a wish, within the spirit of the law, is theft. Chapter 99 The law has said, Thou shalt not lie, but in the eyes of law a man to lie must tell in words what is not true. Now, in the light of spirit law, deceit in any form is nothing but a lie. A man may lie by look or act, yea, even by his silence may deceive, and thus be guilty in the eyes of holy breath. It has been said in olden times, Thou shalt not swear by thine own life. But, lo, I say, swear not at all, not by the head, the heart, the eye, nor hand, not by the sun, the moon, nor stars, not by the name of God, nor by the name of any spirit, good or bad. You shall not swear by anything, for in an oath there is no gain. A man whose word must be propped up by oath of any kind is not trustworthy in the sight of God or man. By oath you cannot make a leaf to fall, nor turn the color of a hair. The man of worth just speaks and men know that he speaks the truth. The man who pours out many words to make think he speaks the truth, is simply making smoke to hide a lie. And there are many men with seeming double hearts men who would serve two masters at a time two masters quite adverse. Men feign to worship God upon the Sabbath day and then pay court to Beeltebal on every other day. No man can serve two masters at a time no more than he can ride two asses at a time that go in different ways. The man who feigns to worship God and Beeltebal is foe of God, a pious devil and a curse of men and men cannot lay treasures up in heaven and earth at once. Then, lo, I say, lift up your eyes and see the safety vaults of heaven, and there deposit every gem. Where moth and rust cannot corrupt, where thieves cannot break in and steal. There are no safety vaults on earth, no place secure from moth, and rust and thieves. The treasures of the earth are but elusive things that pass away. Be not deceived, your treasures are the anchor of the soul, and where your treasures are your heart will be. Fix not your heart upon the things of earth, be anxious not about the things to eat, or drink or wear. God cares for those who trust in him and serve the race. Behold the birds. They praise God in their songs, the earth is made more glorious by their ministry of joy. God keeps them in the hollow of his hand, and not a sparrow falls to earth without his care, and every one that falls shall rise again. Behold the flowers of earth. They trust in God and grow, they make the earth resplendent with their beauty and perfume. Look at the lilies of the field, the messengers of holy love. No son of man, not even Solomon in all his excellence, was ever clothed like one of these and yet they simply trust in God, they feed from out his hand, they lay their heads to rest upon his breast. If God so clothes and feeds the flowers and birds that do his will, will he not feed and clothe his children when they trust in him? Seek first the kingdom of the soul, the righteousness of God, the good of men, and feed, and clothe. Chapter 100 There is a rule that carnal man has made, and which he rigidly observes, do unto other men as they do unto you. As others judge, they judge, as others give, they give. Now, while you walk with men as men, judge not, 
and you shall not be judged. For as you judge you shall be judged, and as you give it shall be given to you. If you condemn, you are condemned. When you show mercy, men are merciful to you, and if you love in such a way that carnal man can comprehend your love, you will be well beloved. And so the wise man of this world does unto other men as he would have them do to him. The carnal man does good to other men for selfish gain, for he expects to have his blessings multiplied and then returned, he does not stop to note the end. Man is himself the field, his deeds are seeds, and what he does to others grows apace, the harvest time is sure. Behold the yield. If he has sown the wind, he reaps the wind, if he has sown the noxious seeds of scandal, theft and hate, of sensuality and crime, the harvest is assured and he must reap what he has sown, yea, more, the seeds produce an hundredfold. The fruit of righteousness and peace and love and joy can never spring from noxious seeds, the fruit is like the seed. And when you sow, sow seeds of right, because it is the right, and not in the way of trade, expecting rich rewards. The carnal man abhors the spirit law, because it takes away his liberty to live in sin, beneath its light he cannot satisfy his passions and desires. He is at enmity with him who walks in holy breath. The carnal man has killed the holy men of old, the prophets and the seers. And he will buffet you, will charge you falsely, scourge you and imprison you, and think he does the will of God to slay you in the streets. But you may not prejudge nor censure him who does you wrong. Each one has problems to be solved, and he must solve them for himself. The man who scourges you may have a load of sin to bear, but how about your own? A little sin in one who walks in holy breath is greater in the sight of God than monster sins in him who never knew the way. How can you see the splinter in your brother's eye while you have chunks within your own? First take the chunks from out your eye and then you may behold the splinter in your brother's eye and help him take it out, and while your eyes are full of foreign things you cannot see the way, for you are blind, and when the blind lead forth the blind, both lose the way and fall into the slough. If you would lead the way to God you must be clear in sight, as well as pure in heart. Chapter 101 The fruitage of the tree of life is all too fine to feed the carnal mind. If you would throw a diamond to a hungry dog, lo, he would turn away, or else attack you in a rage. The incense that is sweet to God is quite offensive unto Beeltebul, the bread of heaven is but chaff to men who cannot comprehend the spirit life. The master must be wise and feed the soul with what it can digest. If you have not the food for every man, just ask and you shall have, seek earnestly and you shall find. Just speak the word and knock, the door will fly ajar. No one has ever asked in faith and did not have, none ever sought in vain, no one who ever knocked aright has failed to find an open door. When men shall ask you for the bread of heaven, turn not away, nor give to them the fruit of carnal trees. If one, a son, would ask you for a loaf, would you give him a stone? If he would ask you for a fish, would you give him a serpent of the dust? What you would have your God give unto you, give unto men. The measure of your worth lies in your service unto men. There is a way that leads unto the perfect life, few find it at a time. It is a narrow way, it lies among the rocks and pitfalls of the carnal life but in the way there are no pitfalls and no rocks. There is a way that leads to wretchedness and want. It is a spacious way and many walk therein. It lies among the pleasure groves of carnal life. Beware, for many claim to walk the way of life who walk the way of death. But they are false in word and deed, false prophets they. They clothe themselves in skins of sheep, while they are vicious wolves. They cannot long conceal themselves, men know them by their fruits, you cannot gather grapes from thorns, nor from the thistles, figs. The fruit is daughter of the tree and, like the parent, 
so the child, and every tree that bears not wholesome fruit is plucked up by the roots and cast away, because a man prays long and loud is not a sign that he is saint. The praying men are not all in the kingdom of the soul. The man who lives the holy life, who does the will of God, abides within the kingdom of the soul. The good man from the treasures of his heart sends blessedness and peace to all the world. The evil man sends thoughts that blight and wither hope and joy and fill the world with wretchedness and woe. Men think and act and speak out of the abundance of the heart. And when the judgment hour shall come a host of men will enter pleadings for themselves and think to buy the favor of the judge with words. And they will say, Lo, we have wrought a multitude of works in the omnific name, have we not prophesied? Have we not cured all manner of disease? Have we not cast the evil spirits out of those obsessed? And then the judge will say, I know you not. You rendered service unto God in words when in your heart you worshipped Beelzebul. The evil one may use the powers of life, and do a multitude of mighty works. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. The man who hears the words of life and does them not is like the man who builds his house upon the sand, which when the floods come on, is washed away and all is lost. But he who hears the words of life and in an honest, sincere heart receives and treasures them and lives the holy life, is like the man who builds the house upon the rock, the floods may come, the winds may blow the storms may beat upon his house, it is not moved. Go forth and build your life upon the solid rock of truth, and all the powers of the evil one will shake it not. And Jesus finished all his sayings on the mount and then he, with the twelve, returned unto Capernaum. Chapter 102 The twelve apostles went with Jesus to his home, and their abode for certain days. And Jesus told them many things about the inner life that may not now be written in a book. Now, in Capernaum, there lived a man of wealth, a Roman captain of a hundred men, who loved the Jews and who had built for them a synagogue. A servant of this man was paralyzed, and he was sick nigh unto death. The captain knew of Jesus and had heard that by the sacred word he healed the sick, and he had faith in him. He sent a message by the elders of the Jews to Jesus, and he pled for help. And Jesus recognized the captain's faith and went at once to heal the sick. The captain met him on the way and said to him, Lo, Lord, it is not well that you should come unto my house, I am not worthy of the presence of a man of God. I am a man of war, my life is spent with those who oft times take the lives of fellow men. And surely he who comes to save would be dishonored if he came beneath my roof. If you will speak the word I know my servant will be well. And Jesus turned and said to those who followed him, Behold the captain's faith, I have not seen such faith, no, not in Israel. Behold, the feast is spread for you, but while you doubt and wait, the alien comes in faith and takes the bread of life. Then turning to the man he said, Go on your way, according to your faith so shall it be, your servant lives. It came to pass that at the time that Jesus spoke the word the palsied man arose, and he was well. And then the Christines went abroad to teach. And as they came to Nine, a city on the Hermon Way, they saw a multitude about the gates. It was a funeral train, a widow's son was dead and friends were bearing out the body to the tomb. It was the widow's only son, and she was wild with grief. And Jesus said to her, Weep not, I am the life, your son shall live. And Jesus raised his hand, the bearers of the dead stood still. And Jesus touched the bier and said, Young man, return. The soul returned, the body of the dead was filled with life, the man sat up and spoke. The people were astonished at the scene, and everyone exclaimed, Praise God! A Jewish priest stood forth and said, Behold a mighty prophet has appeared, and all the people said, Amen. The Christines journeyed on, they taught, and healed the sick in many towns of Galilee, 
and then they came again unto Capernaum. Chapter 103 The home of Jesus was a school where in the early morning hours the twelve apostles and the foreign priests were taught the secret things of God. And there were present priests from China, India, and from Babylon, from Persia, Egypt and from Greece, who came to sit at Jesus' feet to learn the wisdom that he brought to men, that they might teach their people how to live the holy life. And Jesus taught them how to teach, he told them of the trials of the way, and how to make these trials serve the race. He taught them how to live the holy life that they might conquer death, he taught them what the end of mortal life will be, when man has reached the consciousness that he and God are one. The after midday hours were given to the multitudes who came to learn the way of life and to be healed, and many did believe and were baptized. Now, in his prison by the bitter sea the harbinger had heard of all the mighty works that Jesus did. His prison life was hard, and he was sore distressed, and he began to doubt. And to himself he said, I wonder if this Jesus is the Christ of whom the prophets wrote. Was I mistaken in my work? Was I, indeed, one sent from God to pave the way for him who shall redeem our people, Israel? And then he sent some of his friends, who came to see him in his prison cell, up to Capernaum that they might learn about this man, and bring him word. The men found Jesus in his home, and said, Behold the harbinger sent us to ask, Are you the Christ? Or is he yet to come? But Jesus answered not, he simply bade the men to tarry certain days that they might see and hear. They saw him heal the sick and cause the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the blind to see, they saw him cast the evil spirits out of those obsessed, they saw him raise the dead. They heard him preach the gospel to the poor. Then Jesus said to them, Go on your way, return to John and tell him all that you have seen and heard, then he will know. They went their way. The multitudes were there, and Jesus said to them, Once you were crowding Jordan's fords, you filled the wilderness. What did you go to see? The trees of Judah, and the flowers of Heth. Or did you go to see a man in kingly garb? Or did you go to see a prophet and a seer? I tell you, men, you know not whom you saw. A prophet. Yea, and more, a messenger whom God had sent to pave the way for what you see and hear this day. Among the men of earth a greater man has never lived than John. Behold I say, this man whom Herod bound in chains and cast into a prison cell is God's Elijah come again to earth. Elijah, who did not pass the gate of death, whose body of this flesh was changed, and he awoke in paradise. When John came forth and preached the gospel of repentance for the cleansing of the soul, the common folks believed and were baptized. The lawyers and the Pharisees accepted not the teachings of this man, were not baptized. Behold, neglected opportunities will never come again. Behold, the people are unstable as the waters of the sea, they seek to be excused from righteousness. John came and ate no bread, and drank no wine. He lived the simplest life apart from men, and people said, he is obsessed. Another comes who eats and drinks and lives in homes like other men, and people say, he is a glutton, an inebriate, a friend of publicans and those who sin. Woe unto you, you cities of the Vale of Galilee, where all the mighty works of God are done. Woe to Chorazin and Bethsaida. If half the mighty works that have been done in you were done in Tyre and in Sidon they would have long ago repented of their sins, and sought the way of right. And when the judgment day shall come, lo, Tyre and Sidon will be called more worthy than will you. Because they slighted not their gifts, while you have thrown away the pearl of greatest price. Woe unto you Capernaum! Behold, you are exalted now, but you shall be abased, for if the mighty works that have been done in you had but been done within the cities of the plain of Sodom and Zebwam they would have heard and turned to God, would not have been destroyed. They perished in their ignorance, they had no light, 
but you have heard, you have the evidence. The light of life has shone above your hills and all the shores of Galilee have been ablaze with light. The glory of the Lord has shone in every street and synagogue and home, but you have spurned the light. And, lo, I say, the judgment day will come and God will deal in greater mercy with the cities of the plains than he will deal with you. Chapter 104 And Jesus looked upon the multitudes who pressed about for selfish gain. The men of learning and of wealth, of reputation and of power, were there, but they knew not the Christ. Their eyes were blinded by the tinseled glitter of their selfish selves, they could not see the King. And though they walked within the light, they groped about in dark a darkness like the night of death. And Jesus cast his eyes to heaven and said, I thank thee, Holy One of heaven and earth that while the light is hidden from the wise and great, it is revealed to babes. Then turning to the multitudes he said, I come to you not in the name of man, nor in a strength my own. The wisdom and the virtue that I bring to you are from above, they are the wisdom and the virtue of the God whom we adore. The words I speak are not my words, I give to you what I receive. Come unto me all you who labor and pull heavy loads and I will give you aid. Put on the yoke of Christ with me, it does not chafe, it is an easy yoke. Together we will pull the load of life with ease, and so rejoice. A Pharisee, whose name was Simon, made a feast, and Jesus was the honored guest. And as they sat about the board, a courtesan who had been cured of her desire to sin by what she had received and seen in Jesus' ministry, came uninvited to the feast. She brought an alabaster box of costly balm and as the guests reclined she came to Jesus in her joy, because she been freed from sin. Her tears fell fast, she kissed his feet, and dried them with her hair, and she anointed them with balm. And Simon thought, he did not speak aloud, this man is not a prophet or he would know the kind of woman that approaches him, and would drive her away. But Jesus knew his thoughts and said to him, My host, I have a word to say to you. And Simon said, Say on. And Jesus said, Sign is a monster of iniquity, it may be small, it may be large, it may be something left undone. Behold, one person leads a life of sin and is at last redeemed, another, in a careless mood, forgets to do the things he ought to do but he reforms and is forgiven. Now, which of these has merited the higher praise? And Simon said, The one who overcame the error of a life. And Jesus said, You speak the truth. Behold this woman who has bathed my feet with tears and dried them with her hair and covered them with balm. For years she led a life of sin, but when she heard the words of life she sought forgiveness and she found... But when I came into your house as guest you gave me not a bowl of water that I might wash my hands and feet, which every loyal Jew must do before he feasts. Now, tell me, Simon, which of these, this woman or yourself, is worthy of most praise? But Simon answered not. Then to the woman Jesus said, Your sins are all forgiven, your faith has saved you, go in peace. And then the guests who sat around the board, began to say within themselves, What manner of a man is this who says, Thy sins are all forgiven? Chapter 105 Now, many women who possessed much wealth, and abode in other towns of Galilee, implored that Jesus and the twelve, together with the masters from the foreign lands, would thither go and preach and heal. Among these anxious ones were Mary Magdalene who was obsessed by seven homeless spirits of the air, which had been driven out by the omnific word which Jesus spoke, Susanna, who owned vast estates at Caesarea Philippi, Joha, wife of Chusa, one of Herod's court, and Rachel from the coast of Tyre, and other from beyond the Jordan and the Sea of Galilee. And they provided ample means and three times seven men went forth. They preached the gospel of the Christ and they baptized the multitudes who made confession of their faith, they healed the sick and raised the dead. And Jesus wrought and taught from early morn until the day had gone, 
and then into the night, he did not stop to eat. His friends became alarmed lest he should fail from loss of strength, and they laid hold of him and would, by force, have taken him away to a place of rest. But he rebuked them not, he said, Have you not read that God will give his angels charge concerning me? That they would hold me fast and suffer not that I should come to want. I tell you, men, while I am giving out my strength unto these anxious, waiting throngs I find myself at rest within the arms of God, whose blessed messengers bring down to me the bread of life. There is a tide just once in human life. These people now are willing to receive the truth, their opportunity is now, our opportunity is now, and if we do not teach them while we may, the tide will ebb, they may not care again to hear the truth, then tell me, who will bear the guilt? And so he taught and healed. Among the multitudes were men of every shade of thought. They were divided in their views concerning everything that Jesus said. Some saw in him a god, and would have worshipped him, and others saw in him a devil of the netherworld and would have cast him in a pit. And some were trying hard to lead a double life, like little lions of the ground that take upon themselves the color of the thing they rest upon. These people without anchorage of any sort, are friends or foes as seemed to serve them best. And Jesus said, No man can serve two masters at a time. No man can be a friend and foe at once. All men are rising up, or sinking down, are building up, or tearing down. If you are gathering not the precious grain, then you are throwing it away. He is a coward who would feign to be a friend, or foe, to please another man. You men, do not deceive yourselves in thought. Your hearts are known, hypocrisy will blight a soul as surely as the breath of Beeltebul. An honest evil man is more esteemed by guardians of the soul than a dishonest pious man. If you would curse the son of man, just curse him out aloud. A curse is poison to the inner man, and if you hold and swallow down a curse it never will digest, lo, it will poison every atom of your soul. And if you sin against a son of man, you may be pardoned and your guilt be cleansed by acts of kindness and of love, but if you sin against the holy breath by disregarding her when she would open up the doors of life for you, by closing up the windows of the soul when she would pour the light of love into your hearts, and cleanse them with the fires of God, your guilt shall not be blotted out in this, nor in the life to come. An opportunity has gone to come no more, and you must wait until the ages roll again. Then will the holy breath again breathe on your fires of life, and fan them to a living flame. Then she will open up the doors again, and you may let her in to sup with you forevermore, or you may slight her once again, and then again. You men of Israel, your opportunity is now. Your tree of life is an elusive tree, it has a generous crop of leaves, its boughs hang low with fruit. Behold, your words are leaves your deeds the fruit. Behold, for men have plucked the apples of your tree of life, and found them full of bitterness, and worms have eaten to the core. Behold that fig tree by the way so full of leaves and worthless fruit. Then Jesus spoke a word that nature spirits know, and lo, the fig tree stood a mass of withered leaves. And then he spoke again, Behold, for God will speak the word, and you will stand a withered fig tree in the setting sun. You men of Galilee, send forth and call the pruner in before it is too late, and let him prune away your worthless branches and elusive leaves, and let the sun shine in. The sun is life, and it can change your worthlessness to worth. Your tree of life is good, but you have nurtured it so long with dews of self and mists of carnal things that you have shut the sunshine out. I tell you, men, that you must give account to God for every idle word you speak and every evil deed you do. Chapter 106 Magdala is beside the sea, and here the teachers taught. A man obsessed, and who was blind and dumb was brought, and Jesus spoke the word, and lo, the evil spirits went away, the man spoke out. 
his eyes were opened and he saw. This was the greatest work that men had seen the Master do, and they were all amazed. The Pharisees were there, and they were full of jealous rage, they sought a cause whereby they might condemn. They said, Yes, it is true that Jesus does a multitude of mighty works, but men should know that he is leagued with Beeltebul. He is a sorcerer, a black magician of the Simon Sarus type, he works as Yornis and as Jambres did in Moses' day. For Satan, prince of evil spirits, is his stay by night and day and in the name of Satan he casts the demons out, and in his name he heals the sick and raises up the dead. But Jesus knew their thoughts, he said to them, You men are masters, and you know the law, whatever is arrayed against itself must fall, a house divided cannot stand, a kingdom warring with itself is brought to naught. If Satan casts the devil out, how can his kingdom stand? If I, by Beeltebul, cast devils out, by whom do you cast devils out? But if I, in the holy name of God, cast devils out, and make the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the blind to see, the dumb to speak, has not God's kingdom come to you? The Pharisees were dumb, they answered not. As Jesus spoke a messenger approached and said to him, your mother and your brothers wish to speak with you. And Jesus said, Who is my mother? And my brothers, who are they? And then he spoke a word aside unto the foreign masters and the twelve, he said, Behold, men recognize their mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers here in flesh, but when the veil is rent and men walk in the realms of soul, the tender lines of love that bind the groups of fleshly kin in families will fade away. Not that the love for anyone will be the less, but men will see in all the motherhood, the fatherhood, the sisterhood, the brotherhood of man. The family groups of earth will all be lost in universal love and fellowship divine. Then to the multitudes he said, Whoever lives the life and does the will of God is child of God and is my mother, father, sister, friend. And then he went aside to speak to mother and his other kindred in the flesh. But he saw more than these. The maiden who once thrilled his very soul with love. A love beyond the love of any fleshly kin, who was the sorest tempter in the temple Heliopolis beside the Nile, who sung for him the sacred songs, was there. The recognition was of kindred souls, and Jesus said, Behold, for God has brought to us a power men cannot comprehend, a power of purity and love, to make more light the burdens of the hour, to be a balm for wounded souls, to win the multitude to better ways by sacred song and holy life. Behold, for Miriam who stood beside the sea and sung the song of victory when Moses led the way, will sing again. And all the choirs of heaven will join and sing the glad refrain, Peace, peace on earth goodwill to men. And Miriam stood before the waiting throngs and sung again the songs of victory, and all the people said, Amen. Chapter 107 A Pharisee elated with himself stood forth among the multitudes and said to Jesus, Sir, we would have you demonstrate. If you are truly Christ who was to come, then you can surely do what black magicians cannot do. Lo, they can talk and hold the multitudes with words of power, and they can heal the sick and drive the demons out of those obsessed, they can control the storms, and fire and earth and air will hear and answer when they speak. Now, if you will ascend and from that tower fly across the sea, we will believe that you are sent from God. And Jesus said, No black magician ever lived a holy life, you have a demonstration of the Christ life every day. But lo, you evil and adulterous scribes and Pharisees, you cannot see a spirit sign, because your spirit eyes are full of carnal self. You seek a sign to please your curiosity. You walk the very lowest planes of carnal life and cry, Phenomena. Show us a sign and then we will believe. I was not sent to earth to buy up faith as men buy fish and fruit and rubbish in the streets. Men seem to think it quite a favor done to me when they confess their faith in me and in the Holy Christ. 
What does it matter unto me as man if you believe or disbelieve? Faith is not something you can buy with coin, it is not something you can sell for gold. Once Mart, a beggar, followed me and cried, Give me a silver piece, then I will believe in you. And you are like this beggar man, you offer to exchange your faith for signs. But I will give to all the world one sign as surety that the Christ abides with me. You all have read the parable of Jonah and the fish, wherein it is recorded that the prophet spent three days and nights within the stomach of the mighty fish, and then came forth. The Son of Man will spend three days and nights within the heart of earth and then come forth again, and men will see and know. Behold, the light may be so bright that men cannot see anything. The Spirit light has shone so brightly over Galilee that you who hear me now are blind. You may have read the words of Prophet Israel, he said, The light shall shine out brightly in the darkness of the night, and men shall comprehend it not. That time has come, the light shines forth, you see it not. The Queen of Sheba sat in darkest night and still she yearned for light. She came to hear the words of wisdom from the lips of Solomon, and she believed, and she became a living torch, and when she reached her home, lo, all Arabia was filled with light. A greater far than Solomon is here, the Christ is here, the day star had risen, and you reject the light. And you remember Nineveh, the wicked city of Assyria, which God had marked to be destroyed by shock and flame unless the people turned and walked in ways of right. And Jonah raised his voice and said, In forty days shall Nineveh be raised, and her wealth shall be destroyed. The people heard and they believed, and they reformed and turned to ways of right, and lo, their city was not raised, was not destroyed. You men of Galilee, I tell you that Arabia and Nineveh will testify against you in the judgment day. Behold, for every one to whom I speak has in him all the fires of God, but they are lying dead. The will is bridled by the flesh desires, and it brings not the ethos of the fires to vibrate into light. Look, therefore, to your soul and note, is not the light within you dark as night? There is no breath but holy breath that e'er can fan your fires of life into a living flame and make them light. And holy breath can raise the ethos of the fires to light in none but hearts of purity and love. Here, then, you men of Galilee, make pure the heart, admit the holy breath, and then your bodies will be full of light. And like a city on a hill, your light will shine afar, and thus your light may light the way for other men. Chapter 108 The multitudes were wild with selfish thought, none recognized the rights and needs of any other one. The stronger pushed the weak aside, and trampled on them in their haste to be the first to get a blessing for himself. And Jesus said, Behold the cage of beasts untamed, a den of stinging vipers, maddened by their fiendish greed of selfish gain. I tell you, men, the benefits that come to men who see no further than themselves are baubles in the morning light, they are unreal, they pass away. The selfish soul is fed today, the food does not assimilate, the soul grows not, and then it must be fed again, and then again. Behold, a selfish man obsessed by just one spirit of the air, by the omnific word the spirit is cast out, it wanders through dry places seeking rest and finding none. And then it comes again, the selfish man has failed to close and lock the door, the unclean spirit finds the house all swept and cleaned, it enters in and takes with it full seven other spirits more unclean than is itself, and there they dwell. The last state of the man is more than sevenfold more wretched than the first. And so it is with you who snatch the blessings that belong to other men. While Jesus spoke a certain woman who stood near exclaimed, Most blessed is the mother of this man of God. And Jesus said, Yes, blessed is she, but doubly blessed are they who hear, receive and live the word of God. A Pharisee of wealth prepared a feast, and Jesus and the twelve, together with the masters from afar, were guests. 
and Jesus did not wash his hands according to the strictest Pharisaic rules, before he ate, when this the Pharisee observed he marveled much. And Jesus said, My host, why do you marvel that I did not wash my hands? The Pharisees wash well their hands and feet, they cleanse the body every day when, lo, within is every form of filth. Their hearts are full of wickedness, extortions and deceit. Did not the God who made the outside of the body make the inside, too? And then he said, Woe unto you, you Pharisees! For you tithe mint and rue, and every herb, and pass by judgment and the love of God. Woe unto you, you Pharisees! You love the highest seats in synagogues and courts, and bid for salutations in the market place. Woe unto you, you tinsel gentry of the land! No man would ever think you servants of the Lord of hosts by what you do. A lawyer sitting near remarked, Rabboni, your words are harsh, and then in what you say you censure us, and why? And Jesus said, Woe unto you, you masters of the law! You heap great burdens on the sons of men, yea, loads by far too great for them to bear, and you will never help to bear a feather's weight yourselves. Woe unto you! You build the tombs of prophets and of seers, they whom your fathers killed, and you are parties to the crimes. And now behold, for God has sent again to you his holy men apostles, prophets, seers, and you are persecuting them. The time is near when you will plead against them in the courts, will spurn them into prison cells, and kill them with a fiend's delight. I tell you, men, the blood of all the holy men of God that has been shed from righteous Abel down to that of Zacharias, father of holy John, who was struck down beside the altar in the holy place the blood of all these holy men has made more red the hands of this ungodly generation. Woe unto you, you masters of the law! You snatch the keys of knowledge from the hands of men, you close the doors, you enter not yourselves, and suffer not the willing ones to enter in. His words provoked the Pharisees, the lawyers and the scribes, and they, resenting, poured upon him torrents of abuse. The truths he spoke came like a thunderbolt from heaven, the rulers counseled how they might ensnare him by his words, they sought a legal way to shed his blood. Chapter 109 Now, when the feast was finished Jesus with the foreign masters and the twelve, with Mary, Miriam and a band of loyal women who believed in Christ, went to a place apart to pray. And when their silence ended Jesus said, Be on your guard, the leaven of the Pharisees is being thrown in every measure of the meal of life. It is a poison that will taint whatever it may touch, and it will blight the soul as sure as fumes of the diabolos, it is hypocrisy. The Pharisees seem fair in speech, but they are diabolical in heart. And then they seem to think that thought is something they can lock within themselves. They do not seem to know that every thought and wish is photographed and then preserved within the book of life to be revealed at any time the Master's will. That which is thought, or wished, or done in darkest night shall be proclaimed in brightest day, that which is whispered in the ear within the secret place shall be made known upon the streets. And in the judgment day when all the books are opened up, these men, and every other man, shall be adjudged, not by what they've said or done, but by the ways in which they used the thoughts of God, and how the ethos of eternal love were made to serve. For men may make these ethers serve the carnal self, or serve the holy self within. Behold, these men may kill the body of this flesh, but what of that? The flesh is but a transitory thing, and soon, by natural law, will pass, their slaughter only hastens nature's work a little time. And when they kill the flesh they reach their bounds of power, they cannot kill the soul. But nature is the keeper of the soul as of the flesh, and in the harvest time of soul, the trees of life are all inspected by the judge, and every tree that bears no fruit of good is plucked up by the roots and cast into the flames. Who then shall you regard? Not him who has the power to kill the flesh, and nothing more. 
Regard the Mighty One who has the power to dissolve both soul and body in the flames of nature's fire. But man is king, he may direct his thoughts, his loves, his life, and gain the prize of everlasting life. And you are not abandoned in your struggle for the crown of life. Your father lives, and you shall live. God has a care for every living thing. He numbers stars, and suns, and moons, he numbers angels, men and everything below, the birds, the flowers, the trees, the very petals of the rose he knows by name, and every one is numbered in his book of life, and every hair upon your head, and every drop of blood within your veins, he knows by number and by rhythm. He hears the birdlings call, the crickets chirp, the glowworm's song, and not a sparrow falls to earth without his knowledge and consent. A sparrow seems a thing of little worth, yea, five of them are worth two farthings in the market place, and yet God cares for every one of them. Will he not care much more for you who bear his image in your soul? Fear not to make confession of the Christ before the sons of men, and God will own you as his sons and daughters in the presence of the host of heaven. If you deny the Christ before the sons of men, then God will not receive you as his own before the hosts of heaven. And more I say, fear not when men shall bring you up before the rulers of the land to answer for your faith. Behold, the holy breath shall teach you in your hour of need what you should say, and what is best leave unsaid. And then the Christines went again to teach the multitudes. Chapter 110 and Miriam stood before the surging crowd, and casting up her eyes to heaven she sung anew the song of victory, Bring forth the harp, the vena and the lyre, bring forth the highest sounding cymbal, all ye choirs of heaven. Join in the song, the new, new song. The Lord of hosts has stooped to hear the cries of men, and lo, the citadel of Beelzebub is shaking as a leaf before the wind. The sword of Gideo is again unsheathed. The Lord, with his own hand has pulled far back the curtains of the night, the sun of truth is flooding heaven and earth, the demons of the dark, of ignorance and death, are fleeing fast, are disappearing as the dew beneath the morning sun. God is our strength and song, is our salvation and our hope, and we will build a newer house for him, will cleanse our hearts, and purify their chambers every one. We are the temple of the holy breath. We need no more a tent within the wilderness, no more a temple built with hands. We do not seek the holy land, nor yet Jerusalem. We are the tent of God, we are his temple built without the sound of edged tools. We are the holy land, we are the new Jerusalem, Alleluia, praise the Lord. And when the song was done the multitudes exclaimed, Praise God! And Jesus said, Behold the way! The sons of men have groped for ages in the darkness of Egyptian night. The pharaohs of sense have bound them with their chains. But God has whispered through the mists of time and told them of a land of liberty and love. And he has sent his logos forth to light the way. The Red Sea rolls between the promised land and Egypt's sands. The Red Sea is the carnal mind. Behold, the Logos reaches out his hand, the sea divides, the carnal mind is reft in twain, the sons of men walk through dry shod. The pharaohs of sense would stay them in their flight, the waters of the sea return, the pharaohs of sense are lost and men are free. For just a little while men tread the wilderness of sign, the Logos leads the way, and when at last men stand upon the Jordan's brink, these waters stay, and men step forth into their own. Chapter 111 And Jesus taught the multitudes, and while he spoke a man stood forth and said, Rabboni, hear my plea, my father died and left a large estate, my brother seized it all, and now refuses me my share. I pray that you will bid him do the right, and give what is mine. And Jesus said, I am not come to be a judge in such affairs, I am no henchman of the court. God sent me not to force a man to do the right. 
In every man there is a sense of right, but many men regard it not. The fumes that rise from selfishness have formed a crust about their sense of right that veils their inner light, so that they cannot comprehend nor recognize the rights of other men. This veil you cannot tear away by force of arms, and there is naught that can dissolve this crust but knowledge and love of God. While men are in the mire, the skies seem far away, when men are on the mountain top, the skies are near, and they can almost touch the stars. Then Jesus turned unto the twelve he said, Behold the many in the mire of carnal life. The leaven of truth will change the miry clay to solid rock, and men can walk and find the path that leads up to the mountain top. You cannot haste, but you can scatter forth this leaven with a generous hand. When men have learned the truth that bears upon its face the law of right, then they will haste to every man his dues. Then to the people Jesus said, Take heed, and covet not. The wealth of men does not consist in what they seem to have in lands, in silver and in gold. These things are only borrowed wealth. No man can corner up the gifts of God. The things of nature are the things of God, and what is God's belongs to every man alike. The wealth of soul lies in the purity of life and in the wisdom that descends from heaven. Behold, a rich man's ground brought forth abundantly, his bonds were far too small to hold his grain, and to himself he said, What shall I do? I must not give my grain away, I must not let it go to waste, and then he said, This will I do, I will tear down these little bonds and build up larger ones, there I will store away my grain and I will say, My soul take now your ease. You have enough for many years, eat, drink and fill yourself and be content. But God looked down and saw the man, he saw his selfish heart and said, You foolish man, this night your soul will quit its house of flesh, then who will have your garnered wealth? You men of Galilee, lay not up treasures in the vaults of earth, accumulated wealth will blight your soul. God does not give men wealth to hoard away in secret vaults. Men are but stewards of God's wealth, and they must use it for the common good. To every steward who is true to self, to other men, to everything that is, the Lord will say, Well done. Chapter 112 And Jesus left the multitudes and went with his disciples up to Mary's home, and as they sat about the board to dine he said, My little flock, fear not. It is your father's will that you shall rule the kingdom of the soul. A ruler in the house of God is servant of the Lord of hosts, and man cannot serve God except by serving men. A servant in the house of God cannot be servant in the house of wealth, nor in the synagogue of sense. If you are tied to lands, or bonds, or wealth of earth, your hearts are knit to things of earth, for where your treasures are there are your hearts. Dispose of all your wealth, distribute it among the poor, and put your trust in God, and you nor yours will ever come to want. This is a test of faith, and God will not accept the service of faithless one. The time is ripe, your master comes upon the clouds, the eastern sky is glowing with his presence now. Put on reception robes, gird up your loins, trim up your lamps and fill them well with oil and be prepared to meet your Lord, when you are ready, he will come. Thrice blessed are the servants who are ready to receive their Lord. Behold, for he will gird himself, and will prepare a sumptuous feast for every one, and he himself will serve. It matters not when he shall come, it may be at the second watch, it may be at the third, but blessed are the servants who are ready to receive. You cannot leave your door ajar and go to sleep, and wait in blissful ignorance of the fleeting time, for thieves will surely come and take away your goods and bind and carry you away to robbers' dens. And if you are not carried forth, the master when he comes will not regard a sleeping guard as friend, but as a foe. Beloved, these are times when every man must be awakened at his post for none can tell the hour nor the day when man shall be revealed. And Peter said, Lord is this parable for us, 
or for the multitudes. And Jesus, why need you ask? God is not a man that he should show respect for one and cast another off. Whoever will may come and gird himself, and trim his lamp, and find a turret in the tower of life where he may watch, and be prepared to meet the Lord. But you, as children of the light, have come, and you have learnt the language of the court, and may stand forth and lead the way. But you may wait, and think that you are ready to receive the Lord, and still he does not come. And you may grow impatient and begin to long for carnal ways again, and may begin to exercise your rule, to beat, and otherwise maltreat the servants of the house, and fill yourselves with wine and meat. And what will say the Lord when he shall come? Behold, for he will cast the faithless servant from his house, and many years will come and go before he can be cleansed, and be thought worthy to receive his Lord. The servant who has come into the light, who knows the master's will and does it not, the trusted God who goes to sleep within the turret of the tower of life, shall feel the lash of justice many times, while he who does not know his master's will and does it not, will not receive the graver punishment. The man who comes and stands before the open door of opportunity and does not enter in, but goes his way, will come again and find the door made fast, and when he calls, the door will open not, the guard will say, you had the password once, but you threw it away and now the master knows you not, depart. And verily I say to you, to whom much has been given, much is required, to whom a little has been given, a little only is required. Chapter 113 Now, after they had dined, the guests and Jesus all were in a spacious hall in Mary's home. And then Lamas said, Pray. Tell us Lord, is this the dawn of peace? Have we come forth unto the time when men will war no more? Are you, indeed, the Prince of Peace that holy men said would come? And Jesus said, Peace reigns today, it is the peace of death. A stagnant pool abides in peace. When waters cease to move they soon are laden with the seeds of death, corruption dwells in every drop. The living waters always leap and skip about like lambs in spring. The nations are corrupt, they sleep within the arms of death and they must be aroused before it is too late. In life we find antagonists at work. God sent me here to stir unto its depths the waters of the sea of life. Peace follows strife, I come to slay this peace of death. The prince of peace must first be prince of strife. This leaven of truth which I have brought to men will stir the demons up, and nations, cities, families will be at war within themselves. The five that have been dwelling in a home of peace will be divided now, and two shall war with three, the son will stand against his sire, the mother and the daughter will contend, yea, strife will reign in every home. The self and greed and doubt will rage into a fever heat, and then, because of me, the earth will be baptized in human blood. But right is king, and when the smoke is cleared away the nations will learn war no more, the prince of peace will come to reign. Behold, the signs of what I say are in the sky, but men can see them not. When men behold a cloud rise in the west they say, a shower of rain will come, and so it does, and when the wind blows from the south they say, the weather will be hot, and it is so. Lo, men can read the signs of earth and sky, but they cannot discern the signs of holy breath, but you shall know. The storm of wrath comes on, the carnal man will seek a cause to hail you into court, and cast you into prison cells. And when these times shall come let wisdom guide, do not resent. Resentment makes more strong the wrath of evil men. There is a little sense of justice and of mercy in the vilest men of earth. By taking heed to what you do and say and trusting in the guidance of the holy breath, you may inspire this sense to grow. You thus may make the wrath of men to praise the Lord. The Christines went their way, and came unto Bethsaida and taught. Chapter 114
As Jesus taught, a man stood forth and said, Rabboni, may I speak? And Jesus said, Say on. And then the man spoke out and said, A storm upon the sea last night wrecked many fishing boats, and scores of men went down to death, and lo, their wives and children are in need, what can be done to help them in their sore distress? And Jesus said, A worthy plea. You men of Galilee, take heed. We may not bring again to live these men, but we can secure those who look to them for daily bread. You stewards of the wealth of God, an opportunity has come, unlock your vaults, bring forth your hoarded gold, bestow it with a lavish hand. This wealth was laid aside for just times as these, when it was needed not, lo, it was yours to God, but now it is not yours, for it belongs to those who are in want, and if you give it not you simply bring upon your heads the wrath of God. It is not charity to give to those who need, it is but honesty, it is but giving men their own. Then Jesus turned to Judas, one of the twelve, who was the treasurer of the band, and said, Bring forth our treasure box, the money is not ours now, turn every farthing to the help of those in such distress. Now, Judas did not wish to give the money all to those in want, and so he talked with Peter, James and John. He said, Lo, I will save a certain part and give the rest, that surely is enough for us, for we are strangers to the ones in want, we do not even know their names. But Peter said, Why, Judas, man, how do you dare to think to trifle with the strength of right? The Lord has spoken true, this wealth does not belong to us in face of this distress, and to refuse to give it is to steal. You need not fear we will not come to want. Then Judas opened up the treasure box and gave the money all. And there was gold and silver, food, and raiment in abundance for the needs of the bereaved. A lawyer said, Rabboni, if God rules the worlds and all that in them is, did he not bring about this storm? Did he not slay these men? Has he not brought this sore distress upon these people here? and was it done to punish them for crimes? And we remember well when once a band of earnest Jews from Galilee were in Jerusalem, and ate feast and were, for fancied crimes against the Roman law, cut down within the very temple court by Pontius Pilate, and their blood became their sacrifice. Did God bring on this slaughter all because these men were doubly vile? And then we bring to mind that once a tower called Siloam, graced the defences of Jerusalem, and, seemingly, without a cause it tottered and it fell to earth and eighteen men were killed. Were these men vile? And were they slain as punishment for some great crime? And Jesus said, We cannot look upon a single span of life and judge of anything. There is a law that men must recognize, result depends on cause. Men are not motes to float about within the air of one short life, and then be lost in nothingness. They are undying parts of the eternal whole that come and go, lo, many times into the air of earth and of the great beyond, just to unfold the godlike self. A cause may be a part of one brief life, results may not be noted till another life. The cause of your results cannot be found within my life nor can the cause of my results be found in yours. I cannot reap except I sow and I must reap whate'er I sow. The law of all eternities is known to master minds, whatever men do unto other men the judge and executioner will do to them. We do not note the execution of this law among the sons of men. We note the weak dishonored, trampled on and slain by those men call the strong. We note that men with wood-like heads are seated in the chairs of state, are kings and judges, senators and priests, while men with giant intellects are scavengers about the streets. We note that women with a moiety of common sense, and not a whit of any other kind, are painted up and dressed as queens, becoming ladies of the courts of puppet kings, because they have the form of something beautiful, while God's own daughters are their slaves or serve as common laborers in the field. The sense of justice cries aloud, this is a travesty on right.
So when men see no further than one little span of life it is no wonder that they say, there is no God, or if there is a God he is a tyrant and should die. If you would judge a right of human life, you must arise and stand upon the crest of time and note the thoughts and deeds of men as they have come up through the ages past, for we must know that man is not a creature made of clay to turn again to clay and disappear. He is a part of the eternal whole. There never was a time when he was not, a time will never come when he will not exist. And now we look, the men who now are slaves were tyrants once, the men who now are tyrants have been slaves. The men who suffer now once stood aloft and shouted with a fiend's delight while others suffered at their hands. And men are sick, and halt, and lame, and blind because they once transgressed the laws of perfect life and every law of God must be fulfilled. Man may escape the punishment that seems but due for his misdoings in this life, but every deed and word and thought has its own meets and bounds, is cause, and has its own results, and if a wrong be done, the doer of the wrong must make it right. And when the wrongs have all been righted then will man arise and be at one with God. Chapter 115 and Jesus stood beside the sea and taught, the multitudes pressed close upon him and he went into a boat that was nearby and put a little ways from shore, and then he spoke in parables, he said, Behold, a sower took his seed and went into his field to sow. With lavish hand he scattered forth the seed and some fell in the hardened paths that men had made, and soon were crushed beneath the feet of other men, and birds came down and carried all the seeds away. Some seed fell on rocky ground where there was little soil, they grew and soon the blades appeared and promised much, but then there was no depth of soil, no chance for nourishment, and in the heat of noonday sun they withered up and died. Some seed fell where thistles grew, and found no earth in which to grow and they were lost, but other seed found lodgment in the rich and tender soil and grew apace, and in the harvest it was found that some brought forth a hundredfold some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. They who have ears to hear may hear, they who hearts to understand may know. Now, his disciples were beside him in the boat, and Thomas asked, Why do you speak in parables? And Jesus said, My words, like every master's words, are dual in their sense. To you who know the language of the soul, my words have meanings far too deep for other men to comprehend. The other sense of what I say is all the multitude can understand, these words are food for them, the inner thoughts are food for you. Let every one reach forth and take the food that he is ready to receive. And then he spoke that all might hear, he said, hear you the meaning of the parable, men hear my words and understand them not, and then the carnal self purloins the seed, and not a sign of spirit life appears. This is the seed that fell within the beaten paths of men. And others hear the words of life, and with a fiery zeal receive them all. They seem to comprehend the truth and promise well, but troubles come, discouragements arise, there is no depth of thought, their good intentions wither up and die. These are the seeds that fell in stony ground. And others hear the words of truth and seem to know their worth, but love of pleasure, reputation, wealth and fame fill all the soil, the seeds are nourished not and they are lost. These are the seeds that fell among the thistles and the thorns. But others hear the words of truth and comprehend them well, they sink down deep into their souls, they live the holy life and all the world is blessed. These are the seeds that fell in fertile soil, that brought forth fruit abundantly. You men of Galilee, Take heed to how you hear and how you cultivate your fields, for if you slight the offers of this day, the sower may not come to you again in this or in the age to come. Then Jesus spoke another parable, he said, Then kingdom I may liken to a field in which a man sowed precious seed, but while he slept an evil one went forth and sowed a measure full of darnel seed, then went his way. The soil was good, and so the wheat and darnel grew, and when the servants saw the tares among the wheat, 
they found the owner of the field and said, You surely sowed good seed, from whence these tares. The owner said, Some evil one out has sown the seed of tares. The servants said, Shall we go out and pull up by the roots the tares and burn them in the fire? The owner said, No, that would not be well. The wheat and tares grow close together in the soil, and while you pull the tares you would destroy the wheat. So we will let them grow together till the harvest time. Then to the reapers I will say, Go forth and gather up the tares and bind them up and burn them in the fire, and gather all the wheat into my barns. When he had spoken thus, he left the boat and went up to the house, and his disciples followed him. Chapter 116 The Christines were in Philip's home and Peter said to Jesus, Lord, will you explain to us the meaning of the parables you spoke today? The one about the wheat and tares, especially. And Jesus said, God's kingdom is a duality, it has an outer and an inner form. As seen by man it is composed of men, of those who make confession of the name of Christ. For various reasons various people crowd this outer kingdom of our God. The inner kingdom is the kingdom of the soul, the kingdom of the pure in heart. The outer kingdom I may well explain in parables. Behold, for I have seen you cast a great net out into the sea, and when you hold it in, lo, it was full of every kind of fish, some good, some bad, some great, some small and I have seen you save the good and throw the bad away. This outer kingdom is the net, and every kind of man is caught, but in the sorting day the bad will all be cast away, the good reserved. Here, then, the meaning of the parable of the wheat and tares, the sower is the son of man, the field, the world, the good seed are the children of the light, the tares, the children of the dark, the enemy, the carnal self the harvest day, the closing of the age, the reapers are the messengers of God. The reckoning day will come to every man, then will the tares be gathered up, and cast into the fire and be burned. Then will the good shine forth as suns in the kingdom of the soul. And Philip said, Must men and women suffer in the flames because they have not found the way of life? And Jesus said, The fire purifies. The chemist throws into the fire the ores that hold all kinds of dross. The useless metal seems to be consumed, but not a grain of gold is lost. There is no man that has not in him gold that cannot be destroyed. The evil things of men are all consumed in fire, the gold survives. The inner kingdom of the soul I may explain in parables, the son of man goes forth and scatters seeds of truth. God waters well the soil, the seeds show life and grow, first comes the blade, and then the stalk, and then the ear, and then the full wheat in the ear. The harvest comes and, lo, the reapers bear the ripened sheaves into the garner of the Lord. Again, this kingdom of the soul is like a little seed that men may plant in fertile soil. A thousand of these seeds would scarcely be a shekel's weight. The tiny seed begins to grow, it pushes through the earth, and after years of growth it is a mighty tree and birds rest in its leafy bowers and men find refuge neath its sheltering boughs from sun and storm. Again, the truth, the spirit of the kingdom of the soul, is like a ball of leaven that a woman hid in measures, three, of flour and in a little time the whole was leavened. Again. The kingdom of the soul is like a treasure hidden in a field which one has found, and straightway goes his way and sells all that he has and buys the field. When Jesus had thus said he went alone into a mountain pass nearby to pray. Chapter 117 A royal feast was held in honor of the birthday of the Tetrarch in fortified March Aris, east of the Bitter Sea. The Tetrarch, Herod, and his wife. Herodias, together with Salome were there, and all the men and women of the royal court were there. And when the feast was done, lo, all the guests and courtiers were drunk with wine, they danced and leaped about like children in their play. Salome, daughter of Herodias, came in and danced before the king. 
The beauty of her form, her grace and winning ways entranced the silly herd, then half drunk with wine. He called the maiden to his side and said, Salome, you have won my heart, and you may ask and I will give you anything you wish. The maiden ran in childish glee and told her mother what the ruler said. Her mother said, Go back and say, Give me the head of John, the harbinger. The maiden ran and told the ruler what she wished. And Herod called his trusty executioner and said to him, Go to the tower and tell the keeper that by my authority you come to execute the prisoner known as John. The man went forth and in a little while returned and on a platter bore the lifeless head of John, and Herod offered it unto the maiden in the presence of the guests. The maiden stood aloof, her innocence was outraged when she saw the bloody gift, and she would touch it not. Her mother, steeped and hardened well in crime, came up and took the head and held it up before the guests and said, This is the fate of every man who dares to scorn, or criticize, the acts of him who reigns. The drunken rabble gazed upon the gruesome sight with fiendish joy. The head was taken back unto the tower. The body had been given unto holy men who had been friends of John, they placed it in a burial case and carried it away. They bore it to the Jordan, which they crossed just at the ford where John first preached the word, and through the passes of the Judean hills they carried it. They reached the sacred grounds near Hebron, where the bodies of the parents of the harbinger lay in their tombs, and there they buried it, and then they went their way. Now. When the news reached Galilee that John was dead the people met to sing the sonnets of the dead. And Jesus and the foreign masters and the twelve took ship to cross the Sea of Galilee. A scribe, a faithful friend of John, stood by the sea, he called to Jesus and he said, Rabboni, let me follow where you go. And Jesus said, You seek a safe retreat from evil men. There is no safety for your life with me for evil men will take my life as they have taken John's. The foxes of the earth have safe retreats, the birds have nests secure among the hidden rocks, but I have not a place where I may lay my head and rest secure. Then an apostle said, Lord, suffer me to tarry here a while, that I may take my father, who is dead, and lay him in the tomb. But Jesus said, The dead can care for those who die the living wait for those who live, come, follow me. The evening came, three boats put out to sea and Jesus rested in the foremost boat, he slept. A storm came on, the boats were tossed about like toys upon the sea. The waters swept the decks, the hardy boatmen were afraid lest all be lost. And Thomas found the master fast asleep, he called, and Jesus woke. And Thomas said, Behold the storm. Have you no care for us? The boats are going down. And Jesus stood, he raised his hand, he talked unto the spirits of the winds and waves as men would talk with men. And, lo, the winds blew not, the waves came tremblingly and kissed his feet, the sea was calm. And then he said, You men of faith, where is your faith? for you can speak and winds and waves will hear and will obey. And the disciples were amazed. They said, Who is this man that even winds and waves obey his voice? Chapter 118 The morning came, the Christines landed in the country of the Gerasenes. They went to Gadara, chief city of the Perakans, and here for certain days they tarried and they taught. Now, legends hold that Gadara is sacred to the dead, and all the hills about are known as holy ground. These are the burial grounds of all the regions round about, the hills are full of tombs, and many dead from Galilee are here entombed. Now, spirits of the lately dead that cannot rise to higher planes, remain about the tombs that hold the flesh and bones of what was once their mortal homes. They sometimes take possession of the living, whom they torture in a hundred ways. And all through Gadara were men obsessed, and there was no one strong enough to bring relief. 
that they might meet these hidden foes and learn the way to dispossess the evil ones the master took the foreign masters and the twelve into the tombs. And as they neared the gates they met a man obsessed. A legion of the unclean ones were in this man, and they had made him strong, and none could bind him down, no, not with chains, for he could break the stoutest chains, and go his way. Now, unclean spirits cannot live in light, they revel in the dark. When Jesus came he brought the light of life, and all the evil spirits were disturbed. The leader of the legion in the man called out, Thou Jesus, Thou Immanuel, we beg that Thou wilt not consign us to the depths. Torment us not before our time. And Jesus said, What is your number and your name? The evil spirit said, our name is Legion, and our number is the number of the beast. And Jesus spoke, and with a voice that shook the very hills, he said, Come forth, possess this man no more. Now, all the hills were filled with unclean animals that fed, and carried forth and spread the plague among the people of the land. And when the evil spirits begged that they might not be driven forth without a home, the master said, go forth and take possession of the unclean quadrupeds. And they, and all the evil spirits of the tombs went forth and took possession of the breeders of the plague, which, wild with rage, ran down the steeps into the sea, and all were drowned. And all the land was freed of the contagion, and the unclean spirits came no more. But when the people saw the mighty works that Jesus did they were alarmed. They said, if he can free the country of the plague, and drive the unclean spirits out, he is a man of such transcendent power that he can devastate our land at will. And then they came and prayed that he would not remain in Gadara. And Jesus did not tarry longer there, and with the other masters and the twelve, he went aboard the boats to go away. The man who had been rescued from the unclean legion stood upon the shore and said, Lord let me go with you. But Jesus said, It is not well, go forth unto your home and tell the news that men may know what man can do when he is tuned with God. And then the man went forth through all Decapolis and told the news. The Christines sailed away, recrossed the sea and came again into Capernaum. Chapter 119 the news soon spread through all the land that Jesus was at home and then the people came in throngs to welcome him. And Matthew, one of the twelve, a man of wealth, whose home was in Capernaum, spread forth a sumptuous feast, and Jesus and the foreign masters and the twelve, and people of all shades of thought, were guests. And when the Pharisees observed that Jesus sat and ate with publicans and those of ill repute they said, For shame! This man who claims to be man of God, consorts with publicans and courtesans and with the common herd of men. For shame. When Jesus knew their thoughts he said, They who are well cannot be healed, the pure need not be saved. They who are well are whole, they who are pure are saved. They who love justice and do right need not repent, I came not unto them, but to the sinner I am come. A band of John's disciples who had heard that John was dead were wearing badges for their dead, were fasting and were praying in their hearts, which when the Pharisees observed they came to Jesus and they said, Why fast the followers of John and your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said, Lo, you are masters of the law, you ought to know, perhaps you will make known your knowledge to these men. What are the benefits derived from fasts? The Pharisees were mute, they answered not. Then Jesus said, The vital force of men depends on what they eat and drink. Is spirit life the stronger when the vital force is weak? Is sainthood reached by starving, self-imposed? A glutton is a sinner in the sight of God, and he is not a saint who makes himself a weakling and unfitted for the heavy tasks of life by scorning to make use of God's own means of strength. Lo, John is dead, and his devoted followers are fasting in their grief. Their love for him impels them on to show respect, for they have thought, and have been taught that it is sin to lightly treat the memory of the dead. 
to them it is a sin, and it is well that they should fast. When men defy their consciences and listen not to what they say, the heart is grieved and they become unfitted for the work of life, and thus they sin. The conscience may be taught. One man may do in conscience what another cannot do. What is a sin for me to do may not be sin for you to do. The place you occupy upon the way of life determines what is sin. There is no changeless law of good, for good and evil both are judged by other things. One man may fast and in his deep sincerity of heart is blessed. Another man may fast and in the faithlessness of such a task imposed is cursed. You cannot make a bed to fit the form of every man. If you can make a bed to fit yourself you have done well. Why should these men who follow me resort to fasting, or to anything that would impair their strength? They need it all to serve the race. The time will come when God will let you have your way, and you will do to me what Herod did to John, and in the awfulness of that sad hour these men will fast. They who have ears to hear may hear, they who have hearts to feel may understand. Chapter 120 Now, Nicodemus, who once came to Jesus in the night to learn the way of life, was one among the guests. And standing forth he said, Rabboni, it is true that Jewish laws and Jewish practices do not agree. The priesthood needs to be reformed, the rulers should become more merciful and kind, the lawyers should become more just, the common people should not bear such loads. But could we not gain these reforms and not destroy the service of the Jews? Could you not harmonize your mighty work with that of Pharisee and scribe? Might not the priesthood be a benefit to your divine philosophy? But Jesus said, You cannot put new wine in ancient skins, for when it purifies itself, lo, it expands. The ancient bottles cannot bear the strain, they burst, and all the wine is lost. Men do not mend a worn-out garment with a piece of cloth unworn, which cannot yield to suit the fabric, weak with age, and then a greater rent appears. Old wine may be preserved in ancient skins, but new wine calls for bottles new. This spirit truth I bring is to this generation new, and if we put it in the ancient skins of Jewish forms, lo, it will all be lost. It must expand. The ancient bottles cannot yield and they would burst. Behold the kingdom of the Christ. It is as old as God himself, and yet it is as new as morning sun, it only can contain the truth of God. And as he spoke a ruler of the synagogue, Jairus by name, came in and bowed at Jesus' feet and said, My master, hear my prayer. My child is very sick, I fear that she will die. But this I know that if you will but come and speak the word my child will live. She was an only child, a girl twelve years of age. And Jesus tarried not, he went out with the man, and many people followed them. And as they went a woman who had been plagued with hemorrhage for many years, had been a subject of experiment of doctors near and far, and all had said, she cannot live rose from her bed and rushed out in the way as Jesus passed. She said within herself, If I can touch his garment, then I know I will be well. She touched him, and at once the bleeding ceased and she was well. And Jesus felt that healing power had gone from him, and speaking to the multitude, he said, Who was it touched my coat? And Peter said, No one can tell, the multitudes are pressing you. A score of people may have touched your coat. But Jesus said, Someone in faith, with healing thought, did touch my coat, for healing virtues have gone forth from me. And when the woman knew that what she did was known, she came and knelt at Jesus' feet and told it all. And Jesus said, Your faith has made you whole, go on your way in peace. Now, as he spoke, a servant from the home of Jairus came and said, My master, Jairus, trouble not the Lord to come, your child is dead. But Jesus said, Jairus, man of faith, do not permit your faith to waver in this trying hour. What is it that the servant said? 
the child is dead. Lo, what is death? It is the passing of the soul out of the house of flesh. Man is the master of the soul and of its house. When man has risen up from doubt and fear, lo, he can cleanse the empty house and bring the tenant back again. Then taking with him Peter, James and John, Jairus and the mother of the child, he went into the chamber of the dead. And when the doors were closed against the multitude, he spoke a word that souls can understand, and then he took the maiden by the hand and said, Talith Kami, child, arise. The maiden's soul returned and she arose and asked for food. And all the people of the city were amazed, and many would have worshipped Jesus as a god. But, like a phantom of the night, he disappeared and went his way. Chapter 121 It was a gala day in Nazareth. The people there had met with one accord to celebrate some great event. And Jesus and the foreign masters and the twelve, and Mary, mother of the Lord, and Miriam were there. And when the people were assembled in the great hall of the town, the graceful singer, Miriam, stood and sang a song of praise. But few of all the multitude knew who the singer was, but instantly she won all hearts. For many days she sang the songs of Israel, and then she went her way. The Sabbath came and Jesus went into the synagogue. He took the book of Psalms and read, Blessed is the man who puts his trust in God, respecting not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. O Lord, my God, the works that thou hast done for us are wonderful, and many are thy thoughts for us, we cannot count them all. Thou dost not call for sacrifice, nor offerings of blood, burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou dost not want, and lo, I come to do thy will, O God, thy law is in my heart, and I have preached the word of righteousness and peace unto the thronging multitudes, I have declared the counsel of my God in full. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart, I have declared thy faithfulness and grace. I have not kept thy loving kindness and thy truth away from men, I have declared them to the multitudes. O Lord, make wide my lips that I may tell thy praise, I do not bring the sacrifice of blood, nor yet burnt offerings for sin. The sacrifices I would bring to thee, O God, are purity in life, a contrite heart, a spirit full of faith and love, and these thou wilt receive. And when he had thus read, he gave the book back to the keeper of the books, and then he said, Upon these ends of earth these messages of God have come. Our people have exalted sacrificial rites and have neglected mercy, justice and the rights of men. You Pharisees, you priests, you scribes, your God surfeited with blood, God does not heed your prayers, you stand before your burning victims, but you stand in vain. Turn you unto the testimonies of the law, reform and turn to God, and you shall live. Let not your altars be accursed again with smoke of innocence. Bring unto God as sacrifice a broken and a contrite heart. Lift from your fellow men the burdens that you have imposed. And if you hearken not, and if you turn not from your evil ways, lo, God will smite this nation with a curse. And when he had thus said he stood aside, and all the people were astonished, and they said, Where did this man get all his knowledge and his power? From whence did all this wisdom come? Is not this Mary's son, whose home is out on Marmion on way? Are not his brothers, Jude and James and Simon, known among our honored men? Are not his sisters with us here? But they were all offended by the words he spoke. And Jesus said, a prophet has no honor in his native land, he is not well received among his kin, his foes are in his home. And Jesus wrought not many mighty works in Nazareth, because the people had no faith in him. He did not tarry long. But as he passed from thence two blind men followed him and cried, Thou son of David, hear. Have mercy, Lord, and open up our eyes that we may see. And Jesus said, Do you believe that I can open up your eyes and make you see? They said, Yea, Lord, 
we know that if you speak the word then we can see. And Jesus touched their eyes and spoke the word, he said, according to your faith so will it be. And they were blessed, they opened up their eyes and saw. And Jesus said, Tell not this thing to anyone. But they went forth and told the news through all the land. As Jesus walked along the way a man who was obsessed, and who was dumb, was brought to him. And Jesus spoke the word, the unclean spirit came out of the man, his tongue was loosed, he spoke, he said, praise God. The people were amazed, they said, this is a mighty deed, we never saw that done before. The Pharisees were also much amazed, but they cried out and said, You men of Israel, take heed, this Jesus is a tool of Beeltebul, he heals the sick and casts the spirits out in Satan's name. But Jesus answered not, he went his way. And with the foreign masters and the twelve he went up to the town where he once turned the water into wine, and tarried certain days. Chapter 122 the Christines prayed in silence seven days, then Jesus called the twelve aside and said, Behold, the multitudes have thronged about us everywhere, the people are bewildered, they wander here and there like sheep without a fold. They need a shepherd's care, they want a loving hand to lead them to the light. The grain is ripe, the harvest is abundant, but the harvesters are few. The time is also ripe and you must go alone through all the villages and towns of Galilee and teach and heal. And then he breathed upon the twelve and said, Receive the holy breath. And then he gave them each the word of power, and said, By this omnific word you shall cast spirits out, shall heal the sick and bring the dead to life again. And you shall go not in the way of the Assyrians, nor Greek, you shall not go into Samaria go only to your brethren of the scattered tribes. And as you go proclaim, the kingdom of Christ has come. You have abundantly received, and freely you shall give. But you must go in faith, provide yourselves no crutch to lean upon. Give all your gold and silver to the poor, take not two coats, nor extra shoes, just take your wands. You are God's husbandman and he will never suffer you to want. In every place you go search out the men of faith, with them abide until you go from hence. You go for me, you act for me. They who receive and welcome you, receive and welcome me, and they who shut their doors against your face, refuse to welcome me. If you are not received in kindness in a town, bear not away an evil thought, do not resist. An evil thought of any kind will do you harm, will dissipate your power. When you are not received with favor, go your way, for there are multitudes of men who want the light. Behold, I send you forth as sheep among a pack of wolves, and you must be as wise as serpents and as harmless as the doves. In all your language be discreet, for Pharisees and scribes will seek a cause for your arrest in what you say. And they will surely find a way by charges false to bring you into court and judges will declare that you are guilty of some crime, and sentence you to scourgings and to prison cells. But when you come to stand before the judge, be not afraid, be not disturbed about the way to act, the words to speak. The holy breath will guide you in that hour, and give the words that you shall speak. Of this be full assured, it is not you who speaks, it is the holy breath that gives the words and moves the lips. The gospel that you preach will not bring peace, but it will stir the multitudes to wrath. The carnal man abhors the truth, and he would give his life to crush the tender plant before the harvest time. And this will bring confusion in the homes that were the homes of stagnant peace. And brother will give brother up to death, the father will stand by and see men execute his child, and in the courts the child will testify against the sire and gladly see its mother put to death. And men will hate you just because you speak the name of Christ. Thrice blessed is the man who shall be faithful in this coming day of wrath. Go now, when you are persecuted in a place, go seek another place.
and when you meet a foe too great for you, behold, the Son of Man is at your door, and he can speak, and all the hosts of heaven will stand in your defense. But do not hold your present life in great esteem. The time will come when men will take my life, you need not hope to be immune, for they will slay you in the name of God. Men call me Beeltebul and they will call you imps. Be not afraid of what men say and do, they have no power over soul, they may abuse and may destroy the body of the flesh, but that is all. They do not know the God who holds the issues of the soul within his hands, who can destroy the soul. The Christ is king today, and men must recognize his power. He who loves not the Christ, which is the love of God, before all else, can never gain the prize of spirit consciousness. And they who love their parents or their children more than they love the Christ can never wear the name of Christ. And he who loves his life more than he loves the Christ cannot please God. And he who clings to life shall lose his life, while he who gives his life for Christ will save his life. When Jesus had thus said he sent the twelve away by twos, and bade them meet him in Capernaum. And they went out through all the towns of Galilee and taught and healed in spirit and in power. Chapter 123 The Christine master spent a time in prayer and then he called the foreign masters, and he said to them, Behold, I sent the twelve apostles unto Israel, but you are sent to all the world. Our God is one, is spirit, and is truth, and every man is dear to him. He is the God of every child of India, and the farther east, of Persia, and the farther north, of Greece and Rome and of the farther west, of Egypt and the farther south, and of the mighty lands across the seas, and of the islands of the seas. If God would send the bread of life to one and not to all who have arisen to the consciousness of life and can receive the bread of life, then he would be unjust and that would shake the very throne of heaven. So he has called you from the seven centers of the world, and he has breathed the breath of wisdom and of power into your souls, and now he sends you forth as bearers of the light of life, apostles of the human race. Go on your way, and as you go proclaim the gospel of the Christ. And then he breathed upon the masters and he said, Receive the holy breath, and then he gave to each the word of power and each went on his way, and every land was blessed. Then Jesus went alone across the hills of Galilee and after certain days he reached the coast of Tyre, and in the home of Rachel he abode. He did not advertise his coming for he did not come to teach, he would commune with God where he could see the waters of the mighty sea. But Rachel told the news and multitudes of people thronged her home to see the Lord. A Grecian woman of Phoeicia came, her daughter was obsessed. She said, O oh Lord, have mercy on my home. My daughter is obsessed, but this I know, if you will speak the word she will be free. Thou son of David, hear my prayer. But Rachel said, Good woman, trouble not the Lord. He did not come to Tyre to heal, he came to talk with God beside the sea. And Jesus said, Lo, I was sent not to the Greek, nor to Syrophoenicians, I come just to my people, Israel. And then the woman fell down at his feet and said, Lord, Jesus, I implore that you will save my child. And Jesus said, You know the common proverb well, it is not meet that one should give the children's bread to dogs. And then the woman said, Yea, Jesus, this I know but dogs may eat the crumbs that fall down from their master's board. And Jesus said, Such faith I have not seen, no, not among the Jews, she is not serf, nor dog. And then he said to her, According to your faith so let it be. The woman went her way and when she came unto her child, lo, she was healed. And Jesus tarried many days in Tyre and then he went his way and dwelt a time in Sidon by the sea. And then he journeyed on. In Lebanon hills and vales, and in its groves he walked in silent thought. His earthly mission fast was drawing to a close, he sought for strength, and what he sought he found. 
Mount Hermon stood beyond, and Jesus fain would kneel beside that mountain famed in Hebrew song. And then he stood upon Mount Hermon's lofty peaks, and lifting up his eyes to heaven he talked with God. And masters of the olden times revealed themselves and long they talked about the kingdom of the Christ, about the mighty works that had been done, about the coming conquest of the cross, about the victory over death. Then Jesus journeyed on, he went to Caesarea Philippi, and in Susanna's home he tarried certain days. And then he went through all Decapolis to give encouragement to those who knew him as the Christ, and to prepare them for the day of Calvary. And then he went to Gadara, and many friends were there, to welcome him. And Chusa's steward of the house of Herod Antipas, was there, and Jesus went aboard the royal ship with him and crossed the sea, and came unto Capernaum. And when the people knew that Jesus was at home they came to welcome him. In just a little while the twelve apostles came and told the Master all about their journey over Galilee. They said that by the sacred word they had done many mighty works, and Jesus said to them, Well done. Chapter 124 The twelve apostles now had reached the stage of spirit consciousness, and Jesus could reveal to them the deeper meanings of his mission to the world. Next week the great feast of the Jews would be observed, and Matthew said, Shall we not gird ourselves and go unto Jerusalem? But Jesus said, We will not go up to the feast, the time is short and I have many things to say to you, come you apart into a desert place and rest a while. And then they took their boats and crossed the sea, and came into a desert place near Julius Bethsaida. The people saw them go, and in vast multitudes they followed them. And Jesus had compassion on the anxious throng, and he stood forth and taught them all the day because they sought a light and were like sheep without a fold. And as the night came on the twelve were doubting what the multitudes would do, and Thomas said, Lord, we are in a desert place, the multitudes have naught to eat and they are faint from lack of food, what shall we do? And Jesus said, Go to and feed the multitudes. And Judas said, Shall we go down and buy two hundred pennies worth of bread for them to eat? And Jesus, go look into our larder and see how many loaves we have. And Andrew said, We have no bread, but we have found a lad who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but this would not be food enough for one in ten. But Jesus said, Command these people all to sit upon the grass in companies of twelve, and they all sat down in companies of twelve. Then Jesus took the loaves and fish and looking up to heaven he spoke the sacred word. And then he broke the bread and gave it to the twelve, he also gave the fish unto the twelve, and said, Go to and feed the multitudes. And all the people ate and were refreshed. There were about five thousand men, a company of little ones, and women not a few. And when the people all were filled the master said, Let not a crumb be lost go to and gather up the pieces of the bread and fish for others that may want. They gathered up the fragments and they filled twelve baskets full. The people were bewildered by this wondrous act of power, they said, and now we know that Jesus is the prophet that our prophets said would come, and then they said, All hail the King. When Jesus heard them say, All hail the King. He called the twelve and bade them take their boats and go before him to the other side, and he went all alone into a mountain pass to pray. The twelve were on the sea and hoped to reach Capernaum in just a little time, when all at once a fearful storm arose, and they were at the mercy of the waves. And in the fourth watch of the night the wind became a whirling wind, and they were filled with fear. And in the blinding storm they saw a form move on the waves. It seemed to be a man, one spoke out and said, It is a ghost, a sign of evil things. But John discerned the form and said, It is the Lord. And then the wind blew not so hard, and Peter, standing in the midst, exclaimed, My Lord! My Lord! If this be truly you, bid me to come to you upon the waves. The form reached forth his hand and said, Come on! 
and Peter stepped upon the waves and they were solid as a rock, he walked upon the waves. He walked until he thought within himself, what if the waves should break beneath my feet? And then the waves did break beneath his feet, and he began to sink, and in the fearfulness of soul he cried, O oh save me, Lord, or I am lost. And Jesus took him by the hand and said, O oh you of little faith! Why did you doubt? And Jesus led the way unto the boat. The storm had spent its force, the winds were still, and they were near the shore, and when they landed they were in the valley of Gennesaret. Chapter 125 The news soon spread through all the valley of Gennesaret that Jesus and the twelve had come, and many people came to see. They brought their sick and laid them at the Master's feet, and all the day he taught and healed. The multitudes upon the other side who had been fed the day before and other multitudes, went down to see the Lord, but when they found him not they sought him in Capernaum. And when they found him not at home, they went on to Gennesaret. They found him there and said, Rabboni, when came you to Gennesaret? And Jesus said, Why are you come across the sea? You came not for the bread of life, you came to gratify your selfish selves, you all were fed the other day across the sea, and you are after more of loaves and fish. The food you ate was nourishment for flesh that soon must pass away. You men of Galilee, seek not for food that perishes, but seek for food that feeds the soul, and, lo, I bring you food from heaven. You ate the flesh of fish, and you were satisfied, and now I bring the flesh of Christ for you to eat that you may live forevermore. Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and then they ate the flesh of quail, and drank the waters of a flowing spring that Moses brought out from the rock, but all of them are dead. The manna and the quail were symbols of the flesh of Christ, the waters of the rock were symbols of the blood. But, lo, the Christ has come, he is the bread of life that God has given to the world. Whoever eats the flesh of Christ and drinks his blood shall never die, and he will hunger never more, and he will thirst no more. And they who eat this bread of heaven, and drink these waters from the spring of life cannot be lost, these feed the soul and purify the life. Behold, for God has said, When man has purified himself I will exalt him to the throne of power. Then Jesus and the twelve went to Capernaum, and Jesus went into the synagogue and taught. And when the Jews, who heard him in Gennesaret, were come they said, This fellow is beside himself. We heard him say, I am the bread of life that comes from heaven and we all know that he is but a man, the son of man, who came from Nazareth, we know his mother, and his other kin. And Jesus knew their thoughts, he said to them, Why murmur you, and reason thus among yourselves? The Christ is everlasting life, he came from heaven, he has the keys of heaven, and no man enters into heaven except he fills himself with Christ. I came in flesh to do the will of God, and, Lo, this flesh and blood are filled with Christ, and so I am the living bread that comes from heaven, and when you eat this flesh and drink this blood you will have everlasting life, and if you will, you may become the bread of life. And many of the people were enraged, they said, How can this man give us his flesh to eat, his blood to drink? And his disciples were aggrieved because he said these things, and many turned away and followed him no more. They said, This is a fearful thing for him to say, If you eat not my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot enter into life. They could not comprehend the parable he spoke. And Jesus said, You stumble and you fall before the truth, what will you do when you shall see this flesh and blood transmuted into higher form? What will you say when you shall see the Son of Man ascending on the clouds of heaven? What will you say when you shall see the Son of Man sit on the throne of God? The flesh is naught, the spirit is the quickening power. The words I speak are spirit, they are life. When Jesus saw the many who had been so loud in their professions of their faith in him, turn back and go away, 
he said unto the twelve. Will you desert me in this hour and go away? But Peter said, Lord, we have no place else to go, you have the words of everlasting life, we know that you are sent to us from God. Chapter 126 A company of scribes and Pharisees came from Jerusalem to learn wherein the power of Jesus lay. But when they learned that he and his disciples heeded not the custom of the Jews, regarding washing of the hands before they ate, they were amazed. And Jesus said, Hypocrisy is queen among you scribes and Pharisees. O you, Isaiah wrote, This people honor me with lips, their hearts are far away. In vain they worship me, their doctrines are the dogmas and the creeds of men. You men who pose as men of God, and still reject the laws of God and teach the laws of men, stand forth and tell when God gave unto the ceremonial laws that you observe, and tell these people how the spirit life is solid if one washes not before he eats. His critics answered not, and then he said, Hear me, you men of Israel. Defilement is a creature of the heart. The carnal mind lays hold of thought and makes a monstrous bride, this bride is sin, sin is a creature of the mind. That which defiles a man is not the food he eats. The bread and fish and other things we eat, are simply cups to carry to the cells of flesh material for the building of the human house, and when their work is done as refuse they are cast away. The life of plant and flesh that goes to build the human house is never food for soul. The spirit does not feed upon the carcasses of animal, or plant. God feeds the soul direct from heaven, the bread of life comes from above. The air we breathe is charged with holy breath, and he will may take this holy breath. The soul discriminates, and he who wants the life of Christ may breathe it in. According to your faith so let it be. Man is not a part of his abiding place the house is not the man. The lower world builds up the house of flesh, and keeps it in repair, the higher world provides the bread of spirit life. The loveliest lilies grow from stagnant ponds and filthiest muck. The law of flesh demands that one should keep the body clean. The law of spirit call for purity in thought and word and deed. Now, when the evening came and they were in the house, the twelve had many things to say, and many questions to propound. Nathaniel asked, Was what you said about the house of flesh a parable? If so, what does it mean? And Jesus said, Can you not yet discriminate? Do you not yet perceive that what a man takes in his mouth defiles him not? His food goes not into his soul, it is material for flesh and bone and brawn. To spirit everything is clean. That which defiles a man wells up from carnal thoughts, and carnal thoughts spring from the heart, and generate a host of evil things. From out the heart comes murders, thefts and foolishness. All selfish acts and sensual deeds spring from the heart. To eat with unwashed hands does not defile the man. And Peter said, Lord, what you said today has grievously offended scribe and Pharisee. And Jesus said, These scribes and Pharisees are not the scions of the tree of life, they are not plants of God, they are the plants of men, and every foreign plant shall be plucked up. Let all these men alone, they are blind guides, they lead a multitude of people who are blind. The leaders and the led together walk, together they will fall into the yawning pits. Chapter 127 Now, Jesus took the twelve and with them crossed the sea at night and came unto the borders of Decapolis, that he might find a secret place where, all alone, he could reveal to them the things to come. They went into a mountain pass and spent three days in prayer. Then Jesus said, Behold, the time is near when I will walk with you in flesh no more. Lo, I have taught that he who counts his life of so much worth that he would give it not in willing sacrifice to save his brother man, is worthy not to enter into life. Lo, I am come as pattern for the sons of men, 
and I have not refrained from helpfulness. When I had passed the seven tests in Heliopolis, I consecrated life and all I had, to save the world. In the Judean wilderness I fought the strongest foes of men, and there I reaffirmed my consecration to the service of my fellow man. In troubles and in trials I have wavered not, when false accusers came, I answered not. God gave the saving word to me, and I have often spoken it and healed the sick, drove unclean spirits out, and raised the dead. And I have shown you how to speak the word, and I have given you the word, in just a little while we turn our faces toward Jerusalem, and one of you who hear me now will then betray me into wicked hands. The scribes and Pharisees will bring false charges up and hail me into court, and, by consent of Rome, I will be crucified. Then Peter said, My Lord, it shall not be. The Roman soldiers will tread on twelve dead men before they reach our Lord. But Jesus said, A saviour of the world cannot resist. I came to save the world and I have taken up your names before the highest courts of heaven, and you have been confirmed as saviours of the world. And not a name, excepting that of him who shall betray, will ever be disgraced. I go my way, and though my flesh shall pass, my soul will stand beside you all the way to guide and bless. And wicked men will seize you in the streets, and as you kneel in prayer, will charge you with some legal crime, and think they serve their God by putting you to death. But falter not, the load will heavy be, but with the consciousness of duty done, the peace of God will lift the load, dispel the pain and light the way. And we will meet where carnal executioners come not, there we will serve the cruel men, who in their ignorance had tortured us to death. Can we prevent this outrage and this slaughter of our lives? If not we are but creatures of the ebb and flow of carnal things. It would not be a sacrifice of life. But we are masters of the things of time. Lo, we can speak, and all the spirits of the fire, water, earth and air will stand in our defense. We can command and many legions of the angel world would come and strike our enemies to earth. But it is best that not a power of heaven or earth should come to our relief. And it is best that even God should veil his face and seem to hear us not. As I am pattern unto you, so you are patterns for the human race. We show by non-resistance that we give our lives in willing sacrifice for man. But my example will not end with death. My body will be laid within a tomb in which no flesh has lain, symbolic of the purity of life in death. And in the tomb I will remain three days in sweet communion with the Christ, and with my Father God and Mother God. And then, symbolic of the ascent of the soul to higher life, my flesh within the tomb will disappear, will be transmuted into higher form, and, in the presence of you all, I will ascend to God. Then Jesus and the twelve went to a village by the sea. Chapter 128 Now, in the night while the disciples slept, lo, Jesus rose and went alone into a mountain pass, six miles away, to pray. And in the morning when the twelve awoke they could not find the Lord, and all the people of the village sought, and when the sun had passed its highest point they found him in the mountain pass. And multitudes of people came and brought their sick, and Jesus taught and healed. And when the night came on the people would not go, they slept upon the ground that they might be a near the Lord. Three days and nights the multitudes remained, and none had aught to eat. And Jesus had compassion and he said, If I should send the multitudes away they might not reach their homes, for they are faint, for some have journeyed many miles. And his disciples said, Where shall we get enough of food to feed them all? There are four thousand men, besides the women and the little ones. And Jesus said, How many loaves have you? They answered, Seven, and some little fish. And Jesus said, Go to, and seat the people as you seated them the other day when all the multitudes were fed, in companies of twelve. And when the people were sat down in companies of twelve the loaves and fish were brought. 
And Jesus looked to heaven and spoke the word, and then he broke the seven loaves in little bits, and likewise cut the fish. And every bit of bread became a loaf, and every piece of fish became a fish. The twelve went forth and gave to every one, the people ate and they were filled, and all the fragments that were left were gathered up, and there were seven baskets full. And then the people went their ways, and the twelve took boats and came to Dalmanatha by the sea. Here they remained for many days, and Jesus told the twelve about the inner light that cannot fail, about the kingdom of the Christ within the soul, about the power of faith, about the secret of the resurrection of the dead, about immortal life, and how the living may go forth and help the dead. And then they went into their boats, and came unto the northern coast of Galilee, and in Chorazin where the kin of Thomas lived, they left their boats and journeyed on. They came to Merom, where the crystal waters seemed to catch the images of heaven and to reflect the glory of the Lord of hosts. And here they tarried certain days in silent thought. And then they journeyed on and came into the land of Caesarea Philippi. And as they walked and talked among themselves, the master said, What do the people say about the Son of Man? Who do they think I am? And Matthew said, Some say that you are David come again, some say that you are Enoch, Solomon, or Seth. And Andrew said, I heard a ruler of the synagogue exclaim, This man is Jeremiah, for he speaks like Jeremiah wrote. Nathaniel said, The foreign masters who were with us for a time, declared that Jesus is Gautama come again. James said, I think that most the Jews believe you are the reappearance of Elijah on the earth. And John spoke out and said, When we were in Jerusalem I heard a seer exclaim, This Jesus is none other than Melchizedek, the king of peace, who lived about two thousand years ago, and said that he would come again. And Thomas said, The Tetrarch Herod thinks that you are John arisen from the dead, but then his conscience troubles him, the spirit of the murdered John looms up before him in his dreams, and haunts him as a spectre of the night. And Jesus asked, Who do you think I am? And Peter said, You are the Christ, the love of God made manifest to men. And Jesus said, Thrice blessed are you, Simon, Jonah's son. You have declared a truth that God has given you. You are a rock, and you shall be a pillar in the temple of the Lord of hosts. And your confession is the cornerstone of faith, a rock of strength, and on this rock the church of Christ is built. Against it all the powers of Hades and of death cannot prevail. Behold, I give to you the keys to open up the doors of safety for the sons of men. The holy breath will come upon you and the ten, and in Jerusalem you shall stand before the nations of the earth, and there proclaim the covenant of God with men. And you shall speak the words of holy breath, and whatsoever God requires of men as earnest of their faith in Christ, you shall make known. Then turning to the twelve he said, What you have heard this day tell not to any man. Then Jesus and the twelve went up and were Susanna's guests for many days. Chapter 129 The news soon spread that Jesus and the twelve were come, and many people came to see. And Jesus said, Behold, you come to see, but that means naught. If you would have the benedictions of the Christ, take up your and follow me. If you would give your life for selfish self, then you will lose your life. If you will give your life in service of your fellow men, then you will save your life. This life is but a span, a bauble of today. There is a life that passes not. Where is your profit if you gain the world and lose your soul? What would you take in payment for your soul? If you would find the spirit life, the life of man in God, then you must walk a narrow way and enter through a narrow gate. The way is Christ, the gate is Christ and you must come up by the way of Christ. No man comes unto God but by the Christ. The kingdom of the Christ will come, yea, some of you who hear me now will not pass through the gates of death until you see the kingdom come in power. 
For seven days the Master and the twelve remained in Caesarea Philippi. Then Jesus, taking Peter, James and John, went forth unto a mountain top to pray. And as he prayed a brilliant light appeared, his form became as radiant as a precious stone, his face shone like the sun, his garments seemed as white as snow, the Son of Man became the Son of God. He was transfigured that the men of earth might see the possibilities of man. When first the glory came the three disciples were asleep, a master touched their eyes and said, Awake and see the glory of the Lord. And they awoke, and saw the glory of the Lord, and more, they saw the glory of the heavenly world, for they beheld two men from thence stand forth beside the Lord. And Peter asked the master who awakened them, Who are these men who stand beside the Lord? The master said, These men are Moses and Elijah, who are come that you may know that heaven and earth are one, that masters there and masters here are one. The veil that separates the worlds is but an ether veil. For those who purify their hearts by faith the veil is rolled aside, and they can see and know that death is an elusive thing. And Peter said, Praise God. And then he called to Jesus and he said, My Master and my Lord, this is the gate of heaven, and it is well that we remain. May we go down and bring three tents, a tent for you, a tent for Moses, and for Elijah one. But Jesus answered not. And Moses and Elijah talked with Jesus on the mount. They talked about the coming trial of the Lord, about his death, his rest within the tomb, about the wonders of the resurrection morn, the transmutation of his flesh, and his ascension on the clouds of light, and all symbolic of the path that every man must tread, symbolic of the way the sons of men become the sons of God. The three disciples were amazed, and suddenly the ethers were surcharged with song, and forms as light as air moved all about the mountain top. And then from out the glory of the upper world they heard a voice that said, This is the Son of Man, my chosen one to manifest the Christ to men. Let all the earth hear him. When the disciples heard the voice they were afraid, they fell upon the ground and prayed. And Jesus came, he touched them and he said, Arise, fear not, lo, I am here. Then they arose, and as they looked about they saw no one, the men had gone. The Master only stood with them. As Jesus and the three came from the mountain top they talked about the meaning of the scene. And Jesus told them all, and then he said, Till I have risen from the dead tell not to anyone what you have seen. But the disciples could not comprehend the meaning of the words, Till I have risen from the dead. And Jesus told them once again about his death, and rising from the grave, about the kingdom of the soul that was to come in glory and in power. But Peter said, The scribes have taught that ere the king shall come Elijah must appear. And Jesus said, Elijah has already come, but scribes and Pharisees received him not, and men reviled him, bound him, cast him in a prison cell, and shouted with a fiend's delight to see him die. What men have done to him, that they will do to me? Then the disciples understood that Jesus spoke of John whom Herod slew. Chapter 130 When Jesus, Peter James and John were come unto the city's gates a multitude of people thronged the way. The nine apostles who went not with Jesus to the mount, had tried to heal an epileptic child who was obsessed waited for the coming of the Lord. When Jesus came the father of the child knelt down before him and implored his help. He said, My master, I beseech that you will look in pity on my son, my only child. He is an epileptic child and suffers grievously. Sometimes he falls into the fire and is burned, again he falls into the water and is like to drown, and many times a day he falls, he grinds his teeth, the foam pours from his mouth. I took my child to your disciples, and they failed to give relief. And as he spoke a servant brought the child before the Lord, the child spoke not, for he was dumb and instantly he fell upon the ground, he foamed, he writhed in agony. And Jesus said, 
how long has he been troubled thus? The father said, From infancy, and we have sought in many lands for help, but found it not, but I believe that you can speak the word and heal my son. And Jesus said, Faith is the power of God. All things are possible for him who in his heart believes. The father cried, in tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. And Jesus spoke the word of power, the epileptic child lay in a swoon, he did not breathe, and all the people said, the child is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and said, Arise, and he arose and spoke. The people were amazed, and many said, This surely is a man of God, for no such power was ever given to man. Then Jesus and the twelve went to the house, and after they had taken food and been refreshed, the nine disciples said, Lord, why could we not heal this child? We spoke the word, but even that was powerless. And Jesus said, Your great success in all your former work has made you careless, and you forgot to recognize the power of God. Without the spirit of the word, the word is like an idle tale, and you forgot to pray. There is no faith without the prayer of faith. Faith is the wings of prayer, but wings alone fly not. By prayer and faith you can bring down the mountain peaks, and cast them in the sea, the little hills will skip about like lambs at your command. This failure may be well for you. The great lessons that are learnt in life come through the failures that are made. As the disciples sat in thoughtful meditation Jesus said, let these words sink into your hearts, the time has nearly come when you must bear your load alone, that is, without my presence in the flesh. For I will fall into the hands of wicked men, and they will slay me on a mount beyond Bezadar wall. And men will lay my body in a tomb where, by the sacred word, it will be guarded and preserved three days, then I will rise again. The twelve were sad, they did not understand and yet they feared to ask him to reveal the meaning of his word. Next day the Christine master and the twelve began their journey of return, and soon were in Capernaum. Chapter 131 As Jesus and the twelve were resting in the house, the tax collector came to Peter saying, Man, do Jesus and yourself pay this half-shekel tax? And Peter said, We pay whatever is assessed. And Jesus said, From whom do publicans collect this special tax? From strangers or from native sons? And Peter said, The strangers only are supposed to pay this tax. Then Jesus said, We all are native sons and we are free, but lest we cause contention we will pay the tax, but neither had the shekel wherewithal to pay. And Jesus said, Go to the sea. Cast in a hook and catch a fish and you will find within its inner parts a shekel, which take up and pay the tax for you and me. And Peter did as Jesus said, he found the shekel and he paid the tax. Now Jesus heard the twelve dispute among themselves. The spirit of the carnal self was moving in their hearts, and they were questioning among themselves who was the greatest in the sight of God and man. And Jesus said, You men, for shame. The greatest is the servant of the rest. And then he called to him a little child, he took it in his arms and said. The greatest is the little child, and if you would be great at all you must become as is this child in innocence, in truth, in purity in life. Great men scorn not the little things of earth, he who regards and honors such a child, regards and honors me, and he who scorns a child scorns me. If you would enter through the kingdom gate you must be humble as this little child. Hear me, you men, this child, as every other child, has one to plead its cause before the throne of God. You scorn it at your peril, men, for lo, I say, its counterpart beholds the face of God at every moment, every day. And hear me once again, he who shall cause a little one to stumble and to fall is marked, accursed, and it were better far if he had drowned himself. Behold, offenses everywhere. Men find occasions for to sin and fall, 
and they grow strong by rising when they fall, but woe to him who causes other men to stumble and to fall. Be on your guard, you men of God, lest you constrain another man to fall, beware lest you fall into sinful ways yourselves. Now, if your hands cause you to sin, you better cut them off, for it is better far to have no hands and not be guilty in the sight of God and men, than to be perfect in your form and lose your soul. And if your feet should cause offense, you better cut them off, for it is better far to enter into life without your feet than fall beneath the curse. And if your eyes, or ears, cause you to sin, you better lose them all than lose your soul. Your thoughts and words and deeds will all be tried by fire. Remember that you are the salt of earth, but if you lose the virtues of the salt, you are but refuse in the sight of God. Retain the virtues of the salt of life and be at peace among yourselves. The world is full of men who have not in themselves the salt of life, and they are lost. I come to seek and save the lost. How think you? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray, will he not leave the ninety and the nine, and go out in the desert ways and mountain tops to seek the one that went astray? Yes, this you know, and if he finds the one that went astray, lo, he is glad, and he rejoices over it far more than over all the ninety and the nine that did not go astray. And so there is rejoicing in the human courts of heaven when one human birth who has gone forth into the ways of sin is found and brought back to the fold, yea, there is joy, more joy than over all the righteous men who never went astray. And John said, Master, who may seek and save the lost? And who may heal the sick, and cast the demons out of those obsessed? When we were on the way we saw a man who was not one of us cast demons out and heal the sick. He did it by the sacred word and in the name of Christ. But we forbade him, for he did not walk with us. And Jesus said, You sons of men, do you imagine that you own the powers of God? And do you think that all the world must wait for you to do the works of God? God is not man that he should have a special care for any man, and give him special gifts. Forbid not any man to do the works of God. There is no man who can pronounce the sacred word, and in the name of Christ restore the sick, and cast the unclean spirits out, who is not child of God. The man of whom you speak is one with us. Whoever gathers in the grain of heaven is one with us. Whoever gives a cup of water in the name of Christ is one with us, so God shall judge. Chapter 132 A multitude of people thronged the streets. The officers were on the way to court with one, a man accused of stealing bread. And in a little while the man was brought before the judge to answer to the charge. And Jesus and the twelve were there. The man showed in his face and hands the hard-drawn lines of toil and want. A woman richly clad, the accuser of the man, stood forth and said, I caught this man myself, I know him well, for yesterday he came to beg for bread. And when I drove him from my door, he should have known that I would harbor not a man like him, and then today he came and took the bread. He is a thief and I demand that he be sent to jail. The servants also testified against the man, he was adjudged a thief, and officers were leading him away. But Jesus standing forth exclaimed, You officers and judge, be not in haste to lead this man away. Is this a land of justice and of right? Can you accuse and sentence men to punishment for any crime until they testify themselves? The Roman law will not permit such travesty on right and I demand that you permit this man to speak. And then the judge recalled the man and said, If you have any tale to tell, say on. In tears the man stood forth and said, I have a wife and little ones and they are perishing for bread, and I have told my story oft, and begged for bread, but none would hear. This morning when I left our cheerless hut in search of work my children cried for bread, and I resolved to feed them or to die. I took the bread, and I appeal to God, was it a crime? 
This woman snatched the loaf away and threw it to the dogs, and called the officers and I am here. Good people, do with me whatever you will, but save my wife and little ones from death. Then Jesus said, Who is the culprit in this case? I charge this woman as a felon in the sight of God. I charge this judge as criminal before the bar of human rights. I charge these servants and these officers as parties to the crime. I charge the people of Capernaum with cruelty and theft, because they heeded not the cries of poverty and want, and have withheld from helpless ones that which is theirs by every law of right, and I appeal unto these people here, and ask, are not my charges based on righteousness and truth? And every man said, Yes. The accused woman blushed for shame, the judge shrank back in fear, the officers threw off the shackles from the man and ran away. Then Jesus said, Give this man what he needs and let him go and feed his wife and little ones. The people gave abundantly, the man went on his way. And Jesus said, There is no standard law to judge of crime. The facts must all be stated ere a judgment can be rendered in a case. You men with hearts, go forth and stand where stood this man and answer me, what would you do? The thief thinks every other man a thief and judges him accordingly. The man who judges harshly is the man whose heart is full of crime. The courtesan who keeps her wickedness concealed by what she calls respectability, has not a word of pity for the honest courtesan who claims to be just what she is. I tell you, men, if you would censure not till you are free from sin, the world would soon forget the meaning of the word, accused. Chapter 133 The harvest feast drew near, the twelve went to Jerusalem, but Jesus did not go with them, he tarried in Capernaum. Among the multitudes that followed him were many who went not up to the feast, they were not Jews. And Jesus called threescore and ten of these disciples unto him and said, The kingdom of the Christ is not for Jews alone, it is for every man. Lo, I have chosen twelve to preach the gospel, first unto the Jews, and they are Jews. Twelve is the number of the Jew and seven the number of the all, including every man. God is the ten, the holy jod. When God and man are multiplied we have three score and ten, the number of the brotherhood of man. And now I send you forth by twos and twos, not to the Jews alone, but unto every nation under heaven to Greek and to Assyrian, to the Samaritan, to those beyond the seas, to every man. You need not go afar, for men of every land are here and in Samaria. Arise and go your way, but go in faith, and take no gold nor silver in your purse, no extra coat or shoes. Go in the sacred name, trust God and you will never come to want. And let this be your salutation everywhere, peace be to all goodwill to all. And if the Son of Peace be in the house, the door will open wide and you will enter in, and then the Holy Peace will rest upon that house. The seventy inters went forth, they went into Samaria, and as they went they said, Peace be to all, goodwill to all. Repent and turn from sin, and set your house in order, for a Son of Man who bears the image of the Christ, will come, and you may see his face. They entered every village of Samaria, they preached in Tyre and in Sidon by the sea. Some went to Crete, and others into Greece, and others went to Galilee and taught. And Jesus, all alone, went to the feast by the Samaria way, and as he went through Sychar on the way, the lepers saw him and a company of ten called from afar and said, Lord Jesus, stay and speak the word for us that we may be made clean. And Jesus said, Go forth and show yourselves unto the priests. They went, and as they went their leprosy was healed. One of the ten, a native of Samaria, returned to thank the Master and to praise the Lord. And Jesus said to him, Lo, ten were cleansed, where are the nine? Arise, and go your way, your faith has made you whole. You have revealed your heart and shown that you are worthy of the power 
behold the nine will find again their leprous hands and feet. And Jesus went his way, and while the feast was on he came into Jerusalem, and went into the temple courts. And he rebuked the scribes and Pharisees, the priests and doctors of the law for their hypocrisy and selfishness. The common people were amazed, they said, from whence has come the wisdom of this man? He speaks as speaks a sage. And Jesus said, I did not learn the wisdom of the Holy One within the schools of men, my teaching is not mine, I speak the words of him who sent me here to do his will. If any man would know whereof I speak, lo, he must do the will of God. No man can know except he enters into life and does the will of God. Now, Moses gave the law, but none of you have kept the law, how can you judge the worthiness of any man? Once in these courts I healed a man upon a Sabbath day, and in a rage you sought to take my life, and now because I tell the truth you seek again to take my life. A scribe spoke out and said, You foolish man, you are obsessed, who wants to take your life? The common people said, Is this not Jesus whom the rulers long have sought to kill? And now he comes and teaches in the temple courts. If he is guilty of such monstrous crimes, why do they not take him away in chains? And Jesus said, You all know me, and know from whence I came, but you know not the God who sent me here, whose words I speak. The multitudes again stood forth in his defense, they said, If this is not the Christ whom God has promised to reveal to men, will he do greater works when he shall come than does this man? The Pharisees and ruling priests were angered and they sent their officers to take him ere he went away. The officers were filled with fear, they seized him not. And Jesus said, Lo, I am here but for a little time and then I go my way to him who sent me here to do his will. You seek me now and you can find me now, the time will come when you will seek and will not find, for where I go you cannot come. The people said, where will he go that men can find him not? Will he go forth to Greece and teach the Greeks? Or will he go to Egypt or Assyria to teach? But Jesus answered not, unnoticed by the multitudes he left the temple courts and went his way. Chapter 134 Now, on the last day of the feast when multitudes were in the courtways, Jesus said, Whoever is a thirst may come to me and drink. He who believes in me and in the Christ whom God had sent, may drink the cup of life, and from his inner parts shall streams of living waters flow. The holy breath will overshadow him, and he will breathe the breath, and speak the words, and live the life. The people were divided in their views concerning him. Some said, This man is prophet of the living God. And others said, He is Messiah whom our prophets said would come. And others said, He cannot be the Christ, for he came down from Galilee, the Christ must come from Bethlehem where David lived. Again the priests and Pharisees sent officers to bring him into court to answer for his life, but when the officers returned and brought him not, the rulers were enraged and said, Why did you not arrest this man and hail him into court? The officers replied, We never heard a man speak like this man speaks. In rage the Pharisees stood forth and said, Have you gone mad? Have you been led astray? Are you disciples of this man? Have any of the rulers, or the Pharisees believed on him? The common people? Yes, they may believe, they are accursed, they know not anything. But Nicodemus came before the rulers and he said, Can Jewish judges judge a man and sentence him until they hear his plea? Let Jesus stand before this bar and testify himself. The rulers said, This Jesus is a wily man, and if we suffer him to speak, he will rebuke us face to face, and then the multitudes will laugh and stand in his defense. And then you know, as well as we, that prophets do not come from Galilee. The rulers felt the force of what the officers and Nicodemus said, and they said nothing more. And then the people went their way, each to his home.
but Jesus went unto Mount Olives where he spent the night in prayer. But in the morning when the sun had scarcely risen, Jesus came again, and many people came to see him in the temple courts, and he sat down and taught the multitudes. The Pharisees and scribes were still alert to find a cause whereby they might condemn him by the words he spoke. The officers had taken in the very act of crime, a courtesan. As Jesus taught, they brought this woman and set her in the midst and said, Rabboni, this vile woman has been taken in adultery. The law of Moses says that such as she shall die, be stoned to death, what do you say should be her punishment? And Jesus stooped and made a figure on the ground and in it placed the soul, and then he sat in silent thought. And when the priests demanded that he speak, he said, Let him who has no sin stand forth and be the first to cast a stone at her. And then he closed his eyes, and not a word was said. When he arose and saw the woman all alone he said, Where are the men who brought you here? They who accused. The woman said, They all are gone, no one was here who could condemn. And Jesus said, And I condemn you not, go on your way in peace, and sin no more. Chapter 135 The feast was done and Jesus, Peter, James and John were sitting in the temple treasury. The nine had gone back to Capernaum. The people thronged the temple courts and Jesus said, I am the lamp. Christ is the oil of life, the holy breath the fire. Behold the light. And he who follows me shall not walk in the dark, but he shall have the light of life. A lawyer said, You witness for yourself, your witness is not true. And Jesus said, If I do witness for myself I speak that which is true, for I know whence I came and where I go. And no one else in flesh can testify for me for none know whence I came, nor where I go. My works bear witness to the truth I speak. As man I could not speak the words of holy breath, and then my father testifies for me. The lawyer said, Where does your father live? And Jesus said, You know me not or you would know my father, and if you knew the father you would know the son, because the father and the son are one. I go my way and you shall find me not. For where I go you cannot come, because you do not know the way. You cannot find the way because your hearts are gross, your ears are dull, your eyes are closed. The light of life cannot shine through the murky veil that you have drawn about your hearts. You do not know the Christ and if the Christ be not within the heart there is no light. I come to manifest the Christ to men and you receive me not and you will dwell in darkness and in the shadow of the grave till you believe the words I speak. But you will vilify the Son of Man, and lift him up and laugh to see him die. But then a little light will come and you will know that I am what I am. The people did not comprehend the meaning of the words he spoke. And then he spoke unto the people who believed in him and said, If you abide in Christ, and Christ abide in you, and if you keep my words within your heart, you are the way, you are disciples in the way, and you shall know what is the truth, and truth shall make you free. And still the people did not understand, they said, We are the seed of Abraham and are already free, we never were the slaves of any man, why do you say, We shall be free? And Jesus said, Do you not know that every one committing sin is slave of sin? Abides in bondage unto sin. If you sin not then you are free, but if you sin in thought, or word, or deed, then you are slaves, and naught but truth can set you free, if you are free through Christ, then you are free indeed. You are the seed of Abraham, and yet you seek to kill me just because I speak the truth of Abraham. You are the children of the flesh of Abraham, but, lo, I say, there is a spiritual Abraham whom you know not. In spirit you are children of your father, and your father is Diabolus, you hang upon his words and do his will. He was a murderer from the first, he cannot tell the truth, and when he tells a lie he speaks his own, he is himself a lie, and he is father of himself. If you were children of my father God, 
then you could hear the words of God, I speak the words of God, but you can bear them not. A Pharisee stood forth and said, This fellow is not one of us he is a cursed Samaritan and is obsessed. But Jesus heeded not the words of Pharisee or scribe, he knew that all the people knew he was a Jew. And then he said, Whoever keeps my words shall never die. A lawyer said, And now we know he is obsessed. Our father Abraham is dead, the prophets all are dead, and yet this fellow says, Whoever keeps my words shall never die. Is this man greater than our father Abraham? Is he above the prophets? And all of them are dead. And Jesus said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, he saw it and was glad. The lawyer said, You simple man, you are not fifty years of age, have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said, Before the days of Abraham I am. Again the scribes and Pharisees were in a rage, they took up stones to cast at him, but, like a phantom of the night, he disappeared, the people knew not where he went. Chapter 136 And Jesus stood again within the temple courts and taught. A master of the law was sent to question him that he might find a cause to censure and accuse him of a crime. He said, Lord, tell me what to do that I may have eternal life. And Jesus said, You know the law, what does it say? The lawyer answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, Lo, you have answered well, this do and you shall live. The lawyer said, My neighbor, who is he? And Jesus said, A man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho, and lo, he met with robbers on the way, who beat him, robbed him of his goods, and left him bleeding by the way. A Pharisee was going down that way, he saw the wounded man, but then he had no time to lose, he passed by on the other side. A Levite came and saw the man, but he was loath to soil his sacerdotal robes, and he passed by. A lawyer on his way to Jericho observed the dying man, and then he said, If I could make a shekel I might help the man, but he has nothing left to give, I have no time for charity, and he passed on. And then a stranger from Samaria came that way, he saw the wounded man, his heart was touched with pity, and he stopped, dismounted from his horse, revived the man, and placed him on his horse and took him to an inn and charged the keeper of the inn to nurse him back to strength. He gave the keeper all the money that he had and said, Your charges may be more than this, but care for this unfortunate, and when I come again I will pay all and then he went his way. Now, master of the law, which of these four was neighbor unto him who fell among the thieves? The lawyer said, The man who showed him mercy, he who cared for him. And Jesus said, Go on your way and likewise do, and you shall live. Now, Jesus, Peter, James and John went out to Bethany where Lazarus lived. And Mary sat at Jesus' feet and heard him speak the words of life while Martha served. And Martha called, but Mary would not leave the Lord to help her serve. And Martha said to Jesus, Do you not care that Mary makes me bear the burdens of the serving all the day? I beg that you will bid her help. And Jesus said, You are too anxious, Martha, for your guests, you need not trouble so about the things of life. You grow a weary by your care for little things and slight the one thing needed most of all. Your sister here has chosen far the better part, a part that none can take away. Chapter 137 Now, in the evening Jesus, Peter, James and John, with Lazarus, went out beyond the village gates to pray. And Lazarus said, Teach me to pray. And Jesus said, the prayer I taught the twelve to pray while we were up in Galilee is one acceptable to God, and when you pray just say, Our Father God who art in heaven, holy is thy name, thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as it is done in heaven, give us this day our needed bread, help us forget the debts that other people owe to us, 
that all our debts may be discharged, and shield us from the tempter's snares that are too great for us to bear, and when they come give us the strength to overcome. And Jesus said, The answer to your prayer may not appear in fullness in a little time. Be not discouraged, pray again and then again, for God will hear. And then he spoke a parable, he said, A housewife was alone at night and, lo, some guests arrived, and they were hungry, having had no food for all the day. The housewife had no bread, and so at midnight she went forth and called a friend and said, Loan me three loaves of bread, for guests have come, and I have naught for them to eat. The friend replied, Why do you trouble me at midnight hour? My door is shut, my children are with me in bed, I cannot rise to give you bread, tomorrow you can be supplied. The housewife asked again, and then again, and then because she pled, and would not be refused, the friend arose and gave her bread. Behold, I say to you, ask firmly and you shall receive, seek trustingly and you shall find, knock earnestly, the door will open up. All things are yours, and when you ask, not as a begging man would ask, but as a child, you shall be satisfied. A son may ask his father for a loaf of bread, the father will not give to him a stone, or he may ask him for a fish, he will not give a crab, or he may ask him for an egg, the father will not give a pebble from the brook. Behold, if men of flesh know how to give abundantly to children of the flesh, will not your heavenly Father give abundantly to you when you shall pray? Chapter 138 The Lord with Peter, James and John were in Jerusalem, it was the Sabbath day. And as they walked along the way they saw a man who could not see, he had been blind from birth. And Peter said, Lord, if disease and imperfections all are caused by sin, who was the sinner in this case? The parents or the man himself? And Jesus said, Afflictions all are partial payments on a debt, or debts, that have been made. There is a law of recompense that never fails, and it is summarized in that true rule of life, whatsoever man shall do to any other man some other man will do to him. In this we find the meaning of the Jewish law, expressed concisely in the words, tooth for a tooth, life for a life. He who shall injure anyone in thought, or word, or deed, is judged a debtor to the law, and someone else shall, likewise, injure him in thought, or word or deed. And he who shed the blood of any man will come upon the time when his blood shall be shed by man. Affliction is a prison cell in which a man must stay until he pays his debts unless a master sets him free that he may have a better chance to pay his debts. Affliction is a certain sign that one has debts to pay. Behold this man. Once in another life he was a cruel man, and in a cruel way destroyed the eyes of one, a fellow man. The parents of this man once turned their faces on a blind and helpless man and drove him from their door. Then Peter asked, Do we pay off the debts of other men when by the word we heal them, drive the unclean spirits out, or rescue them from any form of sore distress? And Jesus said, We cannot pay the debts of any man, but by the word we may release a man from his afflictions and distress, and make him free, that he may pay the debts he owes, by giving up his life in willing sacrifice for men or other living things. Behold, we may make free this man that he may better serve the race and pay his debts. Then Jesus called the man and said, Would you be free? Would you receive your sight? The man replied, All that I have would I most freely give if I could see. And Jesus took saliva and a bit of clay and make a salve, and put it on the blind man's eyes. He spoke the word and then he said, Go to Siloam and wash, and as you wash say, Jehovah. This do for seven times and you shall see. The man was led unto Siloam, he washed his eyes and spoke the word, and instantly his eyes were opened and he saw. The people who had seen the man for many years sit by the way and beg, were much surprised to see him see. 
they said, Is not this man the job that was born blind, who sat beside the way and begged? He heard them talk among themselves, he said, Yes I am he. The people asked, How were you healed? Who opened up your eyes? He said, A man whom men call Jesus, made a salve of clay and put it on my eyes, and bade me say a word and wash in Siloam seven times, I did as he commanded me, and now I see. A certain scribe was passing, and he saw the man and heard him say that Jesus, by the word, had opened up his eyes. He therefore took the man up to the synagogue, and told the story to the priests, who asked the man about the miracle. The man replied, I never saw the light until today, for I was blind from birth. This morning as I sat beside Siloam, a man I never knew put on my eyes a salve that people say he made of clay, he bade me say a word and bathe my eyes in water seven times, I did as he commanded and I saw. A lawyer asked the man, who was it opened up your eyes? The man replied, some people say, his name is Jesus and that he came from Galilee, but others say, he is the Son of God. A Pharisee came up and said, this is the Sabbath day, a man who does a work like this, regarding not the Sabbath day, is not from God. Some of the priests were much amazed and said, a wicked man could never do a miracle like this, he must possess the power of God. And so they strove among themselves. They asked the man, what do you think about this man from Galilee? He said, he is a prophet sent from God. Now, many of the Jews did not believe the man was blind from birth, they said, there is no power to open up the eyes of one born blind. And then they brought the parents of the man before the Pharisees that they might testify. They said, this is our son who was born blind, we do not know how he received his sight, he is of age and he can tell, ask him. They were afraid to say what they believed that Jesus is the Christ who came to manifest the power of God, lest they offend the priests and be cast from the synagogue. Again the rulers said, This Jesus is a wicked man. The man who had been healed stood forth again and said, This Jesus may be sinner or be saint, I do not know, but this one thing I know, I once was blind, but now I see. And then the scribes and Pharisees reviled the man and said, you are a follower of this man from Galilee. We follow Moses, but this man, we know him not, and know not whence he is. The man replied, It is a marvel that you know not whence he is, and yet he opened up my eyes. You know that nothing but the power of God can do such things. God hears not sinners pray, and you must know that he is not a wicked man who can employ the power of God. The Pharisees replied, You wretch! You were begotten and were born in sin, and now you try to teach the law to us. And then they cast him from the synagogue. Chapter 139 When Jesus heard what had been done and how the priests had cast the man whom he had healed, out of the synagogue he found the man and said to him, Do you believe in God and in the Son of God? The man replied, I do believe in God, but who is he, the Son of God, of whom you speak? And Jesus said, The Son of God is he who speaks to you. The man inquired then, Why do you say, the Son of God? Is there but one? And Jesus said, All men are sons of God by birth, God is the father of the race, but all are not the sons of God by faith. He who attains the victory over self is son of God by faith, and he who speaks to you has overcome, and he is called son of God, because he is the pattern for the sons of men. He who believes and does the will of God is son of God by faith. The man in joy exclaimed, Lord, I believe in God, and in the Son of God. And Jesus said, I came to open prison doors, to make the blind to see, but, lo, the Pharisees are blind from birth. And when I put the salve of truth upon their eyes, and bid them go and wash, and speak the sacred word they will not go, they love the dark. A multitude of people pressed about the Lord, and he stood forth and said, 
you men of Israel, I say to you, the fold of God is large, its walls are strong, it has a gateway in the east, and he who does not enter by the gate into the fold, but climbs into the fold some other way, is thief and comes to rob. The shepherd of the sheep stands by the gate, he gives the secret sign, he knocks, the watchman opens up the gate. And then the shepherd calls his sheep by name, they hear his voice and follow him, they enter through the gate into the fold. The sheep know not a stranger's voice, they will not follow him, they flee away. The people did not understand the parable that Jesus spoke, and then he said, Christ is the gateway of the fold, I am the shepherd of the sheep, and he who follows me through Christ shall come into the fold where living waters flow, and where rich pastures are. False prophets come and go, they claim to be the shepherds of the sheep, they claim to know the way, but they know not the word of power, the watchman opens not the gate, the sheep heed not their call. The shepherd of the sheep will give his life to save the sheep. A hireling flees to save his life when wolves infest the fold, and then the tender lambs are snatched away, the sheep are scattered everywhere. I am the shepherd of the sheep, I know the sheep of God, they know my voice, as God knows me and I know him. The Father loves me with a deathless love, because I lay my life down for the sheep. I lay my life down when I will but I may take it up again, for every son of God by faith has power to lay his mortal flesh aside and take it up again. These words I have received from God. Again the people strove among themselves, they were divided in their views concerning Christ. They could not comprehend the words that Jesus spoke. Some said again, he is obsessed, or he is mad, why listen to his words? And others said, his words are not the words of one obsessed. Can unclean spirits open up the eyes of one born blind? Then Jesus left Jerusalem and with Masali and he tarried certain days. Chapter 140 The time had come for the return of the three score and ten whom Jesus sent abroad to preach. And Jesus, Peter, James and John began their journey back to Galilee. They went up through Samaria, they passed through many villages and towns, and everywhere the people thronged the ways to see the man the seventy had told about, and Jesus taught and healed the sick. And when they reached Capernaum the seventy were there, and they were filled with joy, they said, The Spirit of the Lord of hosts was with us all the way, and we were filled. The power of the sacred word was manifest in us, we healed the sick, we caused the lame to walk the deaf to hear, the blind to see. The very devils trembled when we spoke the word, and they were subject unto us. And Jesus said, As you were going on your way, the heavens were bright with light, the earth was bright, they seemed to meet and be at one, and I beheld, and Satan fell as lightning from the heavens. Behold, for you have power to tread on serpents and on scorpions, and these are symbols of the enemies of men. You are protected in the way of right, and naught can harm. And as you went I heard a master say, Well done. But you may not rejoice because you have the power to heal the sick and make the devils tremble by the word, for such rejoicing is from carnal self. You may rejoice because the nations of the earth have ears to hear the word, and eyes to see the glory of the Lord, and hearts to feel the inner breathing of the holy breath and you may well be glad because your names are written in the book of life. Then Jesus looked to heaven and said, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast revealed thyself to babes, and taught them how to light the path and lead the wise to thee. What thou hast given to me, lo, I have given to them, and through the sacred word I have bestowed on them the understanding heart, that they might know and honor thee through Christ, who was, and is and evermore shall be. And then he said aside, unto the seventy and twelve, Most blessed are your eyes because you see the things you see, and blessed they are your ears because they hear the things they hear, and blessed are your hearts because you understand. In ages that are gone the wise of earth, the prophets, seers and kings, 
desired to hear and see and know what you have heard and seen and known, but they had not attained and could not hear, and see and know. And Jesus said again, Lo, I have gone before you many moons, and I have given to you the bread of heaven and the cup of life, have been your buckler and your stay, but now that you have learned the way, and have the strength to stand alone, behold, I lay my body down and go to him who is the all. In forty days then we will turn our faces towards Jerusalem where I will find the altar of the Lord and give my life in willing sacrifice for men. Let us arise and go through all the coasts of Galilee, and give a salutation of good cheer to all the sons of God by faith. And they arose and went, they entered every town and village on the coast, and everywhere they said, The benedictions of the Christ abide with you for evermore. Now, in a certain town they went up to the synagogue upon the Sabbath day, and Jesus taught. And as he spoke, two men brought on a cot a woman bent near double with disease, she had not risen from her bed for eighteen years without a helping hand. And Jesus laid his hand upon the woman, and he said, Arise, be free from your infirmity. And as he spoke the word the woman found that she was straight and strong. And she arose and walked and said, Praise God. The ruler of the synagogue was filled with wrath because the healer healed upon the Sabbath day. He did not censure Jesus face to face, but turning to the multitudes he said, You men of Galilee, why do you break the laws of God? There are six days in every week when you may bring the afflicted to be healed. This is the day that God has blessed the Sabbath day in which men may not work. And Jesus said, You inconsistent scribes and Pharisees! Upon the Sabbath day you take your beasts of burden from their stalls, and lead them forth to eat and drink, is this not work? This daughter of your father Abraham, who has been bound for eighteen years, has come in faith to be made free. Now, tell me, men, is it a crime to break her bonds and set her free upon the Sabbath day? The ruler said no more, the people all rejoiced and said, Behold the Christ! And Jesus spoke a parable, he said, The kingdom of the Christ is like a little seed that one put in the ground, it grew and after many years became a mighty tree, and many people rested in its shade, and birds built nests and reared their young among its leafy boughs. Chapter 141 And Jesus went into another town upon the coast and spoke good words of cheer to those who followed him. And one stood forth and said, Lord, are there few that enter into life? And Jesus said, The way is rough that leads to life, the gate is narrow and is guarded well, but every one who seeks in faith shall find the way, and they who know the word may enter in. But many seek the way for selfish gain, they pound upon the gate of life, but it is fast. The watchman from the turret says, I know you not, your speech is that of Ashdod, and your robes are those of sin, depart and go your way. And they will go their way with weeping and with gnashing of the teeth. And they will be enraged when they will be enraged when they see their father Abraham with Isaac, Jacob and the prophets resting in the kingdom of the Christ, and they themselves debarred. And, lo, I say that men will come from lands afar, from east, from west, from north, from south and sit with me in consciousness of life. Behold, I say, the last shall be the first, the first shall be the last. All men are called unto the kingdom of the Christ, but few are chosen, for the pure in heart alone can see the king. And as he spoke a Pharisee came up and said, You man of Galilee, if you would save your life remain not here, flee instantly, for Herod swears that he will take your life, and even now his officers are seeking you. And Jesus said, Why is it that the Pharisees are so concerned about my life? And then he said unto the man who spoke, Go forth and say to that sly fox, Behold, I heal the sick and cast the unclean spirits out today, tomorrow, and the days to come, and then I will attain. Go say to him, I need not fear in Galilee, for I must meet the cruel wrath of men within Jerusalem. And while they tarried in the place a man, 
a Pharisee, invited Jesus and a few of those who followed him, to dine with him upon the Sabbath day, to celebrate the marriage of his son. Among the guests was one afflicted with a dropsical disease. And Jesus said to those who had been sent to get from his own lips some words by which they might accuse him of a crime, You lawyers and you Pharisees, what do you say about the lawlessness of healing on the Sabbath day? Here is a man, one of your own, and he is sore distressed. Shall I, in God's own strength, say out the healing word and heal this man? The lawyers and the Pharisees were dumb, they answered not. Then Jesus spoke the healing word and healed the man and he, rejoicing, went his way. Then Jesus said again unto the lawyers and the Pharisees, Which one of you who has a horse or cow, if it would fall into a pit upon the Sabbath day would fall would not call in his friends to help to draw it out? And not a man could answer, Here am I. As Jesus looked upon the guests who had been bidden to the feast and saw them crowding in to get the highest seats, he said to them, You selfish men, why do you strive to take the highest seats when you are but invited guests? You do not show our host the courtesies of life. When men are bidden to a marriage feast they should sit in the lower seats until the host shall place them where he wills. You may, unbidden, take the highest seat but then a man more honourable may come and when the host shall bid you rise and take a lower seat that he may honour his more worthy guest, you cannot help but blush for very shame in your humility. But if you take the lowest seat and then are honoured by your host and asked to take a higher seat, you are esteemed an honoured guest. In this event we note a principle in life, that he who would exalt himself shall be abased and he who humbles low himself shall be exalted in the sight of men. Then Jesus spoke to all the guests, he said, When any one of you would make a feast it should not be for friends, or kindred, or the rich, for they consider such a courtesy loaned out, and they feel called upon to make a greater feast for you, just in the payment of a debt. But when you make a feast invite the poor, the lame, the blind, in this a blessing waits for you for well you know that you will get naught in return, but in the consciousness of helping those who need, you will be recompensed. And then he spoke a parable, he said, A wealthy man prepared a feast, he sent his servants forth to bid his chosen ones to come, but they desired not to go, and they formed such excuses as they thought would satisfy the would-be host. One said, I have just bought a piece of land, and I must go and prove my title to the land, I pray to be excused. Another said I must go down and prove my ownership in sheep that I have bought, I pray to be excused. Another said, I have been married but a little time and so I cannot go, I beg to be excused. Now, when the servants came and told the man who had prepared the feast that those he had invited would not come, the man was grieved in heart and then he sent his servants forth into the streets and alleys of the town to bring up to the feast the poor, the lame, the blind. The servants went abroad and found the poor, the lame, the blind, and brought them in, but there was room for more. The host then sent his men of arms to bring by force the people to his feast, and then the house was full. And God has made a feast for men. Long years ago he sent his servants forth unto the favoured sons of men. They would not hear his call, they came not to the feast. He then sent forth his servants to the strangers and the multitudes, they came, but there is room for more. Behold, for he will send his angels forth with mighty trumpet blast, and men will be compelled to come up to the feast. Chapter 142 Now. Jesus and the twelve went to another town, and as they entered it they said, Peace be to all, good will to all. A multitude of people followed and the master said to them, Behold, for you are followers for selfish gain. If you would follow me in love, and be disciples of the holy breath, and gain at last the crown of life, you must leave all there is of carnal life behind. Be not deceived, stay, men and count the cost. If one would build a tower, or a home, 
he first sits down and counts the cost to be assured that he has gold enough to finish it. For well he knows that if he makes a failure of his enterprise he may lose all his wealth, and be the butt of ridicule. And if a king desires to take the kingdom of another king, he calls his trusted men and they consider well their strength, he will not measure arms with one of matchless power. Count well the cost before you start to follow me, it means the giving up of life, and all you have. If you love father, mother, wife, or child, more than love the Christ, you cannot follow me. If you follow wealth or honor more than you love the Christ, you cannot follow me. The paths of carnal life do not run up the mountain side towards the top, they run around the mount of life. And if you go straight to the upper gate of consciousness you cross the paths of carnal life, tread in them not. And this is how men bear the cross, no man can bear another's cross. Take up your cross and follow me through Christ into the path of true discipleship, this is the path that leads to life. This way of life is called the pearl of greatest price, and he who finds it must put all he has beneath his feet. Behold. A man found in a certain field the croppings of a wondrous mine of gold, and he went forth and sold his home and all he had and bought the field, then he rejoiced in wealth. Now, there were present, scribes and Pharisees of wealth who loved their money, and their bonds and lands, and they laughed loud to scorn what Jesus said. Then Jesus spoke to them and said, You are the men who justify yourselves in sight of men. God knows your wickedness of heart, and you must know, O men, that whatsoever is revered and is exalted by the carnal mind, is an abomination in the sight of God. And Jesus went his way, and as he went a young man ran and knelt down at his feet and said, Good master, tell me what to do that I may have eternal life. And Jesus said, Why do you call me good? No one is truly good but God himself. And God has said, If you would enter into life, keep the commandments of the law. The young man asked, To which commands did he refer? And Jesus said, You shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not do adulterous things, you shall not falsely testify, and you shall love your God with all your heart, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The man replied, These things I have observed from youth, what lack I yet? And Jesus said, One thing you lack, your heart is fixed on things of earth, you are not free. Go forth and sell all that you have, and give your money to the poor, and come follow me, and you shall have eternal life. The man was grieved at what the master said, for he was rich, he hid his face and went in sorrow on his way. And Jesus looked upon the sorrowing man and said, It is so hard for men with hoarded wealth to enter through the door into the kingdom of the soul. And his disciples were amazed at what he said. He answered them and said, I tell you, men, that they who trust in riches cannot trust in God and cannot come into the kingdom of the soul, yea, it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a man with hoarded wealth to find the way of life. And his disciples said, Who then can find the way? Who can be saved? And Jesus said, The rich may give his gold away, the high may kiss the dust, and God will save. Then Jesus spoke this parable to them, A rich man lived in splendid state, he wore the finest garments men could make, his boards were loaded with the costliest viands of the land. A beggar, blind and lame, whose name was Lazarus, was wont to sit beside the waste gate of this home that he might share with dogs the refuse from the rich man's board. It came to pass that Lazarus died, and angels carried him away unto the bosom of our father Abraham. The rich man also died, and he was buried in a costly tomb, but in the purifying fires he opened up his eyes dissatisfied. He looked and saw the beggar resting peacefully in the bosom of his father Abraham and in the bitterness of his soul he cried, My father Abraham, look down in mercy on your son, I am tormented in these flames. Send Lazarus, I beseech, that he may give me just a sup of water to cool my parched tongue. 
But Abraham replied, My son, in mortal life, you had the best things of the earth and Lazarus had the worst, and you would not give him a cup of water there, but drove him from your door. The law must be fulfilled, and Lazarus now is comforted, and you are paying what you owe. Besides, there is a great gulf fixed between your zone and us, and if I would I could not send Lazarus to you, and you cannot come up to us till you have paid your debts. Again the man in anguish said, O father Abraham, I pray, send Lazarus back to earth, and to my father's house, that he may tell my brothers who are yet in life, for I have five of them, about the horrors of this place, lest they come down to me and not to you. And Abraham replied, they have the words of Moses and the seers, let them hear them. The man replied, They will not hearken to the written word, but if a man would go up from the grave they might believe. But Abraham replied, If they hear not the words of Moses and the seers they would not be persuaded even though one from the dead stood in their midst. And Peter said, Lord, we have left our all to follow you, and what is our reward? And Jesus said, most verily I say to you, that you who have left all to follow me shall come into a newness of a life hid deep with Christ in God. And you shall sit with me upon the throne of power, and judge with me the tribes of Israel. And he who conquers carnal self, and follows me through Christ shall have a hundredfold of that which is the wealth of life on earth, and in the world to come, eternal life. Chapter 143 the Lord was standing by the sea, the multitudes were there and one stood forth and said, Does God bestow rewards as men bestow rewards, for what is done? And Jesus said, Men never know what other men have done, this life is such a seeming life. One man may seem to do a mighty work, and be adjudged by men as worthy of a great reward. Another man may seem to be a failure in the harvest fields of life and be dishonored in the face of men. Men do not know the hearts of men, God only knows the hearts of men, and when the day is done he may reward with life the man who fell beneath the burdens of the day, and turn away the man who was the idol of the hearts of men. And then he spoke a parable, he said, The kingdom of the soul is like a man who had a vast estate, and in the morning time he went down to the market place to search for men to gather in his grain. He found three men, and he agreed to give to each a penny for his service for the day, and sent them to his field. Again he went down to the market place the third hour of the day and found five men in waiting, and he said, Go down into my field and serve, and I will pay you what is right, and they went down and served. He went again, it was the sixth hour of the day, and seven men were waiting at the stand, he sent them to the field to serve. And at the eleventh hour he went again, twelve men stood there in seeming idleness, he said to them, Why stand you here in idleness all day? They said, Because we have no work to do, no man has hired us. And then he sent them to his field to serve. Now, when the evening came the man said to his steward, Call the laborers from the field, and pay them for his services. And all were paid and each received a penny for his hire. Now, when the twelve, who served but from the eleventh hour, received each one a penny for his hire, the three were sore aggrieved, they said, These twelve have served but one short hour, and now they have an equal share with us who have toiled through the scorching hours of day, should we not have at least two pennies for our hire? The man replied, My friends, I do no wrong to you. Did we mo have a fast agreement when you went to work? Have I not paid in full? What is it unto you if I should pay these men a smaller or a larger sum? Take that which is your own and go your way, for I will give unto the twelve what I will give unto the three, the five, the seven. They did their best and you could do no more than do your best. The hire of man is based upon the intent of the heart. As Jesus taught, a Pharisee came up and said, Lord, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? And Jesus said, You ought to know, what says the law? The Pharisee replied, 
the law provides that man may be divorced, may put away his wife. And Jesus said, The hardness of the hearts of men induced the giver of the law to make provisions such as these, but from the first it was not so. God made a woman for a man, and they were one, and afterwards he said, A man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, they are no more divided, they are one, one flesh. What God has joined no man can part. Now, when they went up to the house, a man made free to ask again about this matter of divorce. And Jesus said again what to the Pharisee he said, and then he gave the higher law of marriage life, whoever puts away his wife, except she be a courtesan, and then shall take another wife commits adultery. The woman who shall leave a man, unless he be a libertine and an adulterer, and then becomes the wife of any other man, commits adultery. And Thomas asked, What is adultery? And Jesus said, The man who harbors lustful thoughts, who covets any woman not his wife, is an adulterer. The wife who harbors lustful thoughts, and covets any man who is not wed to her, is not her husband, is a courtesan. Men cannot make a law to bind two hearts. When two are bound in love they have no thought of lust. The woman cannot leave the man, the man has no desire to send his wife away. When men and women harbor lustful thoughts, and covet any other flesh, they are not one, not joined by God. And Philip said, Lord, are there few that God has joined in holy marriage bonds? And Jesus said, God knows the pure in heart, the lustful men and women are but creatures of the lustful self, they cannot be at one, nor can they be at one with God. Nathaniel said, Is it not well that all men should refrain from taking on themselves the marriage vow? And Jesus said, Men are not pure because they are unmarried men. The man who lusts is an adulterer if he has wife or not. And then he said to all, some things men know by being told, while other things they know not till the gate of consciousness shall open up for them. I speak a mystery that now you cannot understand, but you shall some day understand. A eunuch is a man who does not lust, some men are eunuchs born, some are eunuchs by the power of men, and some are eunuchs by the holy breath, who makes them free in God through Christ. He who is able to receive the truth I speak, let him receive. Chapter 144 When they had journeyed through the towns and cities of the land of Galilee, the Lord with his disciples came to Tiberias, and here they met a few who loved the name of Christ. And Jesus told them many things about the inner life, but when the multitudes came up, he spoke a parable, he said. A certain man with great possessions had two sons. The youngest son grew tired of life at home and said, My father, pray divide your wealth and give the portion that is mine to me, and I will seek my fortune in another land. The father did as he desired, and with his wealth the young man went into a foreign land. He was a profligate and soon had squandered all his wealth in ways of sin. When nothing else remained for him to do he found employment in the fields to care for swine. And he was hungry, and no one gave him aught to eat, and so he ate the carob pods that he was feeding to the swine. And after many days he found himself and said unto himself, My father is a man of wealth, he has a score of servants who are bountifully fed while I, his son, am starving in the fields among the swine. I do not hope to be received again as son, but I will rise and go straight to my father's house, and I will make confession of my waywardness, and I will say, My father, I am come again, I am profligate, and I have lost my wealth in ways of sin, I am not worthy to be called your son. I do not ask to be received again as son, but let me have a place among your servants, where I may have a shelter from the storms and have enough to eat. And he arose and sought his father's house, and as he came his mother saw him while yet a great way off. A mother's heart can feel the first faint yearning of a wandering child. The father came, 
and hand in hand they walked a down the way to meet the boy, and there was joy, great joy. The boy tried hard to plead for mercy and a servant's place, but love was all too great to listen to the plea. The door was opened wide, he found a welcome in the mother's heart, and in the father's heart. The father called the servants in, and bade them bring the finest robe for him, the choicest sandals for his feet, a ring of purest gold for him to wear. And then the father said, My servants, go and kill the fatted calf, prepare a feast, for we are glad, our son we thought was dead is here alive, a treasure that we thought was lost is found. The feast was soon prepared and all were merry, when the eldest son who had been serving in a distant field and knew not that his brother had returned, came home. And when he learned the cause of all the merriment he was offended, and would not go into the house. His father and his mother both besought him tearfully to disregard the waywardness and folly of their son, but he would not, he said, Lo, all these years I have remained at home, have served you every day, have never yet transgressed your most severe commands, and yet you never killed for me a kid nor made for me a simple feast that I might make merry with my friends, but when your son, this profligate, who has gone forth and squandered half your wealth in ways of sin, comes home, because he could do nothing else, you kill for him the fatted calf and make a wondrous feast. His father said, My son, all that I have is yours and you are ever with us in our joys, and it is well to show our gladness when your brother, who is near and dear to us, and who we thought was dead, returns to us alive. He may have been a profligate, may have consorted with gay courtesans and thieves, yet he is still your brother and our son. Then Jesus said so all might hear, he who has ears to hear, and hearts to understand will comprehend the meaning of this parable. Then Jesus and the twelve came to Capernaum. Chapter 145 a company of Pharisees came up to speak with Jesus and they said, Rabboni, we have heard you say, the kingdom is at hand. We read in Daniel that the God of heaven will form a kingdom, and we ask, is this the kingdom of the God you speak about? If so, when will it come? And Jesus said, the prophets all have told about this kingdom of the God, and it is just at hand, but men can never see it come. It never can be seen with carnal eyes, it is within. Lo, I have said, and now I say again, none but the pure in heart can see the king, and all the pure in heart are subjects of the king. Reform, and turn away from sin, prepare you, O prepare. The kingdom is at hand. And then he spoke to his disciples and he said, The seasons of the Son of Man are past. The time will come when you will wish above all else to see again one of these days, but you can see it not. And many men will say, Lo, here is Christ, lo, there is Christ. Be not deceived, go not into their ways. For when the Son of Man will come again no man need point the way, for as the lightning lights the heavens, so will the Son of Man light up the heavens and earth. But, lo, I say, that many generations will have come and gone before the Son of Man shall come in power, but when he comes no one will say, Lo, here is Christ, lo, there. But as it was before the flood in Noah's day, so shall it be. The people ate, they drank, were filled with merriment and sang for joy, and did not know their doom until the ark was done and Noah entered in, but then the flood came on and swept them all away. So, also, in the days of Lot, the people ate and drank, they bought, they sold, they planted and they reaped, they went their ways in sin, and they cared not, but when the righteous Lot went from their city's gates the earth beneath the city shook, and brimstone fires fell from heaven, the gaping jaws of earth flew wide, and swallowed up their homes, their wealth, and they went down to rise no more. So shall it be when comes the Son of Man in power. I charge you men, as I will charge men then, seek not to save your wealth, or you will lose your lives. Go forth, and look not back upon the crumbling walls of sin. 
do not forget Lot's wife. Whoever tries to save his life will lose his life, whoever freely gives his life in serving life will save his life. Then comes the sifting time. Two men will be in bed, one will be called, the other left, two women will be working side by side, one will be snatched away, the other left. And his disciples said, Explain to us this parable, or is it not a parable? And Jesus said, The wise will understand, for where the bread of heaven is, there you will find the pure in heart, and where the carcass lies will gather all the birds of prey. But lo, I say, before these days will come, the Son of Man will be betrayed by one of you into the hands of wicked men, and he will give his life for you and all the world. Yea, more, the holy breath will come in power and fill you with the wisdom of the just. And you will tell the wondrous story in Judea and in Samaria and in the farther lands of earth. And then to teach that men should pray and never faint, he told this parable, there was a judge who feared not God, nor yet regarded man. There was a widow who oft implored the judge to right her wrongs and to avenge her foes. At first the judge would hear her not, but after many days he said, I fear not God, and I regard not man, yet, lest this widow wear me out by pleading every day I will avenge her on her foes. When the disciples asked the meaning of this parable, the Lord replied, The wise can understand, the foolish have no need to know. And then to teach a lesson unto certain of his followers who trusted in themselves and thought that they were holier than other men, he told this parable, two men went to the synagogue to pray, one was a Pharisee, the other was a publican. The Pharisee stood forth and prayed thus with himself, O God, I thank thee that I am not like other men, who are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, not even like this publican. I fast two times a week, and I give tithes of all I get. The publican came not anear, he would not lift his eyes to heaven, but smote his breast and said, O Lord, be merciful to me, I am a sinner in thy sight, I am undone. And now, you men, I say to you, the publican knew how to pray, and he was justified. The Pharisee knew how to talk, but still he went away condemned. Lo, every one who lords himself himself shall be abased, and he who does not praise himself shall be exalted in the sight of God. Chapter 146 The work of Jesus in the land of Galilee was done, and he sent forth a message, and the many came from many towns of Galilee, came to receive a benediction from his hand. Among the multitudes who came was Luke, a Syrian from Antioch, a learned physician and a just and upright man. Theophilus, a Grecian senator, a minister of Caesar's court, was also there, and many other men of honor and renown. And Miriam sang, All hail the day star form on high. All hail the Christ who ever was, and is and evermore shall be. All hail the darkness of the shadow land. All hail the dawn of peace on earth, goodwill to men. All hail triumphant king, who grapples with the tyrant death, who conquers in the fight, and brings to light immortal life for men. All hail the broken cross, the mutilated spear. All hail the triumph of the soul. All hail the empty tomb. All hail to him despised by men, rejected by the multitudes for he is seated on the throne of power. All hail! For he has called the pure in heart of every clime to sit with him upon the throne of power. All hail, the rending veil! The way into the highest courts of God is open for the sons of men. Rejoice, O men of earth, rejoice, and be exceeding glad. Bring forth the harp and touch its highest strings, bring forth the lute and sound its sweetest notes. For men who were made low, are high exalted now, and they who walked in darkness and in the veil of death, are risen up and God and man are one for evermore, Alleluia. Praise the Lord for evermore. Amen. And Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, My Father God, let now the benediction of thy love, 
thy mercy and thy truth rest on these men. The lamp is taken from their midst, and if the inner light be not a flame, lo, they must tread the ways of darkness and of death. And then he said to all, Farewell then Jesus and his mother, and the twelve, and Miriam and Mary, mother of the two disciples, James and John, and many other loyal souls who loved the Christ, went to Jerusalem, that they might celebrate the Jewish feast. And as they journeyed on their way they came to Enun Springs, near unto Salim where the harbinger once taught. And as they rested by the fountain, Mary, wife of Zebedee, and mother of the two disciples, James and John, came to the master and she said, My lord, I know the kingdom is about to come, and I would ask this boon, command that these my sons shall sit with you upon the throne, the one upon the right, the other on the left. And Jesus said to her, You know not what you ask. And then he turned to James and John and said, Are you prepared and are you strong enough to drink the cup that I will drink? They said, Yes. Master, we are strong enough to follow where you go. Then Jesus said, You shall indeed drink of my cup, but I am not the judge of who will sit upon my right or my left. The men who live the life and keep the faith will sit upon the throne of power. Now, when the apostles heard the pleadings of the mother for her sons, and knew that James and John were seeking special favors from the Lord, they were indignant and they said, we surely thought that James and John had risen above the selfish self. Who can we trust among the sons of men? And Jesus called the ten apart and said to them, How hard for men to comprehend the nature of the kingdom of the soul! These two disciples do not seem to know that rulership in heaven is not akin to rulership on earth. In all the kingdoms of the world, the men of power, they who exalt themselves, show their authority, and rule with iron rule, but you must know that they who rule the sons of light are they who seek no earthly power, but give their lives in willing sacrifice for men. Whoever would be great must be the minister of all. The highest seat in heaven is at the feet of him who is the lowest man of earth. I had a glory with our Father God before the worlds were made, and still I come to serve the race of men, to be the minister of men to give my life for men. And then the Christines journeyed on and came unto Jerusalem. Chapter 147 Now, many Jews from Galilee, Judea and Samaria were in Jerusalem and at the feast. The porch of Solomon was filled with scribes and Pharisees and doctors of the law, and Jesus walked with them. A scribe approaching Jesus said, Rabboni, why do you keep the people waiting in suspense? If you are the Messiah that the prophets said would come, will you not tell us now? And Jesus said, Lo, I have told you many times, but you believed me not. No man can do the work that I have done and bring to men the truth as I have brought the truth who did not come from God. What I have done and said are witnesses for me. God calls and they whose ears have attuned to hear the heavenly voice have heard the call and have believed in me, because God testifies for me. You cannot hear the voice of God, because your ears are closed. You cannot comprehend the works of God, because your hearts are full of self. And you are busybodies, mischief-makers, hypocrites. You take these men whom God has given me into your haunts and try to poison them with sophistries and lies and think that you will snatch them from the fold of God. I tell you, men, these men are tried and you can snatch not one of them away. My Father who has given them to me is greater than you all, and he and I are one. And then the Jews took stones to throw at him and cried, Now we have heard enough, away with him, let him be stoned. But Joseph, member of the great Sanhedrin of the Jews, was in the porch and he came forth and said, You men of Israel, do nothing rash, throw down those stones, your reason is a better guide than passion in such times as these. You do not know your accusations to be true, and if this man should prove himself to be the Christ, and you should take his life, the wrath of God would rest upon you evermore. And Jesus said to them, Lo, I have healed your sick, 
have caused your blind to see, your deaf to hear, your lame to walk, and cast out unclean spirits from your friends, for which of these great works would you desire to take my life? The Jews replied, We would not stone you for your works of grace, but for your vile, blasphemous words. You are but man and still you say that you are God. And Jesus said, A prophet of your own said to the sons of men, Lo, you are gods. Now, hark, you men, if he could say that to the men who simply heard the word of God, why should you think that I blaspheme the name of God because I say, I am a son of God? If you believe not what I say you must have faith in what I do, and you should see the Father in these works, and know that I dwell in the Father God, and that the Father dwells in me. And then again the Jews took stones and would have stoned him in the temple court, but he withdrew himself from sight and left the porch and court and went his way, and with the twelve he went to Jericho, and after certain days they crossed the Jordan and in Bessabara abode for many days. Chapter 148 One day as Jesus and the twelve were in the silence in a home in Araba a messenger came and said, Lord, Jesus, hear. Your friend in Bethany is sick, nigh unto death, his sisters urge that you arise and come in haste. Then turning to the twelve the master said, Lo, Lazarus has gone to sleep, and I must go and waken him. And his disciples said, What need to go if he has gone to sleep, he will awaken by and by. Then Jesus said, It is the sleep of death, for Lazarus is dead. But Jesus did not haste to go. He stayed two days in Araba, and then he said, The hour has come and we must go to Bethany. But his disciples urged him not to go, they said, The Jews are waiting your return that they may take your life. And Jesus said, Men cannot take my life till I have handed unto them my life. And when the time shall come I will myself lay down my life, that time is near, and God knows best, I must arise and go. And Thomas said, Then we will also go, yes, we will offer up our lives and die with him. And they arose and went. Now, Mary, Martha, Ruth and many friends were weeping in their home when one approached and said, The Lord has come, but Mary did not hear the words. But Ruth and Martha heard, and they arose and went to meet the Lord, he waited at the village gate. And when they met the master Martha said, you are too late, for Lazarus is dead, if you had only been with us I know that he would not have died. But even now I know that you have power over death, that by the sacred word you may cause life to rise from death. And Jesus said, Behold, for Lazarus shall again. And Martha said, I know that he will rise and live again when all the dead shall rise. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who has faith in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live, and he who is alive, and has a living faith in me, shall never die. Do you believe what I have said? And Martha said, Lord, I believe that you are come to manifest the Christ of God. The Jesus said, Go back and call aside your sister, and my mother and the prophetess and say that I have come, and I will stay here by the gate till they have come to me. And Ruth and Martha did as Jesus bade them do, and in a little while the Marys and the prophetess had met the Lord. And Mary said, Why did you tarry thus? If you had been with us our brother, dear, would not have died. Then Jesus went up to the house and when he saw the heavy grief of all, he was himself stirred up with grief, and said, Where is the tomb in which he lies? They said, Lord, come and see and Jesus wept. The people said, Behold how Jesus loved this man. And others said, Could not this Lord, who opened up the eyes of one born blind, have saved this man from death? But soon the mourners stood beside the tomb, a sepulchre hewn out of solid rock, a massive stone closed up the door. And Jesus said, Take you away the stone. But Martha said, Lord, is it well? Behold our brother has been dead four days, the body must be in decay, and is it well that we should see it now? The Lord replied, 
have you forgotten, Martha, what I said while we were at the village gate? Did I not say that you should see the glory of the Lord? And then they rolled the stone away, the flesh had not decayed, and Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, My Father God, thou who hast ever heard my prayers, I thank thee now, and that these multitudes may know that thou hast sent me forth, that I am thine and thou art mine, make strong the word of power. And then he spoke the word, and in a voice that souls can comprehend, he said, O Lazarus, awake. And Lazarus arose and came out of the tomb. The grave clothes were about him fast, and Jesus said, Lose him and let him go. The people were amazed and multitudes confessed their faith in him. And some went to Jerusalem and told the Pharisees about this resurrection of the dead. The chief priests were confounded, and they said, What shall we do? This man is doing many mighty deeds, and if we do not stay him in his work, all men will look on him as king, and through the Romans he may take the throne, and we will lose our place and power. And then the chief priests and the Pharisees in council met and sought a plan by which they might put him to death. Caiaphas was the high priest then, and he came forth and said, You men of Israel, do you not know the law? Do you not know that in such times as these we may give up one life to save our nation and our laws? Caiaphas did not know that he was prophet, speaking out the words of truth. He did not know the time had come for Jesus to be offered up a sacrifice for every man, for Jew and Greek, and all the world. From that day forth the Jews conferred together every day, maturing plans to put the Lord to death. Now, Jesus and the twelve did not remain in Bethany, but in the hills of Ephraim, upon the borders of Samaria, they found a home, and their abode for many days. Chapter 149 The great Passover of the Jews, the Feast of Spring, was calling every loyal Jew up to Jerusalem. Ten days before the feast the Lord and his disciples left the Ephraim hills and by the Jordan way, went down to Jericho. And as they entered Jericho a wealthy publican came out to see the Lord, but he was small in stature and the throng was great and he could see him not. A tree, a sycamore, stood by the way and he climbed up the tree and found a seat among its boughs. When Jesus came, he saw the man and said, O Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, I would abide with you today. And Zacchaeus came down and joyfully received the Lord, but many of the stricter sect called out and said, For shame! He goes to lodge with Zacchaeus, the sinner and the publican. But Jesus did not care for what they said, he went his way with Zacchaeus, who was a man of faith, and as they talked together Zacchaeus said, Lord, I have ever tried to do the right, I give unto the poor half of my goods, and if by any means I wrong a man, I right the wrong by paying him fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Your life and faith are known to God, and lo, the benedictions of the Lord of hosts abide with you and all your house. Then Jesus spoke a parable to all, he said, A vassal of an emperor was made a king, and he went to the foreign land to claim his rights and take the kingdom to himself. Before he went he called ten trusted servants and to each he gave a pound and said, Go forth and use these pounds as you have opportunity, that you may gain for me more wealth, and then he went his way. And after many days he came again, and called the ten demanding a report. The first one came and said, Lord, I have gained nine pounds, you gave me one and here are ten. The king replied, Well done, you faithful man, because you have been faithful in a little thing I judge that you will be a faithful servant in a greater thing, behold, I make you ruler over nine important cities of my realm. The second came and said, Lord, I have gained for you four pounds you gave me one, and here are five. The king replied, and you have proven up your faithfulness. Behold, I make you ruler over four important cities of my realm. Another came and said, Lord, I have doubled what you gave to me. 
You gave one pound to me and here are two. The ruler said, And you have proved your faithfulness, behold, I make you ruler over one important city of my realm. Another came and said, Lord, here is what you gave to me. I knew you were an austere man, oft reaping where you did not sow and I was sore afraid, and so I took the pound you gave to me and hid it in a secret place, and here it is. The king exclaimed, You slothful man! You knew what I required, that I expected every man to do his best. If you were timid and afraid to trust your judgment in the marts of trade, why did you not go forth and put my money out for gain? that I could have my own with interest. Then turning to the steward of his wealth the ruler said, Take you this pound and give it unto him who has by diligence earned nine. For lo, I say, that every one who uses what he has and gains, shall have abundantly, but he who hides away his talent in the earth shall forfeit what he has. Chapter 150 The Christines started on their way to Bethany, and as they went, while yet in Jericho, they passed a beggar sitting by the way, and he was blind Bartimaeus. And when the beggar heard the multitude pass by he said, What is it that I hear? The people said to him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And instantly the man cried out, Lord Jesus, son of David, stay. Have mercy on poor blind Bartimaeus. The people said to him, Be quiet hold your peace. But blind Bartimaeus called again, Thou son of David, hear. Have mercy on poor blind Bartimaeus. And Jesus stopped and said, Bring him to me. And then the people brought the blind man to the Lord, and as they brought him up they said, Be cheerful, now, Bartimaeus, the Lord is calling you. And then he threw his cloak aside, and ran to Jesus as he waited by the way. And Jesus said, What will you have, Bartimaeus? The blind man said, Rabboni, open up mine eyes that I may see. And Jesus said, Bartimaeus, look up, receive your sight, your faith has made you whole. And he at once received his sight, and from the fullness of his heart he said, Praise God. And all the people said, Praise God. Then Jesus and the twelve went on to Bethany. It was six days before the feast. And when the people knew that Jesus was in Bethany they came from near and far to see him and to hear him speak. And they were anxious all to talk with Lazarus, whom Jesus had awakened from the dead. Now in Jerusalem the priests and Pharisees were all alert, they said, This Jesus will be at the feast and we must not permit that he shall slip away again. And they commanded every man to be alert and help to apprehend the Lord that they might take his life. Chapter 151 It was the day before the Sabbath day, the eighth day of the Jewish Nisan month, that Jesus came to Bethany. And on the Sabbath day he went up to the synagogue and taught. And on the morning of the first day of the week, the Sunday of the week, he called his twelve apostles unto him and said, This day we go up to Jerusalem, be not afraid, my time has not yet come. Now, two of you may go unto the village of Bethphage, and you will find an ass tied to a tree, and you will see a little colt nearby. Untie the ass and bring her here to me. If anyone inquires why you take the ass, just say, The master has a need of her and then the owner will come on with you. And the disciples went as Jesus bade them go, they found the ass and colt a near an open door, and when they would untie the ass the owner said why would you take the ass away? And the disciples said, the master has a need of her, and then the owner said, tease well. And then they brought the animal, and on her put their coats, and Jesus sat upon the ass and rode into Jerusalem. And multitudes of people came and filled the way, and his disciples praised the Lord and said, Thrice blessed is the King who in the name of God is come. All glory be to God, and peace on earth, goodwill to men. And many spread their garments in the way, and some tore branches from the trees and cast them in the way. 
and many children came with garlands of sweet flowers and placed them on the Lord, or strewed them in the way, and said, All hail the King! Long live the King! The throne of David shall be built again. Hosanna to the Lord of hosts! Among the throng were Pharisees, who said to Jesus as he passed, Rebuke this noisy throng, it is a shame for them to cry thus in the street. The Lord replied, I tell you, men, if these should hold their peace the very stones would cry aloud. And then the Pharisees conferred among themselves, they said, Our threats are idle words. Behold, for all the world is following him. As Jesus drew a near Jerusalem he paused and wept, and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the holy city of the Jews. Yours was the glory of the Lord, but you have cast the Lord away. Your eyes are closed, you cannot see the King, the kingdom of the Lord of heaven and earth has come, you comprehend it not. Behold, the day will come when armies from afar will cast a bank about your way, will compass you about and hem you in on every side, will dash you to the ground and slay you and your children in the streets. And of your holy temple, and of your palaces and walls, they will not leave a stone upon a stone, because today you spurn the offers of the God of heaven. When Jesus and the multitude had come into Jerusalem, excitement reigned, and people asked, Who is this man? The multitudes replied, This is the king, the prophet, Priest of God, this is the man from Galilee. But Jesus tarried not, he went directly to the temple porch, and it was filled with people pressing hard to see the king. The sick, the halt, the lame, the blind were there, and Jesus paused, and laid his hands on them and healed them by the sacred word. The temple and the temple courts were filled with children praising God. They said, Hosanna to the king. The son of David is the king. All hail the king. Praise God. The Pharisees were filled with anger when they heard the children sing. They said to Jesus, Hear you what the children say. And Jesus said, I hear, but have you never read the words of our own bard who said, Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. And when the evening came the Lord and his disciples went again to Bethany. Chapter 152 Next day, the Monday of the week, the master with the twelve, went to Jerusalem. And as they passed along the way they saw a fig tree full of leaves without a sign of fruit. And Jesus spoke unto the tree, he said, You useless cumberer of the ground, you fig tree fair to look upon, but a delusive thing. You take from the earth and air the food that fruitful trees should have. Go back to earth and be yourself the food for other trees to eat. When Jesus had thus spoken to the tree he went his way. And when he reached the temple, lo, the rooms were filled with petty merchants selling doves and animals, and other things, for sacrifice, the temple was a mart of trade. And Jesus was indignant at the sight, and said, you men of Israel, for shame. This is supposed to be the house of prayer, but it is now a den of thieves. Remove this plunder from this holy place. The merchants only laughed and said, We are protected in our trade by those who bear the rule, we will not go. Then Jesus made a scourge of cords, as he did once before, and rushed among the merchantmen, threw all their money on the floor threw wide the cages of the doves, and cut the cords that held the bleating lambs and set them free. And then he drove the merchants from the place, and with a clean, new broom he swept the floors. Chief priests and scribes were filled with wrath, but feared to touch or even to rebuke the Lord, for all the people stood in his defense. And Jesus taught the people all day long and healed a multitude of those diseased and when the evening came he went again to Bethany. Chapter 153 On Tuesday, early in the day, the master and the twelve went to Jerusalem. And as they went the twelve observed the tree to which the Lord had talked the day before, and lo, the leaves were withered, just as if they had been scorched with fire. 
And Peter said, Lord, see the tree. Its leaves are withered and the tree seems dead. And Jesus said, So shall it be with those who bear no fruit. When God shall call them up to give account, lo, he will breathe upon them, and their leaves, their empty words, will wither and decay. God will not let the fruitless trees of life encumber ground, and he will pluck them up and cast them all away. Now, you can demonstrate the power of God. Have faith in God, and you can beat the mountains to depart, and they will crumble at your feet, and you may talk to wind and wave, and they will hear, and will obey what you command. God hears the prayer of faith and when you ask in faith you shall receive. You may not ask amiss. God will not hear the prayer of any man who comes to him with blood of other men upon his hands. And he who harbors envious thoughts, and does not love his fellow men, may pray forever unto God, and he will hear him not. God can do nothing more for men than they would do for other men. And Jesus walked again within the temple courts. The priests and scribes were much emboldened by the counsel of Caiaphas and the other men in power. And so they came to Jesus and they said, Who gave you the authority to do as you have done? Why did you drive the merchants from the temple yesterday? And Jesus answered them and said, If you will answer what I ask, then I will answer you, Was John, the harbinger, a man of God, or was he a seditious man? The scribes and Pharisees were loath to answer him, they reasoned thus among themselves, If we shall say, John was a prophet sent from God, then he will say, John testified for me, that I am son of God, why do you not believe his words? If we should say, John was a bold, seditious man, the people will be angered, for they think he was a prophet of the living God. And so they answered Jesus and they said, We do not know, we cannot tell. Then Jesus said, If you will tell me not, then I will tell you not who gave me power to drive the robbers from the house of God. And then he spoke a parable to them, he said, A man once made a feast inviting all the rich and honored people of the land. But when they came, they found the door into the banquet hall was low, and they could enter not except they bowed their heads and fell down on their knees. These people would not bow their heads and fall down on their knees, and so they went away they went not to the feast. And then the man sent forth his messengers to bid the common folks, and those of low estate, to come and feast with him. These people gladly came, they bowed their heads and fell down on their knees, and came into the banquet hall and it was full, and every one rejoiced. And then the master said, Behold, you priests and scribes, and Pharisees the Lord of heaven and earth has spread a sumptuous feast, and you were bidden first of all, but you have found the door into the banquet hall so low that you must bow your heads and fall down on your knees to enter in, and you have scorned the king who made the feast, refused to bow your heads and fall down on your knees, and you have gone your way, but now God calls again, the common folks and those of low estate have come in multitudes, have entered in unto the feast and all rejoice. I tell you, men, that publicans and courtesans go through the gates into the kingdom of the God of heaven, and you are left without. John came to you in righteousness, he brought the truth, but you believed him not. But publicans and courtesans believed, and were baptized and now have entered in unto the feast. I tell you now, as I have told you many times, the many have been called, but chosen are the few. Chapter 154 The multitudes would hear what Jesus had to say, and so they built a platform in the temple court, and Jesus stood upon the place and taught. He spoke in parables, he said, A man possessed a vast estate, he planted out a vineyard, placed a hedge about it, built a tower, installed the press for making wine. He placed his vineyard in the hands of husbandmen and then he journeyed to a distant land. Now, in the vintage time the man sent forth a servant to receive and bring to him his portion of the fruitage of the vines. The husbandman came forth and beat the man, 
laid forty lashes on his back and cast him out beyond the vineyard gate. And then the owner sent another man to bring to him his own. The husbandman laid hold of him and sorely wounded him and cast him from the vineyard, leaving him half dead beside the way. The owner sent another man to bring to him his own. The husbandman seized hold of him and with a javelin they pierced his heart, then buried him beyond the hedge. The owner was aggrieved. He thought within himself, What shall I do? And then he said, This will I do. My only son is here, and I will send him to the husbandman, they surely will respect my son and send me what is mine. He sent his son, the husbandman took counsel with themselves, they said, this is the only heir to all this wealth, and if we take his life the vast inheritance is ours. They took his life and cast him out beyond the vineyard hedge. The days will come, the owner will return to reckon with the husbandman, and he will seize them every one, and cast them into scorching fires where they shall stay until they pay the debts they owe. And he will place his vineyard in the care of honest men. Then turning to the priests and scribes he said, Did not your prophets say, The stone the builders cast away became the capstone of the arch? You men who pose as men of God, as husbandmen, lo, you have stoned and killed the messengers of God, his prophets and his seers, and now you seek to slay his son. I tell you men, the kingdom shall be snatched away from you and shall be given unto people who are not a people now, and to a nation that is not a nation now. And men whose speech you cannot understand, will stand between the living and the dead, and show the way to life. The chief priests and the Pharisees were deeply moved with anger when they heard this parable and would have seized the Lord and done him harm, but they were sore afraid, they feared the multitude. And Jesus spoke another parable, he said. The kingdom is a like a certain king who made a feast in honor of the marriage of his son. He sent his servants forth to call the people who had been invited to the feast. The servants called, but then the people would not come. And then the king sent other messengers abroad to say, Behold, my tables now are spread, my oxen and my fatlings are prepared. The choicest viands and the richest wines are on my boards come to the marriage feast. The people laughed and treated with disdain his call, and went their way, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and others seized the servants of the king, abused them shamefully, and some of them they killed. And then the king sent forth his soldiery who slew the murderers and burned their towns. And then the king sent other servants forth, to them he said, Go to the corners of the streets the partings of the ways, and to the marts of trade and say, Whoever will may come up to the marriage feast. The servants went their way and called, and lo, the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man who had not on a wedding robe, he called to him and said, Friend, why are you here without a wedding robe? Would you dishonor thus my son? The man was dumb. He answered not. And then the king said to his guards, Take you this man and bind him hand and foot and cast him out into the darkness of the night. The many have been called, but none are chosen to be guests who have not clad themselves in wedding robes. Chapter 155 As Jesus spoke, the Pharisees came up to question him. They thought to criminate him by what he said. A strict Herodian spoke and said, My Lord, you are a man of truth, you show the way to God, and you do not regard the personality of men, tell us, what do you think, should we, who are the seed of Abraham, pay tribute unto Caesar? Or should we not? And Jesus knew his wickedness of heart and said, Why do you come to tempt me thus? Show me the tribute money that you speak about. The man brought forth a piece of coin on which an image was engraved. And Jesus said, Whose image and whose name is on this coin? The man replied, Tease Caesar's image and his name. And Jesus said, Give unto Caesar that which is Caesar's own, but give to God the things of God.
And they who heard him said, He answers well. And then a Sadducee, who thinks there is no resurrection of the dead, came up and said, Rabboni, Moses wrote that if a married man shall die, and have no child, his widow shall become his brother's wife. Now, there were seven brothers and the eldest had a wife, he died and had no child, a brother took his widow for his wife, and then he died, and every brother had this woman for his wife, in course of time the woman died, now which will have this woman for a wife in the resurrection day? And Jesus said, Here in this plane of life men marry just to gratify their selfish selves, or to perpetuate the race, but in the world to come, and in the resurrection day, men do not take upon themselves the marriage vows. But, like the angels and the other sons of God, they form not unions for the pleasure of the self, nor to perpetuate the race. Death does not mean the end of life. The grave is not the goal of men, no more than is the earth the goal of seeds. Life is the consequence of death. The seed may seem to die, but from its grave the tree arises into life. So man may seem to die, but he lives on, and from the grave he springs up into life. If you could comprehend the word that Moses spoke about the burning bush that burned and still was not consumed, then you would know that death cannot destroy the life. And Moses said that God is God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel. God is not God of dead men's bones, but the living man. I tell you, men, man goes down to the grave, but he will rise again and manifest the life, for every life is hid with Christ in God, and man shall live while God shall live. The Pharisees and scribes who heard the Lord, exclaimed, He speaks the truth, and they were glad to have the Sadducees discomfited. And then an honest scribe came forth and said to Jesus, Lord, you speak as one whom God has sent, and may I ask, which is the greatest and the first of the commandments of the law? And Jesus said, The first is hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. These are the greatest of the ten and on them hang the law, the prophets and the psalms. The scribe replied, My soul gives witness that you speak the truth, for love fulfills the law, and far transcends burnt offerings and sacrifice. And Jesus said to him, Lo, you have solved a mystery, you are within the kingdom and the kingdom is in you. To his disciples Jesus spoke, and all the people heard, he said, Beware you of the scribes and Pharisees who pride themselves in wearing long and richly decorated robes, and love to be saluted in the market place, and seek the highest seats street feasts, and take the hard-earned wages of the poor to satisfy their carnal selves, and pray in public, long and loud. These are the wolves who clothe themselves to look like sheep. And then he said to all, the scribes and Pharisees are placed by law in Moses' seat, and by the law they interpret law, so what they bid you do, that do, but do not imitate their deeds. They say the things that Moses taught, they do the things of Beeltebal. They talk of mercy, yet they bind on human shoulders burdens grievous to bear. They talk of helpfulness, and yet they put not forth the slightest helpful efforts for their brother man. They make a show of doing things, and yet they do not anything but show their gaudy robes, and broad phylacteries, and smile when people call them honored masters of the law. They strut about and show their pride when people call them father, so and so. Here, now, you men, call no man father here. The God of heaven and earth, and he alone, is father of the race of men. Christ is the hierarch the high, exalted master of the sons of men. If you would be exalted, sit down at the master's feet and serve. He is the greatest man who serves the best. Chapter 156 The scribes and Pharisees were wild with rage, and Jesus said, Woe unto you, you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You stand within the way, you block the door 
you will not go into the kingdom and you turn aside the pure in heart who are about to enter in. Woe unto you, you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he has been made he is a son of hell, just like yourselves. Woe unto you who call yourselves the guides of men! And you are guides, blind guides, for you pay tithes of cumin, mint and dill, and leave undone the weightier matters of the law, of judgment, justice, faith. You filter out the gnats before you drink, but then you swallow camels and the like. Woe unto you, you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You clean and scour the outside of the cup, while it is full of filth, extortion and excess. Go to and clean the inside of the cup, and then the poisonous fumes will not defile the outside of the cup. Woe unto you, you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are yourselves like whitewashed sepulchres, your outer garbs are beautiful, but you are full of dead men's bones. You seem to men to be divine, but in your hearts you nourish lust, hypocrisies and vile iniquities. Woe unto you, you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build and then adorn the tombs of holy men of old and say, If we had lived when these men lived, we would have guarded them would not have acted as our fathers did, when they maltreated them and put them to the sword. But you are sons of them who slew the holy men, and you are not a whit more just than they. Go forth and fill the measure of your father who were steeped in crime. You are offsprings of the vipers, and how can you be but serpents of the dust? God now has sent again to you his prophets and his seers, his wise men and his holy men and you will scourge them in your synagogues, and stone them in the streets, and nail them to the cross. Woe unto you! For on your heads will come the blood of all the holy men who have been slain upon the earth. From righteous Abel down to Zacharias, son of Barachias, who was slain within the holy place before the altar of the Lord. Behold, I say that these things all shall come upon this nation and the people of Jerusalem. And Jesus looked about and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou cruel city of Jerusalem, that slays the prophets in the streets and kills the holy men whom God has sent to you. Lo, I would oft have gathered you as children to the fold of God, but you would not. You have rejected God, and now your house is desolate, and you shall see me not again till you can say, Thrice blessed is the Son of Man who comes as Son of God. Then Jesus went and sat beside the treasury and watched the people as they paid their tithes. The rich men came and gave of their abundance, and then he saw a poor but loyal widow come and put a farthing in the treasure box. And then he said to his disciples who were standing by, Behold, for this poor widow who has put a farthing in the treasury has done more than they all, for she has given all she had, the rich have given just a little share of what they have. A company of Grecian Jews were at the feast, and they met Philip, who could talk with them, and said, Sir, we would see the Lord, this Jesus, who is called the Christ. And Philip led the way, and brought them to the Christ. And Jesus said, The hour has come, the Son of Man is ready to be glorified, and it cannot be otherwise. Except a grain of wheat fall into earth and die it can be nothing but a grain of wheat but if it die it lives again, and from its grave a hundred grains of wheat arise. My soul is troubled now, what shall I say? And then he cast his eyes to heaven and said, My father God, I would not ask to be relieved of all the burdens I must bear, I only ask for grace and strength to bear the burdens whatsoever they be, this is the hour for which I came to earth. O Father, glorify thy name. And then the place was lighted with a light more brilliant than the noonday sun, the people stood a back, they were afraid. And then a voice that seemed to come from heaven said, I have both glorified my name and yours, and I will honor them again. The people heard the voice, and some exclaimed, Behold, a distant thunder. Others said, An angel spoke to him. But Jesus said, 
This voice was not for me, it was for you, that you might know that I am come from God. Now is the judgment of the world at hand, the prince of darkness shall be manifest and go unto his own. The Son of Man will now be lifted up from earth, and he will draw all men unto himself. The people said, The law declares that Christ abides for evermore. How can you say, The Son of Man will now be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? And Jesus said to them, The light is shining now, walk in the light while you still have the light. The darkness comes, but he who walks in darkness cannot find the way. Again I say, walk in the light while you still have the light, that men may know that you are sons of light. And Jesus stood out in the temple porch, and made his last appeal unto the multitudes, he said, He who believes in me, believes in God who sent me forth to do his will, and he who sees me now beholds my Father God. Behold, I came a light unto the world, he who believes in me shall walk in light, the light of life. You men who hear me now, if you believe me not, I judge you not. I am not come to judge the world, but I am come to save the world. God is only judge of men, but what I speak will stand against you in the day when God will judge the world, for from myself I do not speak, I speak the words that God has given me to speak. And then he said, Jerusalem, with all your glory and your crimes, farewell. Chapter 157 When Jesus with the twelve went forth and sat upon Mount Olives, just beyond the city's gate. And his disciples said, Behold the wondrous city of Jerusalem. Its homes are all so beautiful. Its temples and its shrines are clothed in such magnificence. And Jesus said, The city is the glory of my people, Israel, but, lo, the time will come when every stone will be cast down, and it will be a hiss and byword for the nations of the earth. And the disciples asked, When will this desolation come? And Jesus said, This round of human life will not be full until the armies of the conqueror will thunder at her gates, and they will enter in, and blood will flow like water through the streets. And all the precious furnishings of temple, court and palaces will be destroyed, or carried off to deck the palaces and courts of kings. Behold, these days are not at hand. Before they come, lo, you shall be maltreated by the scribes and Pharisees, the high priests and the doctors of the law. Without a cause you will be hailed into courts, you will be stoned, you will be beaten in the synagogues, will stand condemned before the rulers of this world, and governors and kings will sentence you to death. But you will falter not, and you will testify for truth and righteousness. And in these hours be anxious not about your speech, you need not think of what to say, for, lo, the holy breath will overshadow you and give you words to say. But then the carnage will go on, and men will think that they are pleasing God by killing you and nations far and near will hate you for the sake of Christ. And men will stir up evil thought among your kin, and they will hate you and will give you up to die. And brothers will be false to brothers, fathers will stand forth and testify against their own, and children will drive parents to the funeral pile. When you shall hear the Roman eagle screaming in the air, and see his legions streaming o'er the plain, then know the desolation of Jerusalem is near. Then let the wise wait not, but flee. Let him who is upon his house wait not to enter in the house to gather up his wealth, but let him flee. And he who labors in the field must not return, but leave his all to save his life. And woe to mothers with their little children in that day, none shall escape the sword. The tribulation of these days cannot be told in words for such has never been since God created man upon the earth. The conqueror will carry many of the sons of Abraham away as captives into foreign lands, and they who know not Israel's God will tread the highways of Jerusalem until the Ati Jewish times have been fulfilled. But when the people have been punished for their crimes, the tribulation days will end, but lo, the time will come when all the world will rise, 
like gladiators in a ring, and fight just for the sake of shedding blood. And men will reason not, they will not see, nor care to see a cause for carnage, desolation, thefts, for they will war with friend or foe. The very air will seem surcharged with smoke of death, and pestilence will follow close upon the sword. And signs that men have never seen will appear in heaven and earth, in sun, and moon, and stars. The seas will roar, and sounds will come from heaven that men can never comprehend, and these will bring distress of nations with perplexity. Hearts of the strongest men will faint in fear, in expectation of the coming of more frightful things upon the earth. But while the conflicts rage on land and sea, the Prince of Peace will stand above the clouds of heaven and say again, Peace, peace on earth, goodwill to men, and every man will throw away his sword, and nations will learn war no more. And then the man who bears the pitcher will walk forth across an ark of heaven, the sign and signet of the Son of Man will stand forth in the eastern sky. The wise will then lift up their heads and know that the redemption of the earth is near. Before these days shall come, behold, false Christs and poor deluded prophets will arise in many lands. And they will show forth signs, and do a multitude of mighty works, and they will lead astray the many who are not wise, and many of the wise will be deceived. And now I tell you once again, when men shall say, The Christ is in the wilderness, go you not forth. And if they say, The Christ is in the secret place, believe it not, for when he comes the world will know that he has come. For as the morning light comes from the east and shines unto the west, so shall be the coming of the age and son of man. The wicked of the earth will weep when they shall see the son of man come down upon the clouds of heaven, in power. Take heed you, O oh take heed, for you know not the hour nor the day when comes the son of man. Let not your hearts be overcharged with sensuous things, nor with the cares of life, lest that day come and find you unprepared. Keep watch at every season of the year, and pray that you may meet the Lord with joy and not with grief. Before those days shall come our Father God will send his messengers abroad, yea, to the corners of the earth, and they will say, Prepare you, O prepare, the Prince of Peace shall come and now is coming on the clouds of heaven. When Jesus had thus said, he went with his disciples back to Bethany. Chapter 158 The morning of the Wednesday of the week was come, and Jesus with the twelve went out to Olivet to pray, and they were lost in prayer for seven hours. Then Jesus called the twelve close to his side and said, this day the curtain parts and we will step beyond the veil into the secret courts of God. And Jesus opened up to them the meaning of the hidden way, and of the holy breath, and of the light that cannot fail. He told them all about the book of life, the rolls of Graphile, the book of God's remembrance where all the thoughts and words of men are written down. He did not speak aloud to them, he told the secrets of the masters in an undertone and when he spoke the name of God there was a silence in the courts of heaven for half an hour, for angels spoke with bated breath. And Jesus said, These things may not be spoken out aloud, they never may be written down, they are the messages of Silas Alad, they are the breathings of the inner heart of God. And then the Master taught the twelve the lessons they should teach to other men. He sometimes taught in parables, he said. You call to mind the words of yesterday about the coming of the Son of Man. Now, you shall teach to other men what I have spoken and am speaking unto you, teach them to pray and not to faint, to be prepared at every moment of the day, for when they least expect him, then the Lord will come. A man went to a distant land and left his house and all his wealth in care of servants, five to guard his house and five to guard his bonds and herds. The servants waited long for his return, but he came not, and they grew careless in their work, some spent their time in revelings and drunkenness, and some slept at their posts. And night by night the robbers came and carried off the wealth from house and barn, and drove away the choicest of the herds. 
and when they knew that much of all the wealth that they were left to guard had been purloined, they said, We cannot be to blame, if we had known the day and hour when our Lord would come again we would have guarded well his wealth, and suffered not the thieves to carry it away, he surely is at fault because he told us not. But after many days the Lord returned, and when he knew that thieves had robbed him of his wealth, he called his servants and he said to them, Because you have neglected what was given you to do, have spent your time in revelings and sleep, behold you all are debtors unto me. What I have lost by your neglect, you owe to me. And then he gave them heavy tasks to do, and bound them to their posts with chains where they remained till they had paid for all the goods their lord had lost through their neglect. Another man locked up his wealth and went to sleep, and in the night time robbers came, unlocked his doors, and when they saw no guard, they entered in and carried off his wealth. And when the man awoke and found his doors ajar and all his treasures gone, he said, If I had known the hour when the thieves would come I would have been on guard. Beware, my friends beware. And be prepared at every hour, and if your Lord shall come at midnight or at dawn, it matters not, for he will find you ready to receive. And then, behold, a marriage was announced, and virgins, ten of them, were set apart to meet the bridegroom when he came. The virgins clothed themselves in proper garbs, and took their lamps and sat in waiting for the watch to say, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Now, five were wise, they filled their lamps with oil, and five were foolish, for they carried empty lamps. The groom came not at the expected time, the virgins were a weary with their watch and slept. At midnight came the cry, Behold, the bridegroom comes. The virgins rose, the wise ones quickly trimmed their lamps and went forth ready to receive the groom. The foolish virgins said, we have no oil, our lamps burn not. They sought to borrow from the wise, who said, We have no oil to spare, go to the merchant men and buy and fill your lamps and then come forth to meet the groom. But while they went to purchase oil, the bridegroom came, the virgins who were ready with their lamps all trimmed went with him to the marriage feast. And when the foolish virgins came the door was shut, and though they knocked and called aloud, the door was opened not. The master of the feast exclaimed, I know you not. And in disgrace the virgins went their way. Again I say to you, and you shall say to them who follow you, Be ready every moment of the day and night, because when you expect him not, the Lord will come. Behold, when he will come with all his messengers of light, the book of life, and that of records shall be opened up the books in which the thought and words and deeds are written down. And every one can read the records he has written for himself, and he will know his doom before the judge shall speak, and this will be the sifting time. According to their records men will find their own. The judge is righteousness, the king of all the earth, and he will separate the multitudes as shepherds separate the sheep and goats. The sheep will find their places on the right, the goats upon the left, and every man will know his place. And then the judge will say, To those upon the right, you blessed of the Father God, come unto your inheritance, which was prepared for you from times of old. You have been servants of the race, and I was hungry and you gave me bread, was thirsty and you gave me drink, was naked and you gave me clothes, was sick, you ministered to me and was in prison and you came to me with words of cheer, I was a stranger and in your homes I found a home. Then will the righteous say, When did we see you hungry, thirsty, sick, imprisoned or a stranger at our gates and ministered to you? And then the judge will say, You served the sons of men, and whatsoever you have done for these, that you have done for me. The judge will say to those upon the left, Depart from me you have not served the sons of men. I was hungry and you gave me naught to eat, was thirsty and you gave me naught to drink, I was a stranger and you drove me from your door, I was imprisoned and was sick, you did not minister to me. Then these will say, when did we thus neglect to care for you? When did we see you hungry, 
thirsty, sick, a stranger or in prison and did not minister to you. And then the judge will say, your life is full of self, you served the self and not your fellow man, and when you slighted one of these, you slighted and neglected me. Then will the righteous have the kingdom and their power, and they who are unrighteous shall go forth to pay their debts, to suffer all that men have suffered at their hands. They who have ears to hear and hearts to understand will comprehend these parables. When he had finished all these parables he said, You know that in two days the great Passover feast will come, and lo, the Son of Man will be betrayed into the hands of wicked men. And he will give his life upon the cross, and men will know that he, the Son of Man, is Son of God. Then Jesus and the Twelve returned to Bethany. Chapter 159 Bar Simon, who was once a leper and was cleansed by Jesus by the sacred word, abode in Bethany. In honor of the Christine Lord he gave a feast, and Lazarus was among the guests, and Ruth and Martha served. And as the guests reclined about the table, Mary took a cruise of rich perfume and poured it out on Jesus' head and feet. And then she knelt and with her hair she wiped his feet. The odor of the rich perfume filled all the room. Now, Judas, always looking at the selfish side of life, exclaimed, For shamed, why did you waste that costly perfume thus? We might have sold it for three hundred pence, and had the money to supply our wants and feed the poor. Now, Judas was the treasurer, and carried all the money of the Christine band. And others said, Why, Mary? what a profligate you are. You should not throw such wealth away. But Jesus said, You men, be still, let her alone, you know not what you say. The poor are with you constantly, at any time you can administer to them, but I will not be with you long. And Mary knows the sadness of the coming days, she has anointed me beforehand for my burial. The gospel of the Christ will everywhere be preached, and he who tells the story of the Christ will tell about this day, and what was done by Mary at this hour will be a sweet memorial to her wherever men abide. And when the feast was over Jesus went with Lazarus to his home. Now, in Jerusalem the priests and Pharisees were busy with their plans to seize the Lord and take his life. The high priest called a council all the wisest men and said, this deed must be accomplished in a secret way. He must be taken when the multitudes are not anear, else we may cause a war, the common people may stand forth in his defense and thus pollute this sacred place with human blood. And what we do, that we must do before the great day of the feast. And Ananias said, I have a plan that will succeed. The twelve with Jesus every day go forth alone to pray and we will find their trysting place, then we can seize the man and bring him here without the knowledge of the multitudes. I know one of the twelve, a man who worships wealth, and for a sum I think that he will lead the way to where the man is wont to pray. And then Caiaphas said, If you will lead the way and bribe the man of whom you speak, to aid in seizing Jesus in a secret place, then we will give to you a hundred silver pieces for your hire. And Ananias said, Tease well. And then he went to Bethany and found the twelve at Simon's house and, calling Judas to the side he said, If you would care to make a sum of money for yourself hear me, the high priest and other rulers in Jerusalem would like to talk with Jesus when alone, that they may know about his claims, and if he proves himself to be the Christ, lo, they will stand in his defense. Now, if you will but lead the way to where your master is tomorrow night that they may send a priest to talk with him alone, there is a sum of silver, thirty pieces, that the priests will give to you, and Judas reasoned with himself, he said, it surely may be well to give the Lord a chance to tell the priests about his claims when he is all alone. And if the priests would do him harm he has the power to disappear and go his way as he has done before and thirty pieces is a goodly sum. And so he said to Ananias, I will lead the way, and by a kiss make known which person is the Lord. Chapter 160 
On Thursday morning Jesus called to him the twelve disciples, and he said to them, This is God's remembrance day, and we will eat the Paschal Supper all alone. And then he said to Peter, James and John, Go now into Jerusalem and there prepare the Pasch. And the disciples said, Where would you have us go to find the place where we may have the feast prepared? And Jesus said, Go by the fountain gate and you will see a man who has a pitcher in his hand. Speak unto him and say, This is the first day of unleavened bread, the Lord would have you set apart your banquet hall where he may eat his last Passover with the twelve, fear not to speak, the man whom you will see is Nicodemus, ruler of the Jews, and yet a man of God. And the disciples went and found the man as Jesus said, and Nicodemus hastened to his home. The banquet hall, an upper room, was set apart, the supper was prepared. Now, in the afternoon the Lord and his disciples went up to Jerusalem and found the feast in readiness. And when the hour had come to eat the feast, the twelve began to strive among themselves, each anxious to secure the honored seats. And Jesus said, My friends, would you contend for self just as the shadows of this night of gloom comes on? There is no honored seat at heaven's feast except for him who humbly takes the lowest seat. And then the Lord arose and took a basin full of water and a towel, and bowing down, he washed the feet of all the twelve and dried them with the towel. He breathed upon them and he said, And may these feet walk in the ways of righteousness forevermore. He came to Peter and was about to wash his feet, and Peter said, Would you wash my feet? And Jesus said, You do not comprehend the meaning of the thing I do, but you will comprehend. And Peter said, My master, no, you shall not stoop to wash my feet. And Jesus said, My friend, if I wash not your feet you have no part with me. And Peter said, Then, O my Lord, wash both my feet, my hands, my head. And Jesus said to him, he who has taken first his bath is clean, and has no need to wash, except his feet. The feet are truly symbols of the understanding of the man, and he who would be clean must, in the living stream of life, wash well his understanding every day. Then Jesus sat with his disciples at the table of the feast and said, Behold the lesson of the hour, you call me master, such I am. If, then, your Lord and Master kneel and wash your feet, should you not wash each other's feet and thus show forth your willingness to serve? You know these things, and if you do them, blessed thrice are you. And then he said, This is an hour when I can truly praise the name of God, for I have greatly wished to eat with you this feast before I pass the veil, for I will eat it not again until anew I eat it with you in the kingdom of our Father God. And then they sung the Hebrew song of praise that Jews were wont to sing before the feast. And then they ate the Pasch and as they ate, the master said, Behold, for one of you will turn away this night and will betray me into wicked hands. And the disciples were amazed at what he said, they looked into each other's face in wonderment, they all exclaimed, Lord, is it I? And Peter said to John, who sat beside the Lord, to whom does he refer? And John put forth his hand and touched the master's hand and said, Which one of us is so depraved as to betray his Lord? And Judas said, Lord, is it I? And Jesus said, He is the one who now has put his hand with mine into the dish. They looked, and Judas' hand was with the hand of Jesus in the dish. And Jesus said, The prophets cannot fail. The Son of Man must be betrayed, but woe to him who shall betray his Lord. And from the table Judas rose at once, his hour had come. And Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are to do. And Judas went his way. And when the Pasch was done the Lord with the eleven sat a while in silent thought. Then Jesus took a loaf of bread that had been broken not and said, This loaf is symbol of my body and the bread is symbol of the bread of life, and as I break this loaf, so shall my flesh be broken as a pattern for the sons of men, for men must freely give their bodies up in willing sacrifice for other men. 
and as you eat this bread, so shall you eat the bread of life, and never die. And then he gave to each a piece of bread to eat. And then he took a cup of wine and said, Blood is the life, this is the life blood of the grape, it is the symbol of the life of him who gives his life for men. And as you drink this wine, if you shall drink in faith, you drink the life of Christ. And then he supped and passed the cup, and the disciples supped, and Jesus said, This is the feast of life, the great Passover of the Son of Man, the supper of the Lord, and you shall often eat the bread and drink the wine. From henceforth shall this bread be called remembrance bread, this wine shall be remembrance wine, and when you eat this bread and drink this wine remember me. Chapter 161 Now, after Judas had gone forth to meet the emissaries of the priests and to betray his Lord, the Master said, The hour has come, the Son of Man will now be glorified. My little children, I am with you yet a little while, soon you will seek me and will find me not, for where I go you cannot come. I give to you a new command, as I love you and give my life for you so shall you love the world, and give your life to save the world. Love one another as you love yourselves, and then the world will know that you are sons of God, disciples of the Son of Man whom God has glorified. And Peter said, Lord, where you go there I will go, for I would lay my life down for my Lord. And Jesus said, Boast not of bravery, my friend, you are not strong enough tonight to follow me. Now, Peter, here. You will deny me thrice before the cock shall crow tomorrow morn. And then he looked upon the eleven and said, You all will be estranged from me this night. The prophet said, Lo, he will smite the shepherd of the sheep, the sheep will flee and hide away. But after I am risen from the dead, lo, you will come again, and I will go before you into Galilee. And Peter said, My Lord, though every other man forsake you I will not. And Jesus said, O Simon Peter, lo, your zeal is greater than your fortitude. Behold, for Satan cometh up to sift you as a pan of wheat, but I have prayed that in your faith you shall not fail, that after trial you may stand a tower of strength. And the disciples all exclaimed, There is no power on earth that can estrange, or cause us to deny our Lord. And Jesus said, Let not your hearts be sad, you all believe in God, believe in me. Behold, for there are many mansions in my fatherland. If there were not I would have told you so. I will go unto my fatherland, and I will prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be. But now you do not know the way unto my fatherland. And Thomas said, We do not know where you intend to go, how could we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life, I manifest the Christ of God. No man can reach my fatherland except he comes with me through Christ. If you had known and comprehended me, then you would know my Father God. And Philip said, Show us the Father and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said, Have I been with you all these years and still you know me not? He who has seen the Son has seen the Father has revealed himself. Lo, I have told you many times that what I speak and what I do are not the words and works of man, they are the words of God, who lives in me and I in him. Hear me, you faithful men, he who believes in me and in my Father God shall say and do what I have said and done. Yea, more, he shall do greater works than I have ever done because I go to him whose works we do, and then I can reach forth my hand in helpfulness. And in my name, through Christ, you may petition God and he will grant you your request. Do you believe what I have said? Yes, you believe, and if you love the Christ and follow me then you will keep my words. I am the vine, you are the branches of the vine, my father is the husbandman. The branches that are worthless, bearing naught but leaves, the husbandman will cut away and cast into the fire to be burned. And he will prune the branches that bear fruit that they may yield abundantly. The branch cannot bear fruit if separated from the vine, 
and you cannot bear fruit when separate from me. Abide in me, and do the works that God, through me, has taught you how to do, and you will bear much fruit, and God will honor you as he has honored me. And now I go my way, but I will pray my Father God and he will send another comforter to you, who will abide with you. Behold, this comforter of God, the holy breath, is one with God, but she is one the world cannot receive because it sees her not, it knows her not. But you know her, and will know her, because she will abide within your soul. I will not leave you desolate, but in the Christ, which is the love of God made manifest to men, I will be with you all the way. Chapter 162 Now, John was deeply grieved because the Master said, I go away, and where I go you cannot come. He wept and said, Lord, I would go with you through every trial and to death. And Jesus said, And you shall follow me through trials and through death, but now you cannot go where I will go, but you shall come. And Jesus spoke again unto the eleven and said, Grieve not because I go away, for it is best that I should go away. If I go not the Comforter will not come to you. These things I speak while with you in the flesh, but when the Holy Breath shall come in power, lo, she will teach you more and more, and bring to your remembrance all the words that I have said to you. There are a multitude of things yet to be said, things that this age cannot receive, because it cannot comprehend. But, lo, I say, before the great day of the Lord shall come, the Holy Breath will make all mysteries known the mysteries of the soul, of life, of death, of immortality the oneness of a man with every other man and with his God. Then will the world be led to truth, and man will be the truth. When she has come, the Comforter, she will convince the world of sin, and of the truth of what I speak, and of the judgment of the just, and then the Prince of carnal life will be cast out. And when the Comforter shall come I need not intercede for you, for you will stand approved, and God will know you then as he knows me. The hour has come when you will weep, the wicked will rejoice, because I go away, but I will come again, and all your sorrows shall be turned to joy, yea, verily, you will rejoice as one who welcomes back a brother from the dead. And the disciples said, Our Lord, speak not in proverbs any more, speak plainly unto us, we know that you are wise and know all things. What is the meaning of your words, I go away, but I will come again? And Jesus said, The hour is come when you will all be scattered forth, and every man will be afraid, will flee to save his life and leave me alone, yet I will not be all alone, my Father God is with me all the way. And wicked men will take me to the judgment seat of wicked men and in the presence of the multitudes I will give up my life, a pattern for the sons of men. But I will rise again and come to you. These things I speak that you may be established in the faith when they shall come to pass. And you shall bear the buffetings of men, and follow in the thorny path I tread. Be not dismayed, be of good cheer, lo, I have overcome the world, and you shall overcome the world. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, My Father God, the hour has come, the Son of Man must now be lifted from the earth, and may he falter not that all the world may know the power of sacrifice, for as I give my life for men, lo, men must give their lives for other men. I came to do thy will, O God, and in the sacred name, the Christ is glorified, that men may see the Christ as life, as light, as truth. And through the Christ become themselves the life, the light, the love, the truth. I praise thy name because of these whom thou hast given me for they have honoured thee and they will honour thee, and none of them are lost, and none are gone away, except the blinded son of carnal life, who hath gone forth to sell his Lord. O God, forgive this man because he knows not what he does. And now, O God, I come to thee, and am no more in mortal life, keep thou these men to whom I have made known thy wisdom and thy love. As they believe in me, and in the words I speak, May all the worlds believe in them and in the words they speak. As thou hast sent me forth into the world, 
so I have sent them forth. I pray that thou wouldst honor them as thou hast honored me. I do not pray that thou wouldst take them from the world, but that they may be guarded from the evil of the world, and not be subject to temptations that are too great for them to bear. They once were of the world, but now are of the world no more, as I am of the world no more. Thy word is truth, O God, and by thy word let them be sanctified. I do not pray for these alone, O God, I also pray for all who will believe on me, and will accept the Christ because of what they do and say, that they may all be one. As I am one with thee, and thou art one with me, may they be one with us, that all the world may know that thou hast sent me forth to do thy will, and that thou lovest them as thou hast ever loved me. When Jesus had thus said, they sung the Jewish song of praise, and then arose and went their way. Chapter 163 As Jesus and the eleven went out, a Roman guard approached and said, All hail! Is one of you the man from Galilee? And Peter said, We all are men from Galilee, whom do you seek? The guard replied, I seek for Jesus, who is called the Christ. And Jesus answered, Here am I. The guard spoke out and said, I do not come in an official way, I bear to you a message from the governor. Jerusalem is all alive with vengeful Jews who swear that they will take your life, and Pilate would confer with you, and he would have you come to him without delay. And Jesus said to Peter and the rest, Go to the vale, and by the Kidron wait for me, and I will go alone and see the governor. And Jesus went up with the God, and when he reached the palace, Pilate met him at the gate and said, Young man, I have a word to say that may be well for you. I have observed your works and words three years and more, and I have often stood in your defense when your own countrymen would fain have stoned you as a criminal. But now the priests, the scribes and Pharisees have stirred the common people to a stage of frenzied wantonness and cruelty and they intend to take your life. Because, they say, that you have sworn to tear their temple down, to change the laws that Moses gave, to exile Pharisee and priest and seat yourself upon a throne. And they aver that you are fully in league with Rome. The streets of all Jerusalem are filled this moment with a horde of madmen all intent to shed your blood. There is no safety for you but in flight. Wait not until the morning sun. You know the way to reach the border of this cursed land. I have a little band of guards, well horsed and armed, and they will take you out beyond the reach of harm. You must not tarry here, young man, you must arise and go. And Jesus said, A noble prince has Caesar in his pilot Pontius, and from the point of carnal man your words are seasoned with the wise man's salt but from the point of Christ your words are foolishness. The coward flees when danger comes, but he who comes to seek and save the lost must give his life in willing sacrifice for those he comes to seek and save. Before the Pask has been consumed, lo, all this nation will be cursed by shedding blood of innocence, and even now the murderers are at the door. And Pilate said, It shall not be the sword of Rome will be unsheathed to save your life. And Jesus said, Nay, Pilate, nay, there are no armies large enough in all the world to save my life. And Jesus bade the governor farewell, and went his way, but Pilate sent a double guard with him lest he should fall into the hands of those who were alert to take his life. But in a moment Jesus disappeared, the guard saw him no more and in a little while he reached the brook of Kidron where the eleven were. Now, just beyond the brook there was an orchard and a home where one, Masalian, lived, where Jesus oft had been. Masalian was his friend, and he believed that Jesus was the Christ that Jewish prophets long ago had said would come. Now, in the orchard was a sacred knoll, Masalian called the place Gethsemane. The night was dark but in the orchard it was doubly dark and Jesus bade the eight disciples tarry by the brook, while he, with Peter, James and John went to Gethsemane to pray. They sat beneath an olive tree, and Jesus opened up the mysteries of life to Peter, James and John. 
He said, The Spirit of Eternity is one um manifest, and this is God the Father, God the Mother, God the Son in one. In life of manifests the one became the three, and God the Father is the God of might, and God the Mother is omniscient God, and God the Son is love. And God the Father is the power of heaven and earth, and God the Mother is the holy breath, the thought of heaven and earth, and God the Son, the only Son, is Christ, and Christ is love. I came as man to manifest this love to men, as man I have been subject unto all the trials and temptations of the human race, but I have overcome the flesh, with all its passions and its appetites. What I have done all men can do. And I am now about to demonstrate the power of man to conquer death, for every man is God made flesh. I will lay down my life, and I will take it up again, that you may know the mysteries of life of death, and of the resurrection of the dead. I lay me down in flesh, but I will rise in spirit form with power to manifest myself so mortal eyes can see. So in a trinity of days I will show forth the all of life, the all of death, the meaning of the resurrection of the dead. And what I do all men can do. And you, my three, who constitute the inner circle of the Church of Christ, will show to men the attributes of all the gods. And Peter shall make known the power of God, and James shall show thought of God, and John shall demonstrate the love of God. Be not afraid of men, for you have been sent forth to do the mighty works of God the Father, God the Mother, God the Son. And all the powers of carnal life cannot destroy your life until your work is done. I leave you now and I will go out in the darkness all alone and talk with God. By sorrow I am overwhelmed I leave you here to watch with me. Then Jesus went three hundred cubits toward the east, and fell upon his face and prayed, he said, My God! My God! Is there a way by which I may escape the horrors of the coming hours? My human flesh shrinks back, my soul is firm, so not my will, but thine, O God! be done. In agony he prayed, the strain upon the human form was great, his veins were burst asunder, and his brow was bathed in blood. And then he went back to the three, and found them all asleep, he said, O oh Simon, Simon, do you sleep? Could you not watch with me a single hour? Be vigilant, and watch and pray that your temptations be not too great for you to bear. I know the spirit is alert and willing, but the flesh is weak. And then he went again and prayed, O oh Father, God! If I must drink this bitter cup, give me the strength of soul, for not my will, but thine be done. And then he went again to his disciples, Lo, he found them still asleep. He wakened them and said to James, have you been sleeping while your master has been wrestling with the greatest foe of men? Could you not watch with me a single hour? And then he went again and prayed. O oh God, I yield to thee, thy will be done. And then again he went back to the three, and still they slept. He said to John. With all the love you have for me, could you not watch with me a single hour? And then he said, It is enough. The hour has come, and my betrayer is at hand, arise and let us go. And when they came again to Kidron, lo, the eight disciples were asleep, and Jesus said, You men, awake, behold, for the betrayer of the Son of Man is come. Chapter 164 The Lord with the eleven were in the orchard of Masalian. And as they talked they saw a band of men with lanterns and with swords and clubs approaching them. And Jesus said, Behold the emissaries of the evil one. And Judas leads the way. And the disciples said, Lord, let us flee to save our lives. But Jesus said, Why should we flee to save our lives when this is the fulfillment of the words of prophets and of seers? And Jesus went alone to meet the men. And as they came he said, Why are you here, you men? Whom do you seek? And they replied, We seek the man from Galilee. We seek for Jesus, one who calls himself the Christ. And Jesus answered, 
here am I. And then he raised his hands and with a mighty thought he brought the ethers to the state of light, and all the orchard was aglow with light. The frenzied men were driven back and many fled and tarried not until they reached Jerusalem, and others fell upon their faces on the ground. The bravest men, and they with hardest hearts, remained, and when the light had paled, the Lord again inquired, Whom do you seek? And Ananias said, we seek the man from Galilee, we seek for Jesus, he who calls himself the Christ. And Jesus answered him and said, I told you once before, but now I tell you once again that I am he. By Ananias, Judas stood, but in a moment he had gone and coming up behind the Lord he said, My Lord, and then he kissed him as a sign that he was Jesus whom they sought. And Jesus said, Do you, Iscariot? come and thus betray your master with a kiss. This thing must need be done, but woe to him who does betray his lord. Your carnal greed has seared your conscience and you know not what you do, but in a little time your conscience will assert itself, and in remorse, lo, you will close your span and take your life. Then the eleven came, laid hold of Judas and would have done him harm, but Jesus said, You must not harm this man. You have no right to judge this man, his conscience is his judge, will sentence him and he will execute himself. And then the mob led on by Malchus, servant of Caiaphas, laid hold of Jesus, and was binding him with chains. And Jesus said, Why do you come in dead of night with swords and clubs to take me in this sacred place? Have I not spoken in the public places of Jerusalem? Have I not healed you sick, and opened up your blinded eyes, and made your lame to walk, your deaf to hear? You could have found me any day. And now you try to bind me down with chains, what are these chains but links of reeds? And then he raised his hands, the chains were broken and they fell to earth. And Mulchus thought the Lord would flee to save his life, and with a club he fain would smite him in the face. But Peter had a sword, and rushing up he smote the man and wounded him. But Jesus said, Stay, Peter, stay, put up your sword, you are not called to fight with swords and clubs. Whoever wields the sword shall perish by the sword. I do not need protection by the sons of men, for I could call this moment and a legion, yea, twelve legions of the messengers of God, would come and stand in my defense but then it is not well. And then he said to Mulchus, Man, I would not have you harmed. And then he laid his hand upon the wound that Peter made, and it was healed. Then Jesus said, Be not concerned lest I should tear myself away from you and flee to save my life. I have no wish to save my life, do with me as you wish. And then the mob rushed up to seize the eleven to take them back to stand for trial as the aides of Jesus in his crimes. But the disciples, every one of them, deserted Jesus, and they fled to save their lives. Now, John was last to flee, the mob laid hold of him and tore his garments all to shreds, but he escaped in nakedness. Masali Ann saw the man, and took him to his home and gave him other clothes and then he followed after them who led the Lord away. And Peter was ashamed because of his weak cowardice, and when he was himself again he joined with John and followed close behind the mob, and came into Jerusalem. Chapter 165 Caiaphas was the high priest of the Jews, the mob led Jesus to his palace hall. The court had been convened and all the galleries were packed with scribes and Pharisees already sworn as witnesses against the Lord. The maid who kept the palace door knew John and this disciple asked that he and Peter be admitted to the hall. The maid permitted them to enter in, and John went in, but Peter was afraid and tarried in the outer court. The woman said to Peter, as he stood beside the door, Are you a follower of this man from Galilee? And Peter said, no, I am not. The men who had brought Jesus to the hall sat by a fire in the outer court, because the night was cool, and Peter sat with them. 
Another maid who waited in the place saw Peter and she said to him, You surely are from Galilee, your speech is that of Galilee, you are a follower of this man. And Peter said, I know not what you mean, I do not even know this man. And then a servant of Caiaphas, one of those who seized the Lord and brought him to the court, saw Peter and he said to him, Did I not see you in the orchard of Masalian with this seditious Nazarene? I'm sure I did, and you are one of those who followed him. Then Peter rose and stamped upon the floor, and swore by every sacred thing, that he knew not the criminal. Now, John was standing near and when he heard the words and knew that Peter had denied his Lord, he looked at him in sheer astonishment. Just then a cock crew loud beneath the court, and Peter called to mind the words the Lord had said, Before the cock shall crow tomorrow morn you will deny me thrice. And Peter's conscience smote him heavily, and he went out into the night and wept. Caiaphas sat in state, before him stood the man from Galilee. Caiaphas said, You people of Jerusalem, who is the man that you accuse? They answered, In the name of every loyal Jew we do accuse this man from Galilee, this Jesus, who assumes to be our king, as enemy of God and man. Caiaphas said to Jesus, Man, you are permitted now to speak and tell about your doctrines and your claims. And Jesus said, You priest of carnal man, why do you ask about my words and works? Lo, I have taught the multitudes in every public place, I have restored your sick to health, have caused your deaf to hear, your lame to walk, and I have brought your dead to life again. My works have not been done in secret place but in your public halls and thoroughfares. Go ask the people, who have not been bought with gold or glittering promises, to tell about my words and works. When Jesus had thus said a Jewish guard came up and smote him in the face and said, How dare you speak thus unto him, the high priest of the Jews? And Jesus said, If I have spoken falsely bear witness unto what I say, if I have told the truth why did you smite me thus? And then Caiaphas said, What are you, do in a legal way, for we must answer to a higher court for everything we do or say. Let the accusers of this man present their charges in a legal form. And then Caiaphas' scribe stood forth and said, I have the accusations here in legal form, the charges made and signed by scribes and priests and Pharisees. Caiaphas said, Be still, you men, and hear the charges read. The scribe took up a roll and read, To the Sanhedrim of the Jews and to Caiaphas the high priest, most honored men. The highest duty man can render is to his nation and his own is to protect them from their foes. The people of Jerusalem are conscious that a mighty foe is in their very midst. A man named Jesus has come forth and claims to be heir to David's throne. As an impostor he is foe, and in the name of every loyal Jew we here submit these charges which we are competent to prove, at first, he blasphemes God, he says he is son of God that he and God are one, and he profanes our holy days by healing, and doing other work upon the Sabbath days, and he proclaims himself the king, successor of our David and our Solomon, and he declares that he will tear our temple down and build it up again in form more glorious in three days, and he declares that he will drive the people from Jerusalem, as he drove out the merchants from the temple court and bring to occupy our sacred hills a tribe of men that know not God, and he aver that every doctor, scribe and Pharisee and Sadducee, shall go in exile, and shall never more return, and to these charges we do set our hands and seals. Annas. Simon. Arbinadab. Arias. Jewish. Arzeniah. Hezekiah. Now, when the scribe had read the charges, all the people called for blood, they said, Let such a wretch be stoned, let him be crucified. Caiaphas said, You men of Israel, do you sustain the charges of these men? A hundred men who had been bribed, stood forth to testify, they swore that every charge was true. Caiaphas said to Jesus, Man, have you a word to say? 
Are you the Son of God? And Jesus said, So you have said, and then he said no more. Chapter 166 When Jesus would not speak, Caiaphas stood before the Jewish mob and said, Bind fast the prisoner, for he must go before the great Sanhedrin of the Jews to answer for his life. We cannot execute a criminal until our findings have been verified by this, the highest council of the Jews. As soon as it was day the highest council of the people met, the Lord and his accusers stood before the bar. Caiaphas was the chief, he rose and said, Let the accusers of this man from Galilee bring forth their charges and their evidence. Caiaphas' scribe stood forth and read the charges and the names of those who had accused the man from Galilee. And all the witnesses were made to stand and testify before the council of the Jews. And then the lawyers weighed the evidence, and Nicodemus stood among the men who plead. He raised his hands and said, Let justice now be done, though every scribe and Pharisee and priest and Sadducee, as well as Jesus, the accused, be judged a liar. If we can prove this Jesus to be foe and traitor to our laws and land, let him be judged a criminal and suffer for his crimes. If it be proved that these who testify are perjurers in the sight of God and man, then let the man from Galilee go free. And then he brought the testimonies of the witnesses before the judges of the law, no two of them agreed, in heat of passion, or for gain, the men had testified. The council would have gladly judged that Jesus was a criminal and sentence him to death, but in the face of all the evidence they were afraid. And then Caiaphas said, you man from Galilee, before the living God, I now command that you shall answer me, are you the Christ, the Son of God? And Jesus said, If I would answer, yes, you would not hear, nor yet believe, if I would answer, no, I would be like your witnesses, and stand a liar in the sight of man and God. But this I say, the time will come when you will see the Son of Man upon the throne of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And then Caiaphas rent his clothes and said, Have you not heard enough? Did you not hear his vile blasphemous words? What further need have we of witnesses? What shall we do with him? The people said, Put him to death. And then the mob rushed up and spit into his face, and struck him with their hands. And then they bound a cloth about his eyes and smote him in the face and said, You are a prophet. Tell us who it was who smote you in the face. And Jesus answered not and like a lamb before his shearer he, the man from Galilee, resisted not. Caiaphas said, We cannot put a man to death until the Roman ruler shall confirm the sentence of this court, so take this criminal away and Pilate will endorse what we have done. And then was Jesus dragged along the way up to the palace of the Roman governor. Chapter 167 Into the palace of the Roman governor the Jews would enter not lest they become defiled and be unworthy to attend the feast, but they led Jesus to the palace court, and Pilate met them there. And Pilate said, Why this commotion in the early day? What is your prayer? The Jews replied, We bring before you one, an evil and seditious man. He has been tried before the highest council of the Jews and has been proven traitor to our laws, our state and to the government of Rome. We pray that you will sentence him to death upon the cross. And Pilate said, Why do you bring him unto? Go to, and judge him yourselves. You have a law, and by the sanction of the Roman law, you have a right to judge and right to execute. The Jews replied, we have no right to execute a man upon the cross, and since this man is traitor to Tiberius, our counselors believe that he should meet the most humiliating death the death upon the cross. But Pilate said, No man can be found guilty of a crime by Roman law until the testimony all is in, and the accused has been permitted to defend himself, so I will take your bill of charges, with the evidence you have, and judge by Roman law. The Jews had made a copy of the accusations in the language of the Roman court, and they had added to the bill, We charge that Jesus is an enemy of Rome, 
that he demands that men shall pay no tribute to Tiberius. And Pilate took the bill, his guards led Jesus up the steps into the palace hall. And Jesus stood before the Roman governor, and Pilate read to him the charges of the Jews, and said, What is your answer to this bill? These charges, are they true or false? And Jesus said, Why should I plead before an earthly court? The charges have been verified by perjured men, what need I say? Yes, I am king, but carnal men cannot behold the king, nor see the kingdom of the God, it is within. If I had been king as carnal man is king, my servants would have stood in my defense, and I would not have willingly surrendered to the minions of the Jewish law. I have no testimony from the sons of men. God is my witness, and my words and deeds bear witness to the truth, and every man who comprehends the truth will hearken to my words, and in his soul give witness unto me. And Pilate said, What is the truth? And Jesus said, truth is the God who knows. It is the changeless one. The holy breath is truth, she changes not and cannot pass away. And Pilate went again unto the Jews and said, This man is guilty of no crime, I cannot sentence him to death. And then the Jews grew boisterous, they cried aloud and said, Our counsel surely knows. The wisest men of all the land have found him guilty of a score of crimes. He would pervert the nation of the Jews, would overthrow the Roman rule and make himself the king. He is a culprit come from Galilee, he must be crucified. And Pilate said, If Jesus is from Galilee he is a subject of the governor of Galilee, who should be judge. Now, Herod had come down from Galilee and with his suite was in Jerusalem. And Pilate sent to him the Lord in chains, he also sent a copy of the charges and of the testimonies of the Jews and asked that he would pass in judgment on the case. And Herod said, I have heard much about this man and I am pleased to see him in my court. And then he asked the Lord about his claims, about his doctrines and his aims. And Jesus answered not a word, and Herod was enraged, he said, Do you insult the ruler of the land by answering not? And then he called his guards and said, Take you this man and torture him until he answers me. The guards took Jesus and they smote him, mocked him, wrapped him in a royal robe. They made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a broken reed into his hands, and then they said deridingly, All hail, the royal king. Where are your subjects and your friends? But Jesus answered not a word. Then Herod sent him back to Pilate with this note of courtesy, Most worthy counsellor of Rome, I have examined all the charges and the testimonies that you sent to me regarding this seditious man from Galilee, and while I might adjudge him guilty of the crimes as charged, I yield to you my rights as judge, because you are superior to me in power. I will approve of any judgment you may render in this case. Now, Pilate and the Tetrarch had been foes. But the experience of this hour destroyed their enmity and they were friends in after days. When Jesus had been brought again to Pilate's court, the Roman governor stood forth before the accusers of the Lord and said, I cannot find this Nazarene to be a criminal as charged, there is no evidence that he should suffer death, so I will scourge him well and let him go. The Jews cried angrily, It is not meet that such a dangerous man should live he must be crucified. Then Pilate said, I bid you wait a little time. And then he went into an inner room and sat in silent thought. And as he mused his wife, a godly woman, chosen from among the Gauls, came in and said, I pray you, Pilate, hearken unto me, beware of what you do this hour. Touch not this man from Galilee, he is a holy man. If you should scourge this man you scourge the Son of God. Last night I saw it all in vision far too vivid to be set aside as idle dream. I saw this man walk on the waters of the sea, I heard him speak and calm an angry storm, I saw him flying with the wings of light, I saw Jerusalem in blood, I saw the statues of the Caesars fall, I wore a veil before the sun, 
and day was dark as night. The earth on which I stood was shaken like a reed before the wind. I tell you, Pilate, if you bathe your hands in this man's blood then you may dread the frowns of great Tiberius, and the curses of the senators of Rome. And then she left, and Pilate wept. Chapter 168 A superstitious people are the Jews. They have a faith that they have borrowed from the idol worshippers of other lands, that at the end of every year, they may heap all their sins upon the head of some man set apart to bear their sins. The man becomes a scapegoat for the multitudes, and they believe that when they drive him forth into the wilds, or into foreign lands, they are released from sin. So every spring before the feast they chose a prisoner from the prisons of the land, and by a form their own, they fain would make him bear their sins away. Among the Jewish prisoners in Jerusalem were three who were the leaders of a vile, seditious band, who had engages in thefts and murders and rapine, and had been sentenced to be crucified. Barabbas bar Jazia was among the men who were to die, but he was rich and he had bought of priests the boon to be scapegoat for the people at the coming feast, and he was anxiously in waiting for his hour to come. Now, Pilate thought to turn this superstition to account to save the Lord, and so he went again before the Jews and said, You men of Israel, according to my custom I will release to you today a prisoner who shall bear you sins away. This man you drive into the wilds or into foreign lands, and you have asked me to release Barabbas, who has been proven guilty of the murder of a score of men. Now, hear me men, let Jesus be released and let Barabbas pay his debt upon the cross, then you can send this Jesus to the wilds and hear no more of him. At what the ruler said the people were enraged, and they began to plot to tear the Roman palace down and drive in exile Pilate and his household and his guards. When Pilate was assured that civil war would follow if he heeded not the wishes of the mob, he took a bowl of water and in the presence of the multitude he washed his hands and said, This man whom you accuse is son of the most holy gods, and I proclaim my innocence. If you would shed his blood, his blood is on your hands and not on mine. And then the Jews exclaimed, and let his blood be on our hands and on our children's hands. And Pilate trembled like a leaf, in fear. Barabbas he released and as the Lord stood forth before the mob the ruler said, Behold your king. And would you put to death your king? The Jews replied, He is no king, we have no king but great Tiberius. Now, Pilate would not give consent that Roman soldiers should imbue their hands in blood of innocence, and so the chief priests and the Pharisees took counsel what to do with Jesus, who was called the Christ. Caiaphas said, We cannot crucify this man, he must be stoned to death and nothing more. And then the rabble said, Make haste. Let him be stoned. And then they led him forth toward the hill beyond the city's gates where criminals were put to death. The rabble could not wait until they reached the place of skulls. As soon as they had passed the city's gate, they rushed upon him, smote him with their hands, they spit upon him, stoned and he fell upon the ground. And one, a man of God, stood forth and said, Isaiah said, He shall be bruised for our transgressions and by his stripes we shall be healed. As Jesus lay all bruised and mangled on the ground a Pharisee called out, Stay, stay you men. Behold, the guards of Herod come and they will crucify this man. And there beside the city's gate they found Barabbas's cross, and then the frenzied mob cried out, Let him be crucified. Caiaphas and the other ruling Jews came forth and gave consent. And then they lifted Jesus from the ground and at the point of swords they drove him on. A man named Simon, a friend of Jesus, was a near the scene and since the bruised and wounded Jesus could not bear his cross, they laid it on the shoulders of this man and made him bear it on to Calvary. Chapter 169 Now, Judas who betrayed his Lord, was with the mob, 
but all the time he thought that Jesus would assert his power and demonstrate the strength of God that he possessed, and strike to earth the fiendish multitudes and free himself, but when he saw his master on the ground and bleeding from a score of wounds, he said, O oh God, what have I done? I have betrayed the Son of God, the curse of God will rest upon my soul. And then he turned and ran with haste until he reached the temple door, he found the priests, who gave to him the thirty silver pieces to betray the Lord, and said, Take back your bribe, it is the cost price of my soul, I have betrayed the Son of God. The priests replied, That matters not to us. Then Judas threw the silver on the floor, and, bowed with grief, he went away, and on a ledge beyond the city's walls he hanged himself and died. In time the fastenings gave way, his body fell into the Henan Vale and after many days they found it there a shapeless mass. The rulers could not put the price of blood into the treasury, and so they took the thirty silver pieces with which they bought a potter's field, where they might bury those who had no rights to lie within their sacred grounds and there they put the body of the man who sold his Lord. Chapter 170 The Jewish mob pushed on toward Calvary and as they went the Marys, Miriam, and other women not a few, were close beside the Lord. They wept aloud. When Jesus saw them weeping and lamenting thus he said, Weep not for me, for though I go away, go through the gateway of the cross, yet on the next day of the sun, Lift up your hearts, for I will meet you at the sepulchre. The great procession came to Calvary. The Roman soldiers had already bound the two state prisoners to the cross. They were not nailed, but simply bound. Four soldiers of the Roman guard that Herod brought from Galilee were called to execute the orders of the court. These were the men who had been set apart to torture Jesus and secure from him confession of his guilt. These were the men who scourged him, put a crown of thorns upon his head, a broken reed into his hands, and wrapped him in a royal robe, and bowed in mockery, before him as a king. These soldiers took the Lord and stripped him, laid him on the cross and would have bound him there with cords, but this would not suffice. The cruel Jews were near with hammer and with nails, they cried, not cords, but nails, drive fast the nails and hold him to the cross. And then the soldiers took the nails and drove them through his feet and hands. They offered him a sedative to drink, a draught of vinegar and myrrh, but he refused to drink the draught. The soldiers had prepared a place in which to plant Barabbas' cross between the other criminals and here they raised the cross of Jesus, who was called the Christ, and then the soldiers and the mob sat down to watch him die. And Jesus said, My Father God, forgive these men, they know not what they do. Now, Pilate had prepared a tablet to be placed upon the cross on which was written in the tongues of Hebrew, Latin and Greek these words of truth, Jesus the Christ, King of the Jews. And this was placed upon the cross. The priests were angered when they read these words upon the tablet of the cross. And then they prayed that Pilate would not say, He is the Christ, King of the Jews, but say, He claims to be the Christ, King of the Jews. But Pilate said, What I have written, I have written, let it stand. The Jewish multitudes who saw the Lord upon the cross were wild with joy, they said, All hail, fake king. You who would tear the temple down and in three days would build it up again, why don't you save yourself? If you are Christ, the Son of God, come from the cross, then all men will believe. The priests and scribes and Pharisees looked on the scene and scoffed, they said, He rescued others from the grave, why doesn't he save himself? The Jewish soldiers and the Roman guards who came from Galilee were loud in mocking and deriding him. One of the other men upon the cross joined in the mockery, he said, If you are Christ, you have the power, just speak the word, and save yourself and me. The other man upon the cross rebuked the man, he said, You wretch! Have you no fear of God? 
This man is innocent of any crime while you and I are guilty and are paying up the debts we owe. And then he said to Jesus, Lord, I know thy kingdom comes, the kingdom that the world can never comprehend, and when thou comest on the clouds of heaven, remember me. And Jesus said, Behold, for I will meet you in the realm of souls this day. Now, Standing near unto the cross were many women from Judea and from Galilee. Among them were the mother of the Lord and Miriam, and Mary, mother of the two apostles, James and John, and Mary Magdalene, and Martha, Ruth and Mary, and Salome. When Jesus saw his mother and the singer Miriam standing close beside the cross and John Ania, he said to John, In your most tender care I leave my mother and my sister Miriam. And John replied, While they shall live my home shall be the home of your thrice-blessed mother and your sister Miriam. According to a custom of the Jews, to those who were the executioners of law and took the lives of criminals, belonged the garments of the criminals. So when the Lord was crucified, the Roman guards divided up among themselves the garments of the Lord. But when they found his coat it was a seamless coat and highly prized. For it the guards cast lots, and thus determined who should have the prize. And thus the scripture was fulfilled, which said, And they divided all my robes among themselves, and for my vesture they cast lots. Chapter 171 Now, at the sixth hour of the day, although the sun was at its height, the day became as dark as night, and men sought lanterns and they builded fires upon the hills that they might see. And when the sun refused to shine and darkness came, the Lord exclaimed, Heloi! Heloi! Lama Sabachthani, thou son, thou son, why hast thou forsaken me? The people did not understand the words he spoke, they thought he spoke the name Elijah and they said, He calls upon Elijah in his hour of need, now we will see if he will come. And Jesus said, I thirst. A Roman soldier dipped a sponge in vinegar and myrrh, and placed it to his lips. Now, at the ninth hour of the day the earth began to quake, and in the darkness of that sunless day, a flood of golden light appeared above the cross, and from the light a voice was heard which said, Lo, it is done. And Jesus said, My Father God, into thy hands I give my soul. A Roman soldier in compassion said, This agony is all too great relief shall come. And with a spear he pierced his heart and it was done, the Son of Man was dead. And then the earth was shocked again, the city of Jerusalem rocked to and fro, the hills were rent and tombs were opened up, and people thought they saw the dead arise and walk the streets. The temple quivered and the veil between the sanctuary and the holy place was rent in twain, and consternation reigned through all the place. The Roman guard who watched the body on the cross exclaimed, This surely was the Son of God who died. And then the people hurried down from Calvary. The priests, the Pharisees and scribes were filled with fear. They sought the cover of their synagogues and homes and said, Behold, the wrath of God. The great day of the Jewish Pasch was near, and Jews could not by law permit a criminal to hang upon the cross upon the Sabbath day. And so they prayed that Pilate would remove the bodies of the men that had been crucified. And Pilate sent his guards to Calvary to note if all the men were dead. And when the guards were gone, two aged Jews came to the palace door to see the governor, and they were members of the highest council of the Jews, yet they believed that Jesus was a prophet sent from God. The one was Rabbi Joseph, the Arimathean counselor and he was just and loved the law of God. And Nicodemus was the other one who came. These men fell down at Pilate's feet and prayed that they might take the body of the Nazarene and lay it in a tomb. And Pilate gave consent. Now, Joseph had prepared a costly mixture to embalm the body of the Lord, about a hundred pounds of aloes and of myrrh, and this they took and hastened out to Calvary. And when the guards returned they said, The Nazarene is dead, the malefactors are alive. And Pilate told the guards to go and smite the living men so they would die, and then to give their bodies to the flames, 
but give the body of the Nazarene to rabbis who would call for it. The soldiers did as Pilate said. The rabbis came and took away the body of the Lord and when they had prepared it with the spices they had bought, they laid it in the new-made tomb that had been made for Joseph in a solid rock. And then they rolled a stone up to the sepulchre. The priests were fearful lest the friends of Jesus would go forth at night and take away the body of the Nazarene, and then report that he had risen from the dead, as he had said, and they requested that the governor would send his soldiers to the tomb to guard the body of the dead. But Pilate said, I will not send a Roman guard, but you have Jewish soldiers and may send a hundred men with a century on to guard the tomb. And then they sent a hundred soldiers out to guard the tomb. Chapter 172 The tomb in which they laid the body of the Lord was in a garden, rich with flowers, the garden of Siloam, and Joseph's home was near. Before the watch began Caiaphas sent a company of priests out to the garden of Siloam that they might be assured that Jesus' body was within the tomb. They rolled away the stone, they saw the body there, and then they placed the stone again before the door. And Pilate sent his scribe who placed upon the stone the seal of Rome, in such a way that he who moved the stone would break the seal. To break this Roman seal meant death to him who broke the seal. The Jewish soldiers all were sworn to faithfulness, and then the watch began. At midnight all was well, but suddenly the tomb became a blaze of light, and down the garden walk a troop of white-clad soldiers marched in single file. They came up to the tomb and marched and counter-marched before the door. The Jewish soldiers were alert, they thought the friends had come to steal the body of the Nazarene. The captain of the guard cried out to charge. They charged, but not a white-clad soldier fell. They did not even stop, they marched and counter-marched among the frightened men. They stood upon the Roman seal, they did not speak. They unsheathed not their swords, it was the silent brotherhood. The Jewish soldiers fled in fear, they fell upon the ground. They stood apart until the white-clad soldiers marched away, and then the light about the tomb grew dim. Then they returned, the stone was in its place, the seal was not disturbed, and they resumed their watch. Now, Jesus did not sleep within the tomb. The body is the manifest of soul but soul is soul without its manifest. And in the realm of souls, um manifest, the Lord went forth and taught. He opened up the prison doors and set the prisoners free, he broke the chains of captive souls, and led the captives to the light, he sat in council with the patriarchs and prophets of the olden times, the masters of all times and climes he met and in the great assemblies he stood forth and told the story of his life on earth, and of his death in sacrifice for man, and of his promises to clothe himself again in garb of flesh and walk with his disciples, just to prove the possibilities of man, to give to them the key of life, of death, and of the resurrection of the dead. In council all the masters sat and talked about the revelations of the coming age, when she, the holy breath, shall fill the earth and air with holy breath, and open up the way of man to perfectness and endless life. The garden of Siloam was silent on the Sabbath day, the Jewish soldiers watched and no one else approached the tomb, but on the following night the scene was changed. At midnight every Jewish soldier heard a voice which said, Adon Mashich Kami, which meant, Lord Christ arise. And they supposed again that friends of Jesus were alert were coming up to take the body of their Lord away. The soldiers were alert with swords unsheathed and drawn, and then they heard the words again. It seemed as though the voice was everywhere, and yet they saw no man. The soldiers blanched with fear, and still to flee meant death for cowardice, and so they stood and watched. Again, and this was just before the sun arose, the heavens blazed with light. A distant thunder seemed to herald forth a coming storm, and then the earth began to quake and in the rays of light they saw a form descend from heaven. They said, Behold an angel comes. And then they heard again, 
Ardon Mashich Kumi. And then the white robed form tramped on the Roman seal and then he tore it into shreds. He took the mighty stone in hand as though it were a pebble from the brook, and cast it to the side. And Jesus opened up his eyes and said, All hail the rising sun, the coming of the day of righteousness. And then he folded up his burial gown, his headbands and his coverings and laid them all aside. He rose, and for a moment stood beside the white-robed form. The weaker soldiers fell upon the ground, and hid their faces in their hands, the stronger stood and watched. They saw the body of the Nazarene transmute, they saw it change from mortal to immortal form, and then it disappeared. The soldiers heard a voice from somewhere, yea, from everywhere, it said, Peace, peace on earth, goodwill to men. They looked, the tomb was empty and the Lord had risen as he said. The soldiers hastened to Jerusalem, and to the priests, and said, Behold, the Nazarene has risen as he said, the tomb is empty and the body of the man is gone, we know not where it is. And then they told about the wonders of the night. Caiaphas called a council of the Jews, he said, The news must not go forth that Jesus has arisen from the dead, for if it does all men will say, He is the Son of God, and all our testimonies will be proven false. And then they called the hundred soldiers in and said to them, You know not where the body of the Nazarene is resting now. So if you will go forth and say that his disciples came and stole the body while you slept, each one of you shall have a silver piece, and we will make it right with Pilate for breaking of the Roman seal. The soldiers did as they were paid to do. Chapter 173 Now, when the rabbis took the body of the Lord and laid it in the tomb, the mother of the Lord, and Mary Magdalene, and Miriam were there. And when the body was entombed they went to Joseph's home and their abode. They did not know that Jewish soldiers had been sent to guard the tomb, nor that Roman seal was placed upon the stone, so in the morning of the first day of the week they hastened to the tomb with spices to embalm the Lord. But when they reached the tomb they found the terror-stricken soldiers running frantically about. The women did not know the cause but when they found an empty tomb they were excited and aggrieved. The soldiers did not know what had transpired, they could not tell who took the body of the Lord away. And Mary Magdalene ran with haste toward Jerusalem to tell the news to Peter and the rest. She met, just by the gateway, Peter, James and John, she said, Someone has rolled away the stone and carried off the body of the Lord. And then the three disciples ran toward the tomb, but John was fleet of foot and was the first to reach the tomb, he found it empty, the body of his Lord was gone. When Peter came he went into the tomb, and found the grave clothes neatly folded up and laid aside. Now, the disciples did not comprehend the scene. They did not know the meaning of their Lord when he informed them just before his death that he would rise from death upon the first day of the week. The three disciples went back to Jerusalem, the mother of the Lord and Miriam went not away. And Mary looked within the tomb, and saw two masters sitting there, they said, Why do you weep? And Mary said, Because my Lord is gone, someone has carried off the body of my Lord. I know not where it is. Then she arose and looked around, a man stood near and said, Why do you weep? Whom do you seek? And Mary thought it was the gardener and said, If you have borne away the body of my Lord, O oh tell me where it is that I may lay it in a sacred tomb. And then the man came near and said, My mother. And Mary said, My Lord. The eyes of Miriam were opened up and she beheld the Lord. And Jesus said, Behold, I told you as we walked along the way up to the cross that I would meet you at the sepulchre upon the first day of the week. Now, Mary Magdalene was sitting not a great way off, and Jesus went to her and said, Why seek the living among the dead? Your Lord has risen as he said, Now, Mary, look. Behold my face. Then Mary knew it was the Lord, that he had risen from the dead. 
and then Salome, and Mary, mother of the two disciples, James and John, Joanna, and the other women who had come out to the tomb, saw Jesus, and they talked with him. And Mary Magdalene was filled with joy. She sought again for Peter, James and John, she found them and she said, Lo, I have seen the Lord, and Miriam has seen the Lord, the mother of the Lord has seen the Lord, and many more have seen his face, for he has risen from the dead. But the disciples thought that she had simply seen a vision of the Lord. They did not think that he had risen from the dead. Then Mary found the other members of the company and told them all about the risen Lord, but none of them believed. Now, Peter, James and John were in the garden of Siloam, were talking with the gardener about the happenings of the day when John beheld a stranger coming up the walk. The stranger lifted up his hands and said, I am. Then the disciples knew it was the Lord. And Jesus said, Behold, for human flesh can be transmuted into higher form, and then that higher form is master of things manifest, and can, at will, take any form. And so I come to you in form familiar unto you. Go speak to Thomas, and the other men whom I have called to be apostles unto men, and say to them, that he whom Jews and Romans thought was dead is walking in the garden of Siloam will stand again before the priests and Pharisees within the temple in Jerusalem, and will appear unto the sages of the world. Tell them that I will go before them into Galilee. Then Peter, James and John went forth and found their brethren and said, Behold, the Lord is risen from the dead, and we have seen him face to face. The brethren were amazed at what the three disciples said but still they looked upon their words as idle talk and they believed them not. Chapter 174 Towards the evening of the resurrection day, two friends of Jesus, Zacchaeus and Cleophas of Emmaus, seven miles away, were going to their home. And as they walked and talked about the things that had occurred a stranger joined their company. He said, My friends, you seem discouraged and are sad. Has some great grief upon you come? Cleophas said, Are you a stranger in Judea, and know not of the thrilling thing that have transpired here? The stranger said, What things? To what do you refer? Cleophas said, Have you not heard about the man from Galilee who was a prophet mighty in both word and deed? A man whom many thought had come to found again the kingdom of the Jews and drive the Romans from the city of Jerusalem and be himself the king. The stranger said, Tell me about this man. Cleophas said, His name was Jesus, he was born in Bethlehem, his home was up in Galilee. He loved the people as he loved himself. He was, in truth, a master sent from God, for he had matchless power. He healed the sick and made the deaf to hear, the blind to see the lame to walk, and even raised the dead. The Jewish scribes and Pharisees were jealous of his fame and power, and they arrested him, by perjured witnesses they proved him guilty of a score of crimes, and on last Friday he was taken to the place of skulls and crucified. He died and he was buried in a rich man's tomb, out in the garden of Solom. This very morning when his friends went to the tomb they found it empty, the body of the Lord was gone. And now the news has spread abroad that he has risen from the dead. The stranger said, Yes, I have heard about this man, but it seems strange that after all the things that Jewish prophets long ago foretold concerning him that when he came men knew him not. This man was born to demonstrate the Christ to men, and it is just to say that Jesus is the Christ. According to the word, this Jesus came to suffer at the hands of men, to give his life as pattern for the sons of men, to rise from death that men might know the way to rise from death. And then the stranger told the two disciples all about the law, the prophets and the Psalms, and read to them a multitude of things that had been written of this man from Galilee. And now the men had reached their home, and as the night was near they importuned the stranger to abide with them. 
and he went in with them and as they sat about the table at the evening meal, he took a piece of bread, and blessed it in the name of Christ. And instantly their eyes were opened up, and they perceived that he, the stranger, was the Lord, the man from Galilee, that he had risen from the dead, and then the form of Jesus disappeared. When he had gone, the two disciples were amazed. They said, Did not our hearts burn with delight while he was talking to us by the way and opening up the testimonies of the law, the prophets and the psalms? Then Zacchaeus and Cleophas went back to Jerusalem, and everywhere they went they said, Lo, we have seen the Lord, he walked with us to Emmaus, he ate with us the evening meal, and broke for us the bread of life. Chapter 175 The evening of the resurrection day had come, the ten apostles were in Simon's house in Bethany. The lawyer, Thomas, was not there. The doors were closed and barred, because the Jews had said that they would drive the Galileans from the land. And as they talked, lo, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and said, Peace! Peace! And the disciples shrank in fear, they thought it was a phantom that they saw. And Jesus said, Why are you troubled thus? Why do you fear? I am no phantom form. I am your Lord, and I have risen from the dead. I often said, I will arise, but you believed me not, and now come here and see. A phantom has not flesh and bones and brawn, like I possess. Come now, and clasp my hands, and touch my feet, and lay your hands upon my head. And every one came up and clasped his hands, and touched his feet, and laid his hands upon his head. And Jesus said, Have you here anything to eat? And they brought out a fragment of a fish, he ate it in the presence of them all and then the ten believed. Nathanael said, And now we know that he has risen from the dead, he stands a surety of the resurrection of the dead. And Jesus disappeared. Now, Mary, Martha, Ruth and Lazarus were in their home, and they had heard the rumor that their Lord had risen from the dead, and Martha said, It cannot be, for such a thing has never happened since the world began. But Mary said, Did not the Lord bring back our brother from the dead? And he could surely bring himself to life again. And as they talked, the Lord stood in their midst and said, All hail! For I am risen from the dead first fruitage of the grave. And Martha ran and brought the chair in which the Lord had ever loved to sit, and Jesus sat down on the chair. And for a long, long time they talked about the trial, and the scenes of Calvary and of the Garden of Siloam. Then Jesus said, Fear not, for I will be your boon companion all the way, and then he disappeared. Chapter 176 Ravana Prince of India, gave a feast. His palace in Orissa was the place where men of thought from all the farther east were wont to meet. Ravana was the prince with whom child Jesus went to India many years ago. The feast was made in honor of the wise men of the east. Among the guests were Memste, Vidyapati and Lamas. The wise men sat about the table talking of the needs of India and the world. The door unto the banquet hall was in the east, a vacant chair was at the table to the east. And as the wise men talked a stranger entered, unannounced, and raising up his hands in benediction said, All hail! A halo rested on his head, and light, unlike the light of sun, filled all the room. The wise men rose and bowed their heads and said, All hail! And Jesus sat down in the vacant chair and then the wise men knew it was the Hebrew prophet who had come. And Jesus said, Behold, for I am risen from the dead. Look at my hands, my feet, my side. The Roman soldiers pierced my hands and feet with nails, and then one pierced my heart. They put me in a tomb, and then I wrestled with the conqueror of men. I conquered death, I stamped upon him and arose brought immortality to light and painted on the walls of time a rainbow for the sons of men, and what I did all men shall do. 
This gospel of the resurrection of the dead is not confined to Jew and Greek, it is the heritage of every man of every time and clime, and I am here a demonstration of the power of man. Then he arose and pressed the hand of every man and of the royal host, and said, Behold, I am not myth made of the fleeting winds, for I am flesh and bone and brawn, but I can cross the borderland at will. And then they talked together there a long, long time. The Jesus said, I go my way, but you shall go to all the world and preach the gospel of the omnipotence of men, the power of truth, the resurrection of the dead. He who believes this gospel of the Son of Man shall never die, the dead shall live again. Then Jesus disappeared, but he had sown the seed. The words of life were spoken in Orissa, and all of India heard. The Magian priests were in the silence in Paspolis, and Caspar, and the Magian masters who were first to greet the child of promise in the shepherd's home in Bethlehem, were with the priests. And Jesus came and sat with them, a crown of light was on his head. And when the silence ended Caspar said, A master from the royal council of the silent brotherhood is here, let us give praise. And all the priests and masters stood and said, All hail! What message from the royal council do you bring? And Jesus said, My brothers of the silent brotherhood, peace, peace on earth, goodwill to men. The problem of the ages has risen from the dead, has shown that human flesh can be transmuted into flesh divine. Before the eyes of men this flesh in which I come to you was changed with speed of light from human flesh. And so I am the message that I bring to you. To you I come, the first of all the race to be transmuted to the image of the Am. What I have done, all men will do, and what I am, all men will be. But Jesus said no more. In one short breath he told the story of his mission to the sons of men, and then he disappeared. The Magi said, Some time ago we read this promise, now fulfilled, upon the dial plate of heaven. And then we saw this man who has just demonstrated unto us the power of man to rise from carnal flesh and blood to flesh of God, a babe in Bethlehem. And after many years he came and sat with us in these same groves, he told the story of his human life, of trials, sore temptations, buffetings and woes. He pressed along the thorny way of life he had risen and overthrown the strongest foes of God and man, and he is now the only master of the human race whose flesh has been transmuted into flesh divine. He is the God-man of today but every one of earth overcome and be like him, a son of God. Chapter 177 It was the Sabbath day and many priests and scribes and Pharisees were in the temple in Jerusalem. Caiaphas, Annas and some other ruling Jews were there. A stranger came in garb of fishermen and asked, What has become of Jesus who is called the Christ? Is he not teaching in the temple now? The Jews replied, That man from Galilee was crucified a week ago, because he was a dangerous man, a vile, seditious man. The stranger asked, Where did you put the body of this man from Galilee? Where is his tomb? The Jews replied, We do not know. His followers came at night and stole the body from the tomb in which it lay and carried it away, and they declared that he had risen from the dead. The stranger asked, How do you know that his disciples stole the body from the tomb? Was anyone a witness of the theft? The Jews replied, We had a hundred soldiers at the place, and every one of them declares that his disciples stole the body from the tomb. The stranger asked, Will any one of all your hundred men stand forth and say, I saw the body stolen from the tomb? The Jews replied, We do not know. These men are men of truth, we cannot doubt their word. The stranger said, You priests and scribes and Pharisees hear me, I was a witness of the facts, was in the garden of Siloam, and stood among your hundred men. And this I know that not a man among your hundred men will say, I saw the body stolen from the tomb. And I will testify before the God of heaven and earth, the body was not stolen from the tomb 
the man from Galilee is risen from the dead. And then the priests and scribes and Pharisees rushed up to seize the man and cast him out. But instantly the fisherman became a radiant form of light, and priests and scribes and Pharisees fell back in deadly fear, they saw the man from Galilee. And Jesus looked upon the frightened men and said, This is the body that you stoned beyond the city's gates and crucified on Calvary. Behold my hands, my feet, my side and see the wounds the soldiers made. If you believe that I am phantom made of air, come forth and handle me, ghosts do not carry flesh and bones. I came to earth to demonstrate the resurrection of the dead the transmutation of the flesh of carnal man to flesh of man divine. Then Jesus raised his hands and said, Peace be to every one of you, goodwill to all mankind. And then he disappeared. Now, Thomas, had not seen the Lord since he had risen from the dead, and when the ten averred that they had seen and talked with him he said, Until I see the nail prints in his hands and feet, the spear wound in his side, and talk with him as I have talked with him before, I cannot have a reason to believe that he is risen from the dead. At Simon's house in Bethany the men from Galilee had met. It was the evening of the first day of the week, and on the morrow all would turn their faces toward their homes. The eleven apostles all were there, the doors were closed and barred, and Jesus came and said, Peace be to all. And then he said to Thomas, Friend, you do not know that I have risen from the dead, the time has come for you to know. Come here and see the nail prints in my hands, the spear wound in my side, and talk with me as you have often talked with me. And Thomas came and saw and then exclaimed, My master, and my lord. I do not now believe, I know that you are risen from the dead. And Jesus said, Because you see me you believe, and blessed are your eyes but blessed thrice are they who see me not and yet believe. Then Jesus vanished from their sight, but the disciples were established in their faith. Chapter 178 Apollo, with the silent brotherhood of Greece, was sitting in a Delphian grove. The oracle had spoken loud and long. The priests were in the sanctuary and as they looked the oracle became a blaze of light, it seemed to be on fire and all consumed. The priests were filled with fear. They said, A great disaster is to come, our gods are mad, they have destroyed our oracle. But when the flames had spent themselves, a man stood on the orac pedestal and said, God speaks to man, not by an oracle of wood and gold, but by the voice of man. The gods have spoken to the Greeks, and kindred tongues, through images made by man. But God, the One, now speaks to man through Christ the only Son, who was, and is and evermore will be. This oracle shall fail, the living oracle of God, the One, will never fail. Apollo knew the man who spoke, he knew it was the Nazarene who once had taught the wise men in the Acropolis and had rebuked the idol worshippers upon the Ath's beach, and in a moment Jesus stood before Apollo and the silent brotherhood, and said, Behold, for I have risen from the dead with gifts for men. I bring to you the title of your vast estate. All power in heaven and earth is mine, to you I give all power in heaven and earth. Go forth and teach the nations of the earth the gospel of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal life through Christ, the love of God made manifest to men. And then he clasped Apollo's hand and said, my human flesh was changed to higher form by love divine and I can manifest in flesh, or in the higher planes of life, at will. What I can do all men can do. Go preach the gospel of the omnipotence of man. Then Jesus disappeared, but Greece and Crete and all the nations heard. Claudus and Juliet, his wife, lived on the Palatine in Rome and they were servants of Tiberius, but they had been in Galilee had walked with Jesus by the sea, had heard his words and seen his power, and they believed that he was Christ made manifest. Now Claudus and his wife were on the Tiber in a little boat, a storm swept from the sea, 
the boat was wrecked and Claudius and his wife were sinking down to death. And Jesus came and took them by the hands and said, Claudius and Juliet, arise and walk with me upon the waves. And they arose and walked with him upon the waves. A thousand people saw the three walk on the waves, and saw them reach the land, and they were all amazed. And Jesus said, You men of Rome, I am the resurrection and the life. They that are dead shall live, and many that shall live will never die. By mouth of gods and demigods God spoke unto your fathers long ago, but now he speaks to you through perfect man. He sent his Son, the Christ, in human flesh, to save the world, and as I lifted from the watery grave and saved these servants of Tiberias, so Christ will lift the sons and daughters of the human race, yea, every one of them, from darkness and from graves of carnal things, to light and everlasting life. I am the manifest of love raised from the dead, behold my hands, my feet, my side which carnal men have pierced. Claudus and Juliet whom I have saved from death, are my ambassadors to Rome. And they will point the way and preach the gospel of the holy breath and of the resurrection of the dead. And that was all he said, but Rome and all of Italy heard. The priests of Heliopolis were in their temple met to celebrate the resurrection of their brother Nazarite, they knew that he had risen from the dead. The Nazarite appeared and stood upon a sacred pedestal on which no man had ever stood. This was an honor that had been reserved for him who first would demonstrate the resurrection of the dead. And Jesus was the first of all the human race to demonstrate the resurrection of the dead. When Jesus stood upon the sacred pedestal the masters stood and said, All hail! The great bells of the temple rang and all the temple was ablaze with light. And Jesus said, All honor to the masters of this temple of the sun. In flesh of man there is the essence of the resurrection of the dead. This essence, quickened by the holy breath, will raise the substance of the body to a higher tone, and make it like the substance of the bodies of the plains above, which human eyes cannot behold. There is a holy ministry in death. The essence of the body cannot be quickened by the holy breath until the fixed is solved, the body must disintegrate, and this is death. And then upon these pliant substances God breathes, just as he breathed upon the chaos of the deep when worlds were formed, and life springs forth from death, the carnal form is changed to form divine. The will of man makes possible the action of the holy breath. When will of man and will of God are one, the resurrection is a fact. In this we have the chemistry of mortal life, the ministry of death, the mystery of deific life. My human life was wholly given to bring my will to tune with the deific will, when this was done my earth tasks all were done. And you, my brother, know full well the foes I had to meet, you know about my victories in Gethsemane, my trials in the courts of men, my death upon the cross. You know that all my life was one great drama for the sons of men, a pattern for the sons of men. I lived to show the possibilities of man. What I have done all men can do, and what I am all men shall be. The masters looked, the form upon the sacred pedestal had gone, but every temple priest, and every living creature said, Praise God. Chapter 179 Now, the apostles were at home in Galilee, the women tarried in Judea until the Pentecost. And Peter, James and John, and Andrew, Philip and Nathaniel were in Capernaum. They joined with Jonah and with Zebedee, and in their boats went out to fish, they toiled all night and when the morning came they had no fish. And as they neared the shore a man stood on the shore and said, How many fish have you? And Peter answered, None. Again the man called out and said, A school of fish is passing now upon the right side of your boat, cast out your net. They cast their net, and it was filled, and John exclaimed, It is the Lord who stands upon the shore. And Peter plunged into the sea and swam to shore. The other men brought in the net, 
and it contained a hundred fifty and three fish and yet it did not break. And Jesus said, My children, let us break our fast together here. They found some living coals upon the beach and Peter brought and dressed the fish, they had some bread. And when the meal had been prepared they broke their fast, and Jesus ate of both the fish and bread. Now, after breakfast all the men were sitting on the beach, and Jesus said to Peter, Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, and do you love your neighbor as you love yourself? And Peter said, Yea, Lord. I love the Lord my God with all my heart, I love my neighbor as I love myself. And Jesus said, Then feed my sheep. And then he said to James, Do you love her, the holy breath, with all your heart, and do you love your neighbor as you love yourself? And James replied, Yea, Lord, I love the holy breath with all my heart, I love my neighbor as I love myself. Then Jesus said, Protect my sheep. And then he said to John, Do you love Christ, the love divine made manifest, with all your heart, and do you love your neighbor as you love yourself? And John replied, Yea, Lord, I love the Christ with all my heart, I love my neighbor as I love myself. And Jesus said, Then feed my lambs. Then Jesus rose and said to Peter, Follow me. And Peter followed him. When Peter saw that John was following him he said to Jesus, Lord, behold, John follows you. What shall he do? Now Peter did not hear the master when he said to John, Then feed my lambs. And Jesus spoke to Peter and he said, It matters not to you what John shall do, not even though I will that he remain until I come again. Just do your duty, follow me. And Jesus passed they knew not where he went. The news soon spread through all Capernaum that Jesus had risen from the dead, that he had walked with his disciples by the sea and ate with them the morning meal. The multitudes came forth to see. Now Peter, James and John, together with the other men who had been called to be apostles of the Lord, went to the mountains near Capernaum to pray. And as they prayed the Master came they saw him and they talked with him. He said to them, The Pentecost is near at hand, go to Jerusalem and I will meet you there. And as he talked, a multitude of people came, they saw the Lord, they said, Behold, for now we know that he, the Nazarene, has risen from the dead for we have seen him face to face. Chapter 180 the eleven apostles of the Lord were in Jerusalem and in a spacious room that they had chosen by the Lord's command. And as they prayed the Lord appeared to them and said, Peace be to all, goodwill to every living thing. And then he talked with them a long, long time. And the disciples asked, Will you restore the kingdom unto Israel now? And Jesus said, Be not concerned about the governments of men, the masters will direct. Do that which has been given you to do, and wait and murmur not. All power in heaven and earth is given unto me, and now I bid you go to all the world and preach the gospel of the Christ, the unity of God and man, the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal life. And as you go and preach, baptize the people in the name of Christ. They who believe and are baptized shall rise up in the newness of the life of Christ and they who disbelieve shall rise not in the newness of the life of Christ. And you shall give to men the power I give to you. They who believe and are baptized shall heal the sick, shall cause the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, shall cast the unclean spirits out of those obsessed, shall tread on deadly serpents and be not harmed, shall pass through flames and not be burned, and if they drink a poisonous draught it shall not kill. You know the sacred word, which is the word of power. The secret things that I have told to you that may not now be told to all the world, you shall make known to faithful men who shall in turn reveal them unto other faithful men. Until the time shall come when all the world may hear and comprehend the words of truth and power. And now I will ascend to God, as you and all the world will rise to God. Behold, 
upon the day of Pentecost you all shall be endowed with power from on high. But here you shall remain till then in holy thought and prayer. Then Jesus went to Olivet, and his disciples followed him, and in a place not far removed from Bethany, he met the Marys and Salome, met Martha, Ruth and Miriam, met Lazarus and a host of others who had come from Galilee. And Jesus stood apart and raised his hands and said, The benedictions of the Holy Ones, of the Almighty God, and of the Holy Breath, of Christ the love of God made manifest. Will rest upon you all the way till you shall rise and sit with me upon the throne of power. And then they saw him rise upon the wings of light, a wreath encircled him about, and then they saw his form no more. But as they gazed up into heaven two men, in robes of white, appeared and said, You men of Galilee, why gaze you thus so anxiously upon the ascending Lord? Lo, he will come again from heaven as you have seen him go to heaven. Then the eleven and Lazarus, and other men from Galilee together with the faithful women, not a few, returned unto Jerusalem and their abode. And they were constantly in prayer and holy thought. They waited for the holy breath, and for the coming of the promised power from on high. Chapter 181 The fact that Jesus had arisen from the dead was not denied by many of the rulers of the Jews. And Pilate gave an order that the followers of the Nazarene be not molested in their worship any place in his domain. The day of Pentecost was near at hand and everyone was looking for a manifest of spirit power. Now, in Jerusalem the eleven had met to choose a man to fill the place of Judas who betrayed his Lord. And Peter said, The Lord called to this ministry twelve men as twelve foundation stones on which the Christine temple should be built. This Judas who betrayed his Lord, has gone to his own place beyond the veil. Of him the prophet wrote, His habitation shall be desolate, no man shall dwell therein his office let another take. From those who have accompanied us from Gigal, where the harbinger baptized, until this day, shall one be chosen to complete the number twelve, to fill the place from which our brother by transgression fell. And then the eleven spent a long, long time in prayer, and when they cast their lots, Mattias, from the valley of the Nile, was chosen for the place. Mattias was an Israelite indeed but he was learned in all the wisdom of Egyptian schools, and he had taught the mysteries of Mizraim in Jericho. He was among the first to greet the harbinger, among the first to recognize the Nazarene as Christ, the Son of God. He had been with the Christine band in all their journeys in the land of Galilee, Judea and Samaria. A messenger was sent who found Mattias, and he came and joined the eleven, and for a time the twelve were lost in silent prayer. The Christines who had come from Galilee and places in Judea, about six score, were there, and Peter told them of Mattias, and how, by lot, he had been chosen an apostle of the Lord. The Christines all were glad and praised the name of God, and Miriam sung a song of praise. These are the names of the apostles of the Lord, Peter, John and James, Philip. Andrew and Nathaniel, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon, Zelotes, Matthew, Jude, the son of Alphaeus and Mattias. Chapter 182 Now, when the day of Pentecost had come Jerusalem was filled with pious Jews and proselytes from many lands. The Christines all were met and were in perfect harmony. And as they sat in silent prayer they heard a sound day like the distant murmur of a coming storm. The sound grew louder still, until, like thunder peals, it filled the room where the apostles sat. A brilliant light appeared, and many thought, the building is a fire. Twelve balls, that seemed like balls of fire, fell from heaven a ball from every sign of all the circle of the heavens and on the head of each apostle there appeared a flaming ball of fire. And every ball seven tongues of fire toward heaven, and each apostle spoke in seven dialects of earth. The ignorant rabble treated lightly what they heard and saw, they said, These men are drunk, and know not what they say. But men of learning were amazed, 
they said, Are not these men who speak all Jews? How is it that they speak in all the languages of earth? And Peter said, You people of Jerusalem, and you live beyond the city's gates, peace be to you, and all mankind. This is time that holy men of old desired to see, by faith they saw this hour, and now they stand with us in ecstasy. The prophet Joel in olden times told of the things you see and hear. The holy breath spoke with his tongue and said, And it shall come to pass in latter days, that I will breathe upon the sons of men, and fill them with the blessedness of holiness. Your sons and daughters will stand forth and prophesy, your young men will be seers, your old men will dream dreams. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and marvelous signs in earth. Sounds will proceed from heaven and voices will be heard that men will fail to comprehend. The sun will fail to shine, the moon will wade in blood before the coming of the great day of the Lord. And it will come to pass that they who call upon the name of God in faith shall be redeemed. This is the day of Christine power, the day that he, the man from Galilee, is glorified. He came as a babe in Bethlehem and from his day of birth the kings of earth went forth intent to take his life. God held him in the hollow of his hand. Men called him Jesus, and they called him well, for he was sent to seek and save the lost. And Jesus grew to manhood and was subject unto all trials and temptations of the sons of men, that he might know the loads that men must bear, and know the way to secure them. In distant lands he lived and by the sacred word he healed the sick, threw prison doors ajar, and set the prisoners free, and everywhere he was proclaimed, Immanuel. But wicked men despised him and rejected him, and by bribed men they proved him guilty of a score of crimes, and in the presence of a multitude of men who hear me now, they nailed him to a cross, they sealed him with the seal of death but death was all too weak to hold him in the tomb and when immortal master said, Adon Mashich Kami, he burst the bands of death, and rose again to life. He showed himself alive, not only to the rulers in Jerusalem, but to the many in the distant parts of earth, and then, before the wondering eyes of many who now hear me speak, attended by a retinue of courtiers of the angel world, he ascended to the throne of God. And being now exalted high, and having breathed to full the holy breath, he breathes again on us, and thus sheds forth what you now see and hear. You men of Israel, know that God has made this man from Galilee would you abused and crucified, both Lord and Christ. And then the people said, What shall we do? And Peter said, This Christine Lord has sent us forth to open up the gates of dawn. Through Christ all men may enter into light and life. The Christine Church stands on the postulates that Jesus is the love of God made manifest, that love is saviour of the sons of men. This Christine Church is but the kingdom of the Holy One within the soul, made manifest. This day the Christine Church is opened up, and whosoever will may enter in, and, by the boundless grace of Christ, be saved. Again the people said, How may we enter in that we may share the boundless grace of Christ? And Peter said, Reform and be baptized, and turn away from sin and lead the life deep hid with Christ in God, and you shall enter in and be redeemed. Three thousand people turned away from sin and were baptized and sought to lead the life deep hid with Christ in God. And in one day the Christine Church became a mighty power and Christ became a mighty word that thrilled the multitudes in many lands.